right, guys. Hope you're all doing well. It's go time, man. Age of Empires today. Going to be a 1v1 tournament. Nice and sweaty. We have some very high-level players playing today. I believe we have two or three pro-level players. Also a bunch of Conk 3 players. So it should be fun. And uh, we're going to be getting going in about 5 or 10 minutes. We just need the players to do their picks and bans and uh, get going from there. So let's switch on over to the old Age of Empires. And here we go. So let me pull up the brackets, show you guys the tail of the tape over on AoE4 Tavern. So let's find this and do that. <clears throat> All right. How dare you, Pwn? <laughs> no way, I'm awake yet. It's actually, you're, you're partially right. Because I tend to stay up till like 4 a.m. So I only got about six hours of sleep, but you know, it's, it's enough. I think when you get in your mid-30s, you don't need as much. It's kind of how that feels. All right. So taking a look over at the site. Um, we got our tournament here today, and the brackets are as follows. So you can go to aoe4tavern.com, and from here you're going to be able to follow the tournament action. You can see our leaderboard of uh, the previous community tournaments we've had. And as you win games on AoE4 Tavern, you can also unlock avatars. So once you win like 10 games with, let's say, like the Mongols or Joan of Arc, you're going to be unlocking unique avatars. Prime, for example, he has the Japanese archer. Um, this individual won one game with the Byzantine, so they have the uh, Limitani. All sorts of fun stuff, but 21 players signed up, or 29 players uh, playing today. And here's the brackets. Yeah, should be fun, man. Vice Bro versus Prime, that could be a fun match to cast. I think we'll probably start with that one, but you can see some of the earlier rounds. We got Striker in here. I'm pretty sure Striker is a very high-level player. Um, and yeah, oh, we got Crackity in here playing Hot Somali in the first round. Wow, that's a real sweaty one, too. All right. It's going to be great, man. I'm, I'm excited for this. Yeah, we got some serious, serious talent in here. All right. It's a pretty casual tournament format considering it's best of one, but it's nice. You know, it's not like you have to commit your whole day to playing it. You just get on, you get some reps in there and you know, win or lose, whatever, you have some fun. All right, dude, we got some sweat matches in here. I'm, I'm hyped for this. So players are doing their picks and bans. And um, yeah, I, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of Joan of Arc bans. Hey, how's it going? Hey, all right, <clears throat> let's get it, man. So add you to the friends list, and uh, we're just waiting for some of the games to start. Picks and bans should be very quick. How the picks and bans work is that they will be... Um, the, each player is going to alternate picking and banning until six civilizations in total have been global banned. And then from there, they can blind pick from the remaining civs. That's how that's going to be going down. So should be pretty straightforward. Should be stra pretty straightforward there. <clears throat> so like, if you don't want to ever play Joan of Arc today, you can just ban that out. Right? That's going to be the idea. Um, she obviously didn't get nerfed enough, in my opinion, <laughs> in the uh, in the recent balancing patch. So, you know, I think I would probably ban Joan every single game. Yeah, I don't know if she even has any bad matchups. I'd be curious to see that. I'd be curious. All right, so players are doing their thing. How you guys doing? Fun holidays coming up. We got some uh, good stuff on the way. Uh, turn, do you still cast the EGC turn? Uh, I did cast them back in the day when Age First came out, but uh, typically um, their events start very early, like 6 or 7 a.m. my time. That's been one of the, like if their events were maybe like 10, 11, noon, or even that night, like nighttime my time, like even midnight, like 11 a.m., I would cast them. I would I would do it for free. There's, there's Those guys are awesome, man. Um, but yeah, it's just like very early in the morning, which I have done before, but you know, I tend to stay up really late. So <clears throat> yeah, they're awesome. EGC TVs, those guys are great, man. They do a lot for the community. All right, so let's see what matches we have. These are Steam friends. Uh, this is online friends. And here is Stryker. Yeah, Stryker is in our tournament today. Uh, who is he actually playing in the first round? Let's see who he is matched up against. Oh, he's got the cool samurai avatar, which is always fun. Stryker is going to be playing... Um, hmm. I think we have to watch Hatsumale versus Crackity. I think that's got to be our first game. Because Hatsumale has won our last two events. And he's playing... They're both, like, super, super high ranked. And they met in the first... Like, the very first match here. So, here we go, man. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, observing the match. I wonder if Joan of Arc got banned out. Is it going to be Byzantines? It is not. It's going to be Ottomans versus Japan. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first match of the day. We got Japan versus Ottomans. Crackety versus Hatsumale. This could very, very easily be the grand finals of today's tournament. This, this duel here. This could really be the grand finals. But yeah, we got a couple minutes because we have a uh, five minute delay to prevent stream sniping and other things like that. You know, you don't want one of them to have their homies in there watching the game, giving info to the player. So we have a five minute delay on that. So hopefully it should be fine. The game awards are tonight. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'd be curious to see if there's any, uh, I mean, I'm really only interested in RTS games and, and grand strategy also. I'm, I'm into grand strategy, but 
Um, I'm really closely following Stormgate. Like anything with Stormgate, I'm interested in. Um, obviously, Age of Empires, Total War. Those are kind of the jams. Nice little AOE four training to get you through uh, this Nurgle's blessing. Hey man, hope you f hope you feel better. We'll get you through it. I promise. We'll get you through it. Yeah. So three minutes fifty seconds till we launch our game here. How about that two v two FFA last night? That was wild, man. That was seriously wild. My my ally did super good. Uh, I was like, in, I was really impressed. So my ally I had last night, it was his birthday. And he hit me up. He's like, hey, I want to play uh, Team FFA with you for my birthday. We're like, let's do it. And um, he played Ottomans. And he was like holding people back 2v1. You know, and I think his like ranked play level was like silver or something. He was not playing like a silver player. He was, he was, he was playing like a man possessed. It was a great game. Uh, what's the highest level of Conqueror? So Conqueror 3 is the highest level, which is 1600 ELO. Um... These players are uh, higher than that. I think they're like 17, and it keeps going too. Like you can get way higher ELO, but you're not going to get like Conqueror 4, Conqueror 5, those sorts of things like that, right? So, but these players are definitely um, higher than that. I think Crackity sits around 1800 ELO, so 200 ranking points over Conqueror 3. And I, I think Hatsumale is somewhere in the same department. Like I've seen Hatsumale on ladder playing against like, you know, pro players and, and you know, taking games. And yeah, so he's very, very good. Um, his main civs are the Ottomans and Joan of Arc, so very, very strong civs. Ottomans are incredibly strong. I'm, I'm curious to see what they'll look like against Japan here. That should be that should be fun. Yeah, your Ally Orange was a beast. He was, and like even during the end game of that, while we were being rushed on the Wonder, he was like setting up walls and entrenching the South, and he was doing a lot of really, really good stuff. It was excellent. <clears throat> he was a, he was great, man. It was great. The, the two second sacred i thought we were dead i was already talking like the game was over last night i was like man we had a good run you know it was a good try but these guys got the middle but he just like the other team came in and just steamrolled them it's a good it's a good thing they noticed that we deleted our wonder they, they noticed a little bit late and that made it very very close well, wild stuff it was a very fun stream very fun so i'm going to be out of town for a few days after this um tomorrow the um the wife and I are uh, basically getting a cabin up in the old woods up in Northern California. So we're going to go on a little bit of a vacation for a couple days. We'll be gone um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Probably be back Monday or Tuesday. Uh, that's the game plan. So we'll have some videos going up and whatnot, but there won't be any streams over the weekend. So yeah, we will. Uh, we'll be back. I'm too afraid to. I'm too afraid to try team games. I'm just a one v one sweat lord. Team games are interesting, but if anything, they're more relaxed than 1v1s. Because in team games, you have kind of a bit of a fallback option. You have your ally. and But yeah, like playing team games with randoms can be tough. A lot of times people will leave or people will get salty. Um, but honestly, if you want to play team games, you should just join our Discord. We have people playing, you know, FFAs like all day, every day. And also playing um, team games too. You could probably find someone. Just let them know your skill level, your ranking, and be like, hey, does anybody want to play? And, you know, I'm sure you'll find somebody. <clears throat> I'm sure you'll find somebody. Do you have any tricks to overcome online play anxiety? I can't bring myself to play online. I, I destroy harder. I, yeah, it's it's a tricky thing, you know. Anecdotally for myself, I've been playing like 1v1 RTS games since I was like, ooh, man, Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness. Yeah, so that would have been like mid-90s, you know, for almost 30 years. So for me, I'm kind of used to it. I, I don't really know. I, I would say just... At the end of the day, it doesn't matter at all. It's not going to have any like bearing on your life or anything. Just get in there and get reps. Like I went on and lost seven games in a row with Byzantines the other night. You know, just trying to try and weird build orders and experimenting. And yeah, you just like it doesn't. None of it matters. You know, it's just, it's just for fun. But no, I understand it. It's still one v one games can be sweaty and the the pressure can be stressful. But yeah, it, it's it's really once you get past that barrier, it's super enjoyable. It's super super enjoyable. Uh, were you, when are you planning? I know we need to. You, me, and Pone need to team up. All right, guys. Now it's time for some official casting. Let's get it, man. Go into caster mode. Big, fancy tools. I love it. Spawning on the northeast side of the map, it's going to be Hatsumale, our two-time tournament champion. So he has won our last two tournaments. The first tournament was won by our Mongol player, the Inca, facing off against Quill in the Grand Finals. But since then, Hatsumale defeated Matisse, who is a pro-level player twice, using Joan of Arc in the previous tournament. So very scary and here to defend his crown with a very tough opponent here in the first match. Now, on the southwest side of the map, we have Crackity here. He is a top level player, I believe a pro level player as well. He has a Twitch and a YouTube. He's also a caster with uh, EGC TV from what I've seen. He's great. And if you guys haven't seen him, make sure to check him out over on Twitch as well. On uh, You can find him on YouTube. He, he plays Byzantines at a super high level. Like you'll see him at like 16, 17, 1800 ELO playing Byzantines. 
which is um, a super, super big accomplishment. That is not easy. So um, yeah, make sure to check this man out. He seems like a really, really cool guy. So he's going to be going Japanese. And as far as the build order goes, it's going to be somewhat standard. Um, a lot of times you've been seeing Japanese players going for five or six on stone in their opening, which allows them to get a very fast second TC and age up using only stone because Japan returns 20% of their... Um, so if they get 10 gold, they're getting two stone as well when they return that back. So they can actually like get the stone for a TC while also getting the gold to age up. It's a slower age up. Um, I've seen people kind of moving away from that at the higher levels and going more for this. Although there are some people... Like, for example, there's an individual I watch on Twitch all the time. Um, I believe his name's um, D D DFP or, let's see, yeah, DFP or something. Um, but he's, like, always playing 2TC, whether it's Japan, whether it's, like, England. Some people just like that play style, but Crackity here is going to be going for a... Uh, that actually, I didn't even mean to say his name in that way, but it just made sense. That's funny. <clears throat> he is uh, going to be going for a standard opening. Now, as far as the allocation of workers, it's going to be a 9-2 opening. That's very standard these days. Basically, you'll just put two on gold and just everything else on food, and that's going to give you an extremely fast, efficient age up because um, you'll have just enough gold and you'll hit the kind of food marker at the right time. So, okay, interesting. Switching on over to a forge now. So as he gets close to the uh, feudal age here, he sets up a forge on stone, which indicates that most likely he's going to be trying to get his daimyo manor going with the Korra storehouse. Perhaps some pressure with barracks. We will see. <clears throat> Now, the Ottoman Lord going four on gold and also eight on food. So a little bit of a different build, more on gold for sure. And a lot of times we've seen Ottomans go for that early, early military school. So they'll open on uh, stone in the beginning just with five villagers and they'll pull back, they'll drop off that stone and then they're going to be building a military school to try and get some units right away. But we're not going to be seeing that here. Uh, rather, it's going to be the Twin Minaret Madras. So this is going to give you berry bushes, which is cool. So it grows berry bushes. And this is a, one of the better feudal landmarks in the game. Yeah, yeah, that's who I meant. Divine uh, FP. Yeah, I watch him all the time. He's like the Dark Lord of 2TC. Like England, whatever. I've, I've played him several times on ladder. I've never beaten him. I've played him about four times. And <laughs> he's very, very good. Like, very consistent. Like, his builds are consistent, steady. He macros very well. And, uh, yeah, he's a good player. But the Twin Minaret is here. And this landmark, like I was saying, is one of the better feudal, like, combat landmarks. So if you're looking for, like, a prolonged feudal engagement, it's great because... If you think about it, what is the big deciding factor in a lot of feudal fights? If both players are trading armies evenly and feudal more or less, a lot of it's going to depend on who has a better food situation. So with this landmark, you don't need to be as risky with moving out and grabbing food sources out on the map. You can, I mean, you still need to, but you can have a fallback option. Not only will you have sheep, but you're also going to be having berry bushes being grown in your base. Whereas your opponent, for example, might have to move out and grab food on the map, so there's going to be a delay in their food consistency, which can really, really change the dynamic of a feudal engagement, right? So, so yeah, that's that. Now, Kura Storehouse is the go-to landmark. This is a very, very solid here by Crackity, obviously. Uh, as much as we would all love to see the meme Shinobi, they would not be very good here. I mean, what could the Shinobi do? I mean, they can raid the mining camp. Um, that's pretty much it. The Shinobi are only really good on... Um, on hybrid maps where they can get on docks because they can use their sabotage to prevent the enemy from making uh, boats from their dock, um, producing fishing boats, and can usually torch those down and fight off early spearmen and archers that might come to defend it. But aside from that, it's a, it's a meme landmark in uh, most maps. Korra Storehouse is great though. It did get nerfed in this recent patch, which it deserved. So it can only hide four villagers in it and the rate at which it makes farms is a little bit slower by I think five seconds per farm, but it's still top tier. This is arguably one of the better landmarks in the game. And it's very, very similar to what we were seeing with um, with the Twin Minaret, right? So Japan has a steady source of food in its base, and so does uh, so do the Ottomans. So Japan's going to be getting its farms here for free, so they don't need to move out as much like other civs do, because you know mid-feudal, they're going to have like six or seven farms here already. So yeah, both of these civs are really, really good at protracted feudal engagements if they want to. So there's the Kora Storehouse, the Twin Minaret is up. We see the Wheelbarrow coming in. So wheelbarrow is up for the Ottomans, should be done soon. So that will be increasing the villager carry rate, movement speed, all that sort of good stuff. And over on the bottom side, Japan has gotten their Daimyo Manor. So they did appear to put three villagers on stone very, very quickly uh, when we saw that transition earlier from Krakity. So he's got three villagers there ready to party. And the Daimyo Manor is uh, now up. So there is going to be better villager gather rate nearby. The Daimyo Manor is a 25% buff initially, then 50% when you get the palace. And then the Shogunate Castle is 75% to nearby farms. So Japan has no way of increasing farm gather rate except upgrading their TC, which has like a big radius. You can see this aura right here kind of is going to be the radius with which I believe they will be affecting the farm gather rate. <clears throat> so we'll see, man. We will see. 
Now up at the top, look at this. We got the Uma Bannerman coming out. So when you, this is a cool build too, because when you get the Daimyo Manor, it unlocks a Bannerman slot. So you can essentially get the equivalent of an early knight here with Japan. So we have an Uma Bannerman coming out. This guy looking super cool. The last samurai moving in, baby. And I love, I really liked what they did with Japan and the balance changes. I felt like the Byzantines got done pretty dirty and, you know, Joan and Jushis needed more nerfs. But overall, they did a good job with Japan. And I feel like they're going to be a good solid Civ now that doesn't have any, like, super broken mechanics as much. I mean, they still have some really good tools, of course. But the Uma Bannerman is nearby. Crackety going to be coming in for a raid and probably going to get a villager kill here. So that villager does get Lance. The knight is going to be chasing in. Although, pretty quick counter response here. The knight's diving. Ooh, I don't know about that. It's probably not worth it. But he does end up getting one villager, but does lose a Bannerman for the cost, and that's a pretty expensive unit, but he does get the one vill, so, you know, he sends a message. That samurai, he was not going down easily, and looking at the Ottoman army and their military tech, we see an archery range, a stable. Interestingly enough, no military schools. This is uh, quite curious. We do see horsemen gathering out front for Krakity, and perhaps they're going to be doing battle here with the Sipahi, and the archer should win this fight, so I think Krakity probably will want to pull back. And now the berry bush is going to be getting secured. And the first vizier point for the Ottomans is going to be used on double imam, which is really, you know, gives you nice, uh, you know, castle age relic securing if you want that. You can grab relics immediately when you hit castle age. But it looks like in this case, they are going to be used for combat. So these bad boys are going to be dropping heals down on the Sipahi. Very micro intensive. But Hatsamale is, uh, again, won our last two tournaments. He has got like just gods here. His micro is so good. You can see he's running this thing in circles right now, microing that unit individually, kiting Krakity's horsemen, and the Imam snipe is in play here. Krakity does go for the attack there, but Hatsumali has the healing, and now it's going to be healing up these units. And honestly, this is looking very similar to how Hatsumali likes to play Joan, just that pedal to the metal aggression. But yeah, the Imams are here, and uh, they're just going to be healing up any damage that's been taken. Krakity does have a stone tower here by the gold. So it looks like Krakity is going to be going castle, um, attempting for a somewhat fast castle. We see the double racks coming out. Typically, Japan is just going to be spamming out infantry from barracks because they can spam spear, onobogesha, and samurai, and it's really hard to deal with. So now the tower is up, the arrow slot going to be shooting in, and there is going to be a die from the Sipahi. No ranged armor on them, and there is one hardened samurai nearby who can fight them off. And will this one horseman be going down? Might be able to get away. And down goes a horseman. So one horseman does fall in that process, but I think the Ottomans are going, they're coming for blood. We see a barracks coming out, so it's going to be a very standard 1-1-1 one, one, one opening. So we have the spear, archer range, and stable, so it's going to be all three unit types to kind of give a well-rounded army. And once again, the gold is being harried here for Krakity. And his gold bank isn't, like, amazing at this point. He's pumping out what appears to be samurai. Yeah, mostly hardened samurai. And samurai will do okay against these various unit types, right? Like, men-at-arms are good against, like, all feudal units, more or less. I mean, they can still be kited effectively by archers, and horsemen can certainly tank them. But overall, they should trade okay in um, heavy enough numbers. Krakity here, still just kind of sitting under his tower. Uh, third Rax is going to be coming up. And are we going to be seeing any flanking harass here from Hatsumale? Maybe. Hatsumali does get the Sipahi. Looks like he's going to be coming around the side, maybe trying to harass the Wood Eco a little bit. But the Daimyo Manor does have good defensive capabilities. Uh, once you upgrade it, it gets more arrow slots and all sorts of stuff like that. So it could be quite nasty indeed. Looking on the other side, we see the Ottoman archers and the Imams working around the top side. Are the Ottomans going to be going Castle Age? Let's see what they have on gold right now. Um, only two on gold. Yeah, so I don't think Hatsumale has any inclinations of Castle Age. Rather, we see a blacksmith come up, which is standard for Ottomans because the blacksmiths um, increase the uh, unit military production rate. So you can see 20%, 30, and 40 by age. So clearly it's just to augment these units. But I think we're going to see siege engineering. We'll probably see the ranged armor upgrade. And then from there, siege engineering. So counterattack from the Japanese moving out. And they do catch the army without the Sipahi. These archers being cut down. This is actually a really disastrous engagement for Hatsumali. But now the Sipahi do come back. One Imam has fallen, so only one. And now the counterattack. As the Sipahi get back in there, there is a Japanese scout potentially going down here. And we'll have to see how this fight goes. The Sipahi, of course, do have that cool uh, cool ability called Fortitude here where they gain a little bit of attack speed, but hey, we'll have to keep tabs on that being used. So the archer is being harried by the horsemen back here. The samurai and the Onobagesha fighting against the Sipahi in the front line. The Imam is making its way back in. Going to be dropping a little bit of support healing down on these units, so that archer is getting healed up there. And the Japanese look to be losing this battle in the field. The Sipahi micro. Look at that. Hot Hatsumali pulling these units back, which is very, very good, and sniping the unit that is chasing it. Man, that is a very, very clean micro. If he can save those and get those healed up, that's going to be huge. But Japan does have good eco. We see a lot of these Onobagesha and Samurai coming out. He's able to keep pumping them out. The steady food from these farms starting to pay real, real dividends here in this battle. 
as the Japanese army moves out into the open field and continues to push back the Ottomans. And now the Imam is going to be going down. And this could be the comeback for Krakity for sure. He was kind of on the defense a little bit, but he was able to win a nice battle here. Good micro from both players. He picks off both of the Imams, kind of mitigating the effectiveness of that Vizier point investment. And uh, Japan is certainly probably going to be a little bit closer to getting Castle Age. We see a gold bank of 192, or is he just going to be going pedal to the metal? It looks like Krakity here is producing units uh, pretty consistently. He does halt on the production for now. We see a food bank now being established of 276, and the Ottomans are going to be forced off their gold right there. All right, all right. So Japanese are here kind of camping out the gold, but the Ottomans are back. Uh, we do start to see military schools coming out. So this is when things are going to get a little bit more serious. Now we see metters being produced, which of course give the war drum a buff to nearby units. You can kind of choose what you want them to do, whether it be, uh, you know, range damage resistance, whatever. So we'll see what they choose with the metter. And the one spearman does go down there. So the Japanese army supplies 17 against 13 of the Ottomans here. Ottoman army a little bit smaller, but Ottomans can produce armies super quickly with the uh, the blacksmith influence. They're going to be getting, I believe, in the feudal age, 20%? Yeah, it's 20% military unit production. So, yeah, pretty rad, man. It's not as cool as Byzantines, but, you know, they try their best. So a little bit of horseman harass coming in from Krakity. He might be able to get a villager kill here. He's diving pretty deep for that, and he does end up getting the villager, but at the cost of potentially two horsemen. The eco count does favor the Japanese. Over the course of the game, Krakity has taken down... Uh, two villagers, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we have two villager kills for the Japanese and one for the Ottomans right now. But the Ottomans, again, very much in a defensive position here. We do see a couple spears moving up the side, chasing down the horsemen. But Krakity looks like he's going to be circling around the back of his opponent's base, maybe going for a little bit of a harass here, diving into the wood line. And Japan is very good at diving early because the samurai themselves have three armor out of the gates, right? So that with a ranged upgrade, they have four ranged armor, making them super good at diving TCs. And Onabageisha are amazing because they have super fast movement speed, so they can chase down the villagers and various other uh, kind of, I should say, prey that they want to catch. So Krakity's army is setting up here in the north, and on the other side, we do see the Hardened Samurai chilling out. More and more going to be coming this way. Hardened Samurai cruising up from the base, and it does look like there's going to be some big pressure coming in. I don't think that the Japanese want to go Castle Age. I think they just want blood here. We do see textiles coming in to give the villagers a little bit of durability. Berry bushes being secured on the map here. Japan obviously does have unique text for berry bushes here, the Fudasashi. And it looks like they got the baseline ones. And now comes a backline raid here. So the Ottomans going to have to react to this pretty quickly. Good play by Krakity. Dual prong raiding, right? He pushes in the front with a bit of a distraction force. These samurai are going to get last samurai. But in the back, he butchers villagers. He gets a lot of damage there, taking down several, going up to nine villager kills there, which is absolutely brutal. And they're going to be idling. A lot of the eco is going to be paying the troll toll. And the Japanese samurai, you can see how tanky they are. That distraction force that moved in. And so many villagers are on the run right now. Krakity is going for it. Japan is into the Ottoman base. Villagers are running, they're idling, and yes, the Japanese are probably going to lose this army here, but at the end of the day, it's super worth. Because not only did they kill three villagers there, but they also idled the economy of Hatsumali for a long, long time. I can't help but think, I wonder if Hatsumali is going to be trying for some Castle Age play here now. Just like setting up a tower on the gold and just playing really, really defensive. Maybe setting up some Palisades on, on the side, perhaps? Looking at the villager count for both players, it is going to be 34 for the Ottomans against 39 for the Japanese. So the Japanese do have an eco lead at this point, and it looks like the Ottomans are going to be counterattacking, and this could be a good opportunity for them for sure. The meter is up, and it looks like the meter does have access to the attack speed, in case you guys are a little bit newer. Also, the melee armor and ranged armor, so it's very, very cool utility. Sapi he going to be chasing down some samurai, but their deflective armor is going to be mitigating the initial charge damage. The tower is up, and this outpost tower is a huge deterrent. It's actually a stone tower. It's kind of hard to tell with the Japanese, but it is uh, upgraded with stone. So that thing's going to be a nightmare to take down for sure. Up in the top, we have the Japanese raiding again. So a couple hardened samurai moving in from the flank, shutting down gold. CPE pushing out. And what do we see here from Hatsumale? We do have the military school making more metters. And as far as the army size, it does favor the Ottomans. But yeah, that's what Ottomans are really good at, is having big militaries and getting that military school going. You could definitely pick off the samurai army. If they bring their whole army over here and, you know, the samurai try and run, the Sipa, he can just ride them down. And they're going to have to turn and fight at some point. So I suspect that could be the idea, but Krakity is relentless. He's moving out. We see the hardened samurai coming in. Ow, wow, battering rams. Okay. So there's going to be some Ramstein. A little bit of Duhas coming in here from Krakity. So he's going to be pushing. He's going to be moving for it. And has another Uma Bannerman. These guys look so cool. I love the banner. Oh, it's rad. 
You know what unit I'm most excited to get in this game is the Winged Hussars, like the Polish Cavalry. That's going to be so cool. All right, big battlefield fight here. Sipahi moving in. Archer's putting a little bit of DPS down on them. The Meta has the melee armor. No, actually attack speed. So going to be going for the attack speed buff for the Archers and for the Sipahi, which is quite good. But the Samurai are able to mitigate a lot of that. Very, very tanky. They currently have four ranged armor and four melee armor. So those dudes are going to be middle linebackers. And it looks like the Ottoman army is going to be pulling back. Obviously, the Samurai raiding the base is, uh, is causing a lot of stress here for these bad boys. The eco of both these players is kind of close though it's only a five villager difference and with the military schools taken into account or military school looks like there's only one um you know the armies are going to be probably pretty comparable i would say granted japan's feudal is um very very nasty because like now japan has a full rack of farms it's kind of like english in that way you can see they're just going to be rocking like full farm bill here which is so good whereas the ottomans they have the berry bushes in the base and the sheep but the thing is the ottomans might eventually run out however hatsumala is doing a good job transitioning into farms behind this and making sure to be steady in that regard. A couple samurai lurking up in the bushes, so here they are. Look at that. They're, they're here. These hardened samurai waiting in the tree line, looking to dive in and uh, take down some of these villagers. Crackety in the meantime. Uh, is he going castle? I don't think so. I, I don't think these players like castle age. I think these are both the dark lords of feudal. I, uh, I watch him. Um, I actually crackety on. I watch his channel all the time to try and learn the Byzantine tricks because he puts up good vods of like high level Byzantine play. It's like one of the only, he's like one of the only high level players who does that. I go on the streams on, on Twitch of like other high level players. I'm like, can you play Byzantines for me, please? And they're like, no. <laughs> they just play Jushis and you know, all the really sweaty sips. But um, yeah, it's always fun. Striker and Anatan about to go live. Wow, they met already, huh? Okay, well, I will uh, certainly cast that game next uh, if it's still going by the time this one finishes. That is for sure. All right, so here they come, man. We got the Hardened Samurai. A Blackwater, is that a... I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, but... That's a that my boomer my boomerness does not know what you're referring to. Yeah, thank you though, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Crackity here was a top, is a top 50 player in your tournament. Yeah, absolutely. He's great. All right, so we got Rams coming down, and the Uma Bannerman getting poked as the CPE tries to push him back. But this is some serious do hosting, ladies and gentlemen. Three Rams is a lot. That's a 900 wood. No, wait, they're 250 now, right? So yeah, it's a it's it's a big wood investment. That's what she said. So the Japanese are coming for blood, and the Ottoman army is mostly comprised of archers, which is going to be good at poking and playing defensively, but they're not going to be excellent at dealing with rams, right? And I'm not seeing too many Sipahi. I see a couple, but again, it's mostly an archer-based army, and Krakeny's going to get in here and massively disrupt this. He's going to kill the blacksmith, which is going to mitigate the effectiveness of the unit production here, and also, like, all the Ottoman military production is kind of being camped at this point. Archer's pulling back. We see samurai coming in the backside. Currently, that outpost is fending them off, but idling villagers, villagers in the TC here, looking at the economy of both players, it actually is kind of evened out a little bit. Okay, so 44 against 46. Military size does favor the Ottomans here, and they are fending off the Japanese, but there's going to be a lot of damage done. The Ottomans most likely will find a way to survive this. Oh, he was counter-raiding with his Sipahi during all that. I was wondering why the villager count came into play. Okay, but the Samurai fighting the Sipahi here, and this is a really, really tough one. The Ottomans are going to have to micro pretty ferociously here. The Samurai and Onabageisha are just putting a lot of chase into these archers. And the archers currently do not have the ranged upgrade, which is very unfortunate. With that many archers, you definitely, definitely would want to see those ranged upgrades. They would be dropping a lot more samurai here. Nice relocation of the villagers, still able to keep a wood economy online. But the food economy here for Hatsumali is basically in the pits. Villagers have been pulled to go after the rams. Good play here by Krakity, pulling back as well and dragging the villagers away from the base. So they're going to be idling even longer, and they're also more vulnerable if nearby reinforcements get them. But overall, Hatsumali's micro is able to save him once again. But I would say Krakity comes, comes out ahead there. He idled eco for a long time and the entire time the japanese economy is chilling and look at this behind all of that crackity does go in and get a second town center that is very clean so even if his aggression fails here he's going to come out ahead because of that second tc right we still see villagers running around having some uh, having some trouble as the samurai chase in one ram still pounding into the base going to be jumping into that tower and now the ottoman archers are going to be coming in down here so here they go and uh yes it is time it is gotham's reckoning Hardened Samurai getting blasted. The other Hardened Samurai going to be taken out as well. Villager's going to finally hunt this down. But man, this is a really, really tough position here. Hatsumali took a huge beating, but honestly, he's putting up a great fight. Um, these are both, you know, top tier players, and uh, I'm just super stoked to cast this game. Down to the southwest side. Double TC is up for the Japanese. We can see the villager disparity becoming even bigger. 53 against 46. Dude, look at this farm economy for the Japanese. Oh my god. They're going to go castle and then get castle level samurai and get the odachi and just various other upgrades probably get the ranged armor upgrade uh tier two 
And then they're just going to go I balls deep yeah. and running over this Ottoman the Ottoman force. It is going to be brutal. We see the military school coming back up, blacksmith, and a second military school. Ottomans probably kind of have to go all in here, honestly. Like, Ottomans need to get RAM, need to get siege engineering, get some ranged upgrades on these archers, and maybe just pump out everything. Because Krakity is for sure looking to go castle. We see 900 food right now in the bank and 600 gold, so clearly he's okay on gold. That, this one tower has also been one of the uh, big MVPs. It's been perpetually fending off these archer raids, and look how well those hardened samurai take those arrows, man. They just champ those things. On the bottom side, town center is up. We have the Kora storehouse as well as the Daimyo Palace. Great villager gather rate. This is such a clean economy right here for Crackity. That is a thing of beauty. Battering Ram going to be knocking into the military school. Villager's coming out to finish off that Ram. This is the Ram that got away. She's the one that got away. And now she's back. But looks like Ottomans probably going to be going all in. Do we see siege engineering on the way? Um, we do see it. Yeah, so it's already been researched earlier. So what is the wood count here for Hatsamale? Ooh, looking pretty rough here. He doesn't seem to have a whole lot of wood. Um, currently sitting at 43. He does have a lot of villagers on wood. Currently sitting at 19 compared to his 12 on food, but... Yeah, man, this is going to be tough. This is all in. Okay, so he did have some wood in the bank. He built the rams. That's why the supply looks a little bit lower. But now he's going to be pushing in. Looking at the food per minute, 1,400 for the Japanese. Currently 800 for the Ottomans, which isn't bad considering. Ottomans are definitely like staying in, in, in the battle, right? But um, this is his time because he's got a huge military advantage. 28 against 9, but these are soon going to be Castle Age Samurai. Floating Gate is about to finish in the back, so that's going to give the Yorishiru. Um, but they don't spawn instantly now. Now, you have to rally the uh, the Shinto priests out and send them to different buildings. But I suspect he's just going to send the uh, Yorishiru. Here it is. He's going to come over here and just put it in the barracks to get fast production. Yeah, because that will increase it by 300%, which means he's going to be able to pump out Samurai. So this is the counterattack from the Ottomans. This is super, super necessary. If this counterattack doesn't work, uh, he's dead. Because not only is Crackity Castle Age, but also on top of that, he's on 2TC now. We see 66 against 51, so big, big ego disparity. The army size does favor the Ottomans, but the Samurai are now going to be Castle Age Samurai in just a moment. And we do see another ranged armor coming out here from Crackity, which is going to be great. So that's going to make these Samurai have six ranged armor. That means these archers will literally do like... They already are all doing like one damage to these Samurai, which is brutal. I don't think there's any way you can win. I think the Samurai are going to push them back. The Ottomans maybe could Helm's Deep. They could try and go castle themselves and get the Mehmed armory and whatnot. Yeah, you could see Hatsumali is saving up for castle now. He knows. He knows he's in trouble. Um, if you can get to castle age, get the Mehmed armory, get some mangonels out, start getting some crossbow spam. Maybe if his opponent blunders pretty heavily, but I think Krakity is going to be able to probably close this game out with his castle age pressure. Now that he has 300% production here, it's going to be spamming out veteran samurai uh, with the ranged armor upgrade. <clears throat> Their ranged armor is going to be so jacked. It's going to be six. So they can dive under the TC and literally take like one damage. Like, look how tanky these samurai are. Chasing down archers. It doesn't even really matter if they can catch the archers. They can just dive under the TC and idle Hatsumele's economy for like 10 years. Their melee armor isn't quite as good. The CPE can do a little bit more damage than with their spears. But yeah, it's going to be a tough hold. You can see Hatsumele microing super hard. And now he's ready to go Castle Age. So he does have the check for it. Um, we're going to see the Mehmed armory coming out for sure, which will give him access to the free Manganel production. But this has been a really, really good back and forth game here. But the Samurai are coming in for the kill. Archers are scooting and shooting back. And uh, yeah, man, this is this is very, very sweaty. Samurai idling the eco. 13 villagers sitting under the TC. Uh, going to be hiding. Food production is going to be heavily, heavily hemorrhaged as he's producing military units, which is kind of keeping him away from Castle Age. And the Samurai probably going to close the game out here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a tap out here right now. I think this is going to be it. As we see Krakity's forces forming in and chasing down the archers. Hatsumale, our defending champ, you know, putting up a great fight here. But at the end of the day, some of the feudal engagements didn't go his way. The Japanese triple ram push, though it didn't kill him, uh, was very efficient at just setting him back. Killing military eco, idling his economy for a long time. We see the bannermen coming in and the last samurai, the recently nerfed Japanese, showing that they still have plenty of teeth here in this high level match. Ottomans also have a super, super good win rate, right? A super good win rate. And the Mehmed Armory is coming up in the back, so there it is. And uh, that will be giving a mango, but it's too little too late. GG, well played. Crackity gonna be advancing on, defeating our two-time champion, and uh, looking to make his mark here on the AOE4 Tavern. GG, well played. All right. That was fun, man. Great match. Really well played to both players. That was super, super fun. They're both very high level Conqueror players, and clearly it was a nice, nice duel of fates between them. That was fun. I would have lost against both those players five times in the course of those 24 minutes. So shout out to those guys, man. That was that was great. GG, well played. Um, but yeah, you saw the Japanese triple ram push is what did it. It was very, very close, but then Japan was able to seize enough of an advantage with their Ramstein, even though it didn't finish him off. And then from there, he was able to go castle, get the veteran samurai, and uh, get up in there. So yeah, it was awesome, man. Great match between those mighty champions. All right.
So let me make sure there's no admin stuff and we'll be getting into our next match of the day and check the brackets, make sure the website isn't exploding and go from there. All right. So let's do this, refresh that. GG Hatsumale, well played. Awesome game by Crackity as well. And now we're getting into the second round as our duels of fates uh, do continue. We have Anatan versus Striker. That is a super high level match. Super, super high level. I am for sure gonna cast that. And on the top side, we got some of our homegrown champs getting ready to go. All right, loving it, man. Loving it. Great games all around. So let's find the striker match. Here it is. All right. All good on admin. Thank you, Gunhound. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you for your help. Those samurai were tanky? They are. Yeah, samurai are jacked. They're jacked. What is the map pool? The map pool's on the website. You can check it out. It's all there. But will Crackity play Byzantines? I kind of want to cast every single game Crackity plays to see if he'll play Byzantines. But I want him to try his best to win. So if he thinks the Byzantines are going to hamper him, then he should play a different save. <laughs> all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in our second match of the day. These are two pro-level players as well. These guys are both super, super high level. Spawning to the west side of the map, it is going to be Striker here on the Abbasid. And to the east, it's going to be Anachan on the Japanese once again. And what is his opening going to be? Okay. Hold up. Is he tower rushing? Look at this. What are we loaded into here? What sort of filth? <laughs> All right, so Anatan, if we take a look at the villager allocations, he opens with four on wood, okay? And is sending two villagers across the map instantly. Oh, it's 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 to play the hybrid here, okay. So he pulls villagers with their prison shanks and he's gonna be fighting on the water, oh my God. Cause the uh, Abbasid get cheaper docks, right? But these Japanese villagers with their tiny little baby katana is gonna be coming out and actually shanking the Abbasid villager off. And the Abbasid, I don't know if they're gonna be able to get that dock up. No, the Abbasid get pushed off the dock. Oh my god, what what a fast, fast fight here. That is nuts. Okay. So he just he just trolls that dock so hard in the beginning. Oh my god, Anatan saw that coming, and Striker is gonna be maybe having to cancel this dock. Or is he gonna be pulling more bills? Uh it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. Rather, he still has three on wood. Is he gonna be going for early spearmen to contest that water in the middle? Okay. Alright. That's uh, that's gonna be wild, man. So that's a huge setback here for Striker in the beginning. Anatan going for the dreaded map meta build of uh, pulling two vills to prison shank the, the the talk builder, and he manages to leave one villager here as well, just to kind of keep tabs on that thing. And are the Abbasid gonna be pulling another villager? It doesn't look like it. So at this point, it looks like Striker is gonna be going into a more standard build. Uh, we do see. Uh, the standard six allocation onto the sheep villagers here seven with two on gold so there's going to be two villagers on gold and his house of wisdom is coming up so in my experience very anecdotal of course the abbasid uh you know the ayubid certainly have a more diversified portfolio compared to the abbasid they have a little bit of tricksy hobbits play but the abbasid they man they got some old school tricks they have some crazy strong economy right Getting the, uh, they can get the tankier infantry, which is nice. They can also get the, uh, reduce the cost of economy buildings and houses and their farm gather rate is really good. These are all things the Ayubids don't do as well. Like, I feel like the Abbasid economy in the late game can steamroll the Ayubids for sure. But, um, Ayubids, of course, have a lot of cheesy mechanics like the, um, the casino wing and different things like that. All right. So Japan going to be going into a standard opening. This is a really nice placement here for Anatan. Anatan does get his, um, forge right in the middle of the stone as well as the gold. I mean, that's like the, the gods here placement, right? You're just going to be able to easily switch between those two resources as you need. You don't have to spend the extra wood to get a second, uh, you know, uh, forge in order to mine that. And yeah, this game quickly opening up with some heavy, heavy chaos here. And it looks like this is eventually going to get fixed. The Abbasid do pull a villager out and are going to be finishing this dock. What is the Japanese response going to be? It looks like Japan is going to be coming out with another villager as well as a scout. And are they going to keep fighting here? The Abbasid, are they going to make a fishing boat? Um, we do see it getting repaired. And what is the wood count currently for Striker? Striker only has two on wood, so he doesn't even have enough to make a boat. And part of me is thinking, I wonder if this dock is like a distraction card effects. Like if he's just setting down the docks here, the dock to, um, you know, make his opponent overreact to it. And he's not even going to produce anything because the Abbasid don't necessarily, um, I mean, the dock is cheaper is what I was trying to say. And uh, I don't know, was it a bait? Is it a trick? Some sort of a gambit? Who knows? Regardless, Anatan is going to be aging up here in a moment, so we're going to see the Korra Storehouse. Oh my god, yes, it's my power fantasy! The Koka, the Koka Township! Ta Totomo Sugoi. Yes, this is great. This is great. We're going to get Shinobi! Oh, baby. Talk dirty. Oh, give, a, give us those Shinobi all day. Those fat erect Shinobi just running around the map. 
teleporting. I want to see a Dark Lord because Anatan is a pro professional level player and I want to see what he can do with the Shinobi. Everyone get your notepads out, get ready to take some notes because we're about to see some wild, wild play right here. So the Coca Township is coming up right now. And over on the west side, we do see the House of Wisdom coming up with the Military Wing, which is going to be giving him access to the boot camp, obviously. So that will give him 15% uh, health on infantry. And Abasa can get some pretty scary feudal militaries for sure. And they also start with siege engineering for free. So they can get the phalanx if they want to, if they're dealing with cavalry, early knights. They also can get the bonus infantry, but it is going to be <laughs> bone so hard right now. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm so hyped for this. The Coca Township is coming down. All right. So the dock is up. We currently see two fishing boats coming out. So it looks like it was not a trick. Striker actually just wanted to get fishing boats. And this is going to be giving him a slight economic lead against the Japanese. And the J Japanese definitely are going to be more all in here in this situation, right? The Shinobi are going to be getting pretty crunk, but they don't have the Kora storehouse. They don't have the farms coming up for free. So it's going to be certainly more aggression. The first Shinobi is going to be popping out here in just a second. And here he comes, dude. Look at this man. I feel like we can just to the mall ninja, Paul Bart mall cop. I know here he comes. Um, we need to just ignore everything else and watch what this shinobi does. I could give you some insightful commentary, but I think this is more important. So is he going to be sabotaging the dock? Probably so. We're going to see that coming down here. So the shinobi throwing the uh, sabotage here. So it lights it on fire and basically keeps it from building. But look at this. The Abbasid have conscripted a wolf to help. So the wolf is uh, battling against the ninja. And now we see archers and spears coming down from the military wing. So when the Abbasid finish the military wing, they get a couple of free military units, which is really, really nice for defending this hybrid position. And now we have archers and spears, both of which should be able to team up and take down the shinobi. Are there gonna be more shinobi coming out? Yes, so we see another one. And for the rest of the build, we do see a lot of wood infrastructure being set up here. So Anatan currently with 11 villagers on wood, most likely gonna be going double racks. I suspect this is gonna be heavy feudal fighting. And look at this, the Japanese with their own proxy dock and they get a junk in the middle, all that junk in that trunk, man. And that's gonna be shutting down the eco here in the middle as the shinobi move in and start to hammer down these docks. Another sabotage is up. Oh, that's so good. So he sabotaged the enemy dock, okay? And that prevents the Dao from building. So then this Abbasid military ship is never gonna come out. The sabotage actually lasts a super long time. It lasts, I think like 25 or 30 seconds and um, potentially gonna be losing that dock here, man. The Shinobi, really, really fun to watch. Now, counterattack coming in here from the Abbasid and Striker. Striker moving in with his spearmen as well as his archers and is harassing the gold line. So no gold is going to be getting farmed for the Japanese here. Japan setting up archery ranges in the back. Going to be getting the Yumi archers as they keep cir circling around looking for prey. And the boat does go down. And now Japan has a massive advantage, a massive advantage, because they're going to be able to get all these shoreline fish. And even though it's not a lot, it's still 500, uh, 1,000. You know, this is still 2,000 food here in the middle which is very efficient. And if you just make like three or four fishing boats, like you're gonna get a, such a big food advantage over your opponent. On the backside, we see the Abbasid coming in for a bit of a raid, trying to take down some of the villagers here of Anatan. But so far, oh, the Shinobi teleport behind you. Nothing personal. They move in there and they shank those guys down. And now the Shinobi gonna be hunting down the archers, man. Oh, wow. Those Shinobi, no, no games. Yeah, they hit hard too. They have 20 damage and do plus five. Oh, he just karate kicked that guy. Did you see that? They have a karate kick animation. Hell yeah, dude. Let's watch it. All right, so the archer is getting shanked. We got the four shinobi moving across. I am so incredibly happy that we're getting a shinobi game. Now, I know shinobi are actually meta on hybrid maps. It's not like this is like a meme play. They're very good at controlling water. So now we have the four shinobi out and uh, I assume they're gonna be harassing. So second TC coming down from the Abbasid, which is very good. Striker is gonna need to get that online here in order to keep up with the uh, water that the Japanese are gonna be getting in the middle. We see the junk patrolling back and forth, which can actually be very, very annoying for sure. Um, because if your opponent's pathing units across the center of the battlefield, the junk can put a little bit of poke on them. But now, this is all that matters here. The shinobi are coming. <laughs> Bone says ninja army, it's your power fantasy. It is. It's all of our power fantasies, man. It's all of our power fantasies. Oh, he disguised them as villagers. Okay, but they got revealed by the scout. Unfortunately, scouts can spot that. And now we see camel archers coming out, which is very good tech. Camel archers... We'll be able to wreck them, but oh, he teleports next to him. He gets a bunch of shanks in there. The camel archer almost going down, but he's got to watch out. The shinobi potentially going to go down here. Good camel archer micro, and the shinobi have appeared to have gone. Uh, sorry, the dog is going bananas here. Let me make sure everything's good. Sorry, my dog made some weird sounds. I wanted to make sure she was all right. All right, so now the Japanese are going to be cruising across the battlefield, teching into the Yumi Ashigaru, which is a really good tech switch. So, you know, the Shinobi bait out the Camel Archers, right? And then the Camel Archers can get countered by Archer Spam because Camels aren't very durable against Archers compared to, like, Armored Cavalry. So 
are the Japanese going to get in there and dive this TC? Uh, we do see Samurai getting upgraded. Yes, that's going to be the play here for Anatan. Denying a little bit of eco here. Getting a villager pick. Very, very clean. And the uh, villagers are forced to idle back into the TC. Now, yes, it is going to be a Samurai switch. We do see the barracks coming up. And we see the ranged armor for Anatan as well. So, yeah, there's going to be some heavy, heavy TC diving here. And Anatan probably going to be, be, going to be going all in here on the uh, feudal aggression. It's the mailman. Your dog saved your life. It's true. It's going bananas. But she barks a little bit differently. So it's kind of like, oh, is everything okay? I wanted to make sure nothing crazy was going on. So, so yeah, nothing personal, kid. That's right. Yumi Archer's moving in, idling a lot of villagers. They're going to be running back. Also, the food being denied here. We do see these guys kind of picking at the scraps of this deer next to the TC. And the Japanese archers continue to scoot about and look for any freebies that they're finding here on the battlefield. So a little bit of calm before the storm. The Abbasid trying to get into an eco situation, getting a wooden palisade wall up on the southwest side of the map. And up to the north, we do see the second TC still producing. The Abbasid is still behind on eco. Uh, obviously, the fishing boats do count for a little bit of eco. So Japan kind of has like 1.5 TCs himself. And now we get a lot of Yumi archers and the samurai with the ranged armor upgrade are going to be really, really good at diving. We saw that last game, right? Like the prevalence of the samurai diving under the TCs. And the Camel Archer looking for a little bit of action, but we do see more Shinobi coming out. He hasn't given up on the Shinobi. Hell yeah. Yumi Archer going to be chasing down this Camel. The Camel obviously has zero ranged armor, so he might be able to get one build, but the Yumi Archer should be able to finish off that big boy. Second Archer does come out, and that Camel is going to be falling, and Striker is for sure going to be on the defense. Uh, no Siege Engineering, though, so I don't think Japan's going to be going all in here. It's going to be tough. The Abbasids certainly have some decent defensive capabilities. Um, in the back, we do have the Archer Ranges and Stables producing. Stables will chase down the Archers with Horsemen. And honestly, Horsemen don't trade terribly into Samurai in the um, Feudal Age anyways. They have a big HP pool and can tank them pretty well. So what kind of dog do we have? We have a Chihuahua. Yeah, we have a Chihuahua. All right, guys, the battle is on. Another villager going down. The tower here is upgrading with an arrow slit which will help. Oh, is he gonna sabotage the tower? That's some MLG play right there. Wow! So I think he's gonna sabotage the tower. Let's see if he gets it. Okay, is he gonna sabotage it? Can he sabotage it? I, I don't even know how the Shinobi worked completely. Uh, but unfortunately, the Shinobi's gonna be going down here. Looks like he did not manage to shut down the tower here. Archers and whatnot do manage to cut the gold off. So as it currently stands, there's not gonna be any gold eco for Striker. The Camel Archers and Horsemen trying to gather up, but the Yumi Archer is able to effectively force them back. Horsemen dive in from Striker though. He does get on top of the Archers, is able to get a couple nice Archer picks. And the tower is starting to add up. Five villagers shooting arrows out of it, as well as the arrow slits. The DPS is pretty solid, but the Samurai ranged armor is tanking so well. That four ranged armor in the Feudal Age is so fat, it's so thick, and it's doing work. Overall, Japan, what is their game plan back at the base? Heavy, heavy wood investment, and now we see it. Okay, we see the siege engineering coming out. Villagers being pulled over here onto the berry bushes, and he's got a lot on wood, which is a big, big indication that there is going to be some ram push coming in soon. More archery ranges coming out. So Japan is going to be looking to end the game. And uh, looking at the food per minute, let's take a look at this. So Japan currently sitting at 352, Abbasid at 589. But once these berry bushes get going, it should be more or less equal. More samurai diving under the TC. So one samurai is sacrificed there to mitigate the food for a moment. But Striker able to micro back in there and uh, get those uh, deer going once again. But now Japan is going to be coming in with their own Duhas, man. A lot of feudal pressure today. It seems like these high-level players really, really like that feudal all-in, which is one of my biggest weak points as a player, honestly. I really struggled dealing with uh, heavy feudal pressure. Here comes another ram, and uh, probably a second ram, I would suspect. Yeah, there's going to be two or three. We saw that from Crackity, so maybe that's going to be kind of a recurring motif here. A lot of Japanese archers are out, and the Abbasid in the back do have a blacksmith up. Double blacksmith. Wow, it's going to be pumping out upgrades. Uh, that's interesting. Double blacksmith. Wow. So he is getting the Bloomery, which will increase the melee damage of his horsemen against the archers. And then Iron Undermesh would be a good upgrade as well to help against the Japanese archers, fam. But now the TC is going to be under heavy, heavy pressure, man. Heavy, heavy pressure. Here it comes. So one ram, two ram. And yeah, there's not going to be anything the Abbasid can really do to save this TC, I don't think. I think the Japanese army here is too jacked. There's too many archers. Looking at the army size, it's 39 against 10. And Striker knows it's over and it's just going to be tapping out. Man, GG. Well played. That was a wild game. Shinobi controlling the map, taking over the uh, the water, and doing a little bit of nice harass as well. That was very, very nasty. That was very nasty. Brutal play. Anatan is obviously a uh, you know, pro-level player. Striker, I, I believe, has played at a professional level at some point too in various uh, Age of Empires titles. So yeah, great game by both those players, man. That was, that was wild. Dude, the Shinobi taking over the water in the middle. Yeah, the Abbasid got set back really hard when they invested in a couple boats and the docks itself, and then they just lost that point, right? That was that was really, really rough. GG, well played. 
All right. Ninjas, man. Fear the, fear the ninjas. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look here and see what the old um, brackets look like as we advance on today. So let's refresh this. Thank you guys for joining. It's been a fun one so far. Heading on over to the tournament, we can scroll down. We have uh, our top side of the bracket is moving on. This one should be wrapping up soon. Anatan has one match is going down right here. Crackety playing, uh, not sure who this is here. And Kirk Salvatore and Newman down on this side. And we will try and find another match. We could do um, Quill, we could do Prime. All sorts of uh, great duels going on here. All sorts of great matches. So we'll take a quick break for a minute. Just gonna enjoy some water while we prepare our next duel. Yeah, Japan's very good still, but I wouldn't say they're like busted anymore. Japan rocks, I think like, Japan was like rocking like just over a 50% win rate in the previous patch at the high levels. So yeah, I just think that Anatan, like his play was super clean, right? Like if we just do an objective analysis of that, like he countered his opponent's dock immediately, okay? Then his opponent tried to counter him with military wing, but he then countered military wing by killing them all with his shinobi. And then his opponent switched to camel archers to counter his shinobi, but he was already a step ahead every moment. And then he had his own archers already prepping as the camels were coming out to counter the camel play. Like everything was just so clean. He had like the smooth, robust counter to every play that his opponent was doing. It was, um, that was like very clinical that game. Like he knew exactly what his opponent was gonna be doing at every step and was able to counter it. Yeah. So that was um, that was what was up. I know. I love that the Byzantines got a bunch of nerfs. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, I think Themos is playing in our tournament. Let's see what level they are. All right. So Conqueror two in team games. Um, what about oh Diamond three? Okay. Yeah, I believe Themos is playing in one of our matches. Let me go ahead and check here and see. I know. I'm probably mangling the name the names of a lot of units. My apologies. It's not my strong suit. Okay. So. Yeah, Themos is playing right now. Uravity actually lost. Oh, it looks like they just finished. Okay, so hold on. We can cast this game in the meantime. All right, so let's jump in here. I don't want to spoil who won, so I'm going to go ahead and hide this real quick. And there we are. <clears throat> custom and custom. Let's see who that. Okay, and this here. Okay, just checking the match. I'm just seeing the ranks of the players who played. To make sure it's like, uh, yeah. Okay, this is actually a good one. Yeah. All right. So we got a game, and this is going to be a... Um, one sec. Pulling it up here. Okay. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a Mongol versus Delhi Sultan in match. Just going to get it loaded up and make sure I can hide the timer before it starts so I don't spoil anything for you guys, but... We have Mongols versus Delhi Sultanate. And these are both Conqueror players. These are, I believe they're both Conqueror 1 or Conqueror 2 level players, which is pretty, pretty good. I mean, on, on a really good day, a Conqueror 1 player can take a game off somebody who, you know, might be in the higher league. So it is certainly worth it. All right. So let me get this, press some magical buttons, and there we are. All right. Spawning on the west side of the map, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be Themos. He is currently contending on the top side of the bracket as the Mongols, as is his opponent, Arakan. Both of these guys going to be bringing out some uh, not new civilizations. Going to be going back to the old school. But again, this is on a hybrid map. So Delhi could certainly grab the water and get some of their little arrow fishing boats. But Mongols are really good at denying hy on hybrid maps. I mean, they can get the early barracks up and can do a lot of nasty stuff. So looking at the villager allocation immediately, Mongols are going to go for a 2-5 opening. So 2 on food to make sure villager production stays steady. And then on top of that, we do have 5 on wood. That's what she said. Um, basically going to be trying to get an early um, barracks up to make sure your opponent doesn't get the water, I suspect. Mongols with their Uvu. The Gare is going to be heading down here. Not sure where it's going to be going, but it's going to be looking for a little something something. And over on the east side, we do have our mighty Delhi champion. It's going to be a Rakan. And a Rakan opening with a standard opening. Not going to be looking to contest the water against the Mongols, which I think is very smart. You know, trying to play water against Mongols feels really, really bad. Because uh, they're going to have, you know, four, four or six spearmen out in the Dark Ages when you try and set up that early dock. And you're going to get toasted and have a pretty bad time. So, opening with efficient production, we get the wheelbarrow coming out for Delhi. In case you guys haven't seen Delhi, how they work is they get free uh, technology. But it takes a long time. And you can increase the rate at which you get free technology by placing scholars inside of your mosques. So they can sit in there and read those books extra hard and learn that technology. But it's all free, which is very fun. 
Delhi's a really, really cool Civ. Actually, one of the least pick Civs for sure. All right, one sec, guys. Just got to adjust one thing on the stream here, and then we will get back to focusing on the old matches here. All right. So there we are. <clears throat> All right. So Mongols on a hybrid. Yes, I suspect it's going to be a tower cheese. Um, oh my god, this is probably my least favorite thing to play against <laughs> in this game is uh, Mongol tower rushes. It's so stressful. So the Mongols are going to be using their Ovu to double produce spearmen here in the Dark Ages. And uh, there's going to be probably several waves of spearmen, maybe like two to four. Looks like we got the first two coming out and the tower is coming up as well. So Delhi is for sure going to get their tower... Uh, they're gold towered here. That is going to be the plan. And yes, they might be able to get Feudal Age before the tower comes up, but even still, dealing with that is very annoying. Delhi can make Spearmen, of course, in the Dark Ages if they want to try and fend that off, but that doesn't look like that's going to be their uh, trajectory here. Wow, look at the sheep here. Brutal, brutal. Uh, so we got an update from chat. Gunhound says not there yet, but do you want to semifinals to wait? Semifinals can go ahead. We just want the finals to wait. But they can play semifinals when they get their Gunhound. Yes. Correct. Dude, but that is just the Dark Lord of Sheep. He's able to rack up 10 sheep, bring those back. And Delhi, um, looking at their sheep situation, they've only gotten five. So the Mongols have doubled up on the sheep, which is huge, because that's going to allow them to just kind of sit and eco under their base even longer and keep this pressure up. Another set of spearmen are going to be coming out for the Mongols. And wow, he's going to be towering the berry bushes. Oh, that's so troll. So he's going to tower the berry bushes and probably come around the back and then tower the gold. And I don't know if there's going to be much the Delhi can do about it. Um, with their current build, we do see the Tower of Victory coming out. So obviously from here, you would well probably want to get Tower of Victory, um, Archery Range, uh, Siege Engineering would be the first thing you'd want to get for free to try and knock down these outposts. Or you could just pull a bunch of villagers to torch them while your archers kill the spearmen that are guarding it. But even still, you're going to be losing a couple of villagers in the process of diving those arrow slits here. So, yep, here comes the first Mongol Tower on the Delhi Berry Bushes. And uh, the spearmen for sure cackling here. It's another set of spearmen do come across. On the backside, Delhi's going to be chilling out on the uh, gold vein, and they should have enough to age up here. Obviously, they did. Yeah, they've been aging up for a while, so they're still continuing to get gold, which I think is for scholars. They probably want to get more scholars coming out, and we do see piety increasing the health of scholars by 40, so that will allow them to be more durable at healing and combat and whatnot here. So first tower is up. Delhi's going to be forced back to their sheep, and we saw that Delhi kind of lost out on the sheep game. We're quite behind on that. The Khan is going to be leading his Spearman Legion behind the base here with the Villager. So for sure going to be seeing this gold getting towered here. Dude, this is so nasty. This is going to be so nasty. Because what's going to happen is the gold is going to get towered here. And the Berry Bushes, the other source of local food that Delhi wants, is also going to be constricted by the tower. Oh, this feels so bad, dude. I can feel the stress and like the, the blood pressure rising of our Delhi player right now. This is just so miserable to play. He should have gotten that tower up earlier. You know, when the Mongols started towering the gold here, or the berry bushes, he should have just slapped up a tower here to make sure this wasn't going to happen. But now, now it's going to happen. And um, he's going to be forced off his two primary resources. He'll at least have wood here nearby. And we do see archery ranges now coming out. And the Tower of Victory is going down. Mongols themselves are now going to be aging up. Obviously, Mongol age up is slower because they're investing in those early towers. But with six villagers on it, they're not going to be that far behind. And what the Mongols are going to do next is they're going to be setting up the Silver Tree and just doing cross-map trade. So he's just literally going to move right here and just do like super erect trading across the map. And he's just going to be pinning this Delhi player in uh, super, super hard. So the TC is garrisoned and we can still, these, see, still see these spears doing their thing. Um, honestly, Delhi could have pulled Vils here and stopped this, maybe. I don't know if that's even worth it, but archers are coming out. Efficient production as well. So the efficient production going to be producing archers. Oh, but he's supply block too, man. Things are just not not going well for the old Delhi Sultanate here, man. It is uh, it is very, very tough. So first archer will be popping out. He's been supply blocked for a good minute. He doesn't have a lumber mill up yet. And also the sheep are going to be running out under the base in due time. And yeah, the towers. Oh my god, the towers are so annoying. Dude, I hate playing the Mongols. This is just bringing back all the ladder trauma from the early days of this game when Mongols were even more oppressed. But um, yeah, nonetheless, we'll see. All right, so herdable sheep are pulled back in. So hey, at least Delhi was able to find more sheep. So they're not going to be completely food starved. Uh, no blacksmith yet, so we don't see any siege engineering. At this point, I think for Delhi, you have to come in and you have to torch this. You have to pull like... I think 10 villagers and your two archers and just bully this down and then secure your gold because this is going to be so tough. I mean, Delhi can play pretty well without gold because if they get all the free research they get, but like you don't want to be doing that, right? You don't want to be doing that. So we do see Sanctity coming down. So Delhi will be able to grab Sacred Sites eventually and Silver Tree, uh, where is it going? Yeah, it's going right into the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So here comes the Silver Tree setting up in the bushes, uh, quite literally in the very bushes here. And going to be doing cross-map trade here. So that's going to be all the way here. Dude, that is going to be a big, big Mongol trade. 
So Delhi, in the meantime, trying to secure their borders here. We do see some uh, walls going down to prevent the tower and kind of the back harass, because obviously the Mongols were kind of working in this area. So they are going to be getting some gold here, just going to be ignoring the tower on the other side. And uh, Delhi's economy is uh, more or less back in it. We're going to have to see, but like the thing is, if Delhi doesn't get out and take some map control, they're going to have a bad time, because Mongols are going to drown them in trade. They're going to be so foul. Mo this is like classic Mongol high-level strategy. Typically, you'll see Mongol players do exactly what Thamos is doing here. They'll pressure you early with tower rushes and then force you on the defense. And then when you're on the defense, they make Kashyyyks in the Feudal Age. They continue harassing you with armored knights that have three ranged armor, which will counter the archers that you made to counter their spears. And then they just secure trade behind it. And and then they just they just wreck you. They just wreck you. Yeah, it, it's, it's rough. <laughs> so, okay, he's going to be trading this way. Interesting. This would have been a little bit of a stronger trade route, but this is a safer one. Um, as far as what this is going to be generating, it's only 35 gold, so it's not as backbreaking for the Delhi. The Delhi is now moving out, but this is like, oh man, they're going to get wrecked here so bad. The Kashyyyks are out. These archers are going to be forced back into the base. He might even lose two archers here. So one archer does get hammered by the lances. Kashyyyks also heal when they hit things, so they're really good at diving in, attacking villagers, eating a couple arrows, and then re-engaging and healing after that. So yeah, that's uh, that's brutal, man. So far, Thamos is putting on an absolute clinic, absolute clinic of Mongols. So more rushing down to the bottom side. We do see the traders moving across, and the Kashyyyks continue their uh, their harass. Another wave of Kashyyyks are out, and Delhi really looking to be in the pits of hell right now. This is like this is not looking good for them at all. The Mongols are harrying their eco. All we're seeing is archers. There's not any spearmen out to deal with these. We have villager losses as well. That's really, really low. No, uh, no textiles, obviously, and it looks like the Kashyyyk is going to be able to get back. Uh, the Khan, unfortunately, is going to fall. The Khan does get picked off. You know, he'll be replaced by one of his uh, many children, I'm sure. As uh, over here, the Kashyyyk is now going to be scouting around. If they find this gold, too, that's just going to be game over, I think. Tower's coming up to prevent the harass. Two archers are there, but that's three Kashyyyks against two archers. Nine military for the Mongols against four. Another villager getting taken down here, and the Delhi villagers are just getting absolutely wrecked. Currently, two villager kills. Berry bush is still being denied. Gold still being denied in the back. And uh, Delhi looks to be cackling all the way to the bank. So many idle villagers right now. Up at the top, we do see gold, you know, still coming in for Delhi, which is good. So at least they're getting that. Trade is uh, active for the Mongols. It's not insane trade. I would have really liked to have seen the gold and silver tree put in the corner and trade it this direction. Maybe he didn't scout up there, so he's not sure what it looks like. But that would have been very, very, very good. All right. So Kashyyyks are in play. Kashyyyks over here as well. Uh, the defensive outpost is up, but Delhi is behind on pretty much every, every facet. Look at the economic situation as well. 37 against 26, and that's including traders, right? So the traders count as economic units here. Um, they're bringing back food and gold now. Archer range is coming out. Mongols are going to be able to go Castle Age behind this, like, very easily. Just kind of keep raiding and keeping Delhi contained with Kashyyyks, and then just go Castle Age, and uh, they're going to steamroll this game. This game, I suspect, is going to be over in the next two minutes. The fact that Delhi is losing so many villagers and, like, Mongols can just die with relative impunity here. You can see they just sit there, like, under the arrow fire for, like, a good minute and get a lot of kills. I mean, that is another three villager kills. Another two Kashyyyks have arrived. And Delhi is um, probably going to be tapping out here in the next two minutes, I suspect. I, I think they have to see the writing on the wall. Both of these guys are Conqueror-level players. So I think that um, we are going to be... I think their game awareness will be such that they know how bad this is. Delhi, like, what, they, what Delhi wants to be doing to win is to be moving out of the map, getting sacred sites, putting heavy feudal pressure on you. Delhi doesn't want to be sitting in their base turtling. That's not what they're good at. Um, and, yeah, we're going to see the Mongols moving up to scout the gold here. So, you know, if you like to tower rush, you, you need to be very good at kind of scouting tertiary gold points, like secondary gold sites to find where your opponent might be trying to weasel out some gold. And I think he's going to scout that, and it's going to be probably a, a GG here in a couple seconds. Like, I think when this goes, he's probably just going to give up here. So here comes the horseman or the uh, Kashyyyks, they move in. Four villagers getting taken down, potentially, at, at the very least two. And that is going to be GG well played. Brutal, brutal Mongol game, dude. Brutal Mongol game. But if you guys want to learn how to play Mongols on ladder, you can literally copy pasta what he did, and you will be able to get pretty high rank. That is a very strong build. His micro was also good. And poor Delhi, just, um, you know, if you're not used to playing against it a lot, which I'm not either, you know, he was out of food in his main base too. Just everything was going, was going pretty rough there. So... That is going to be GG. All right. So, yeah, nice nice guide. Yeah, that was a good guide. You could just go copy that build and it will work for you. So let me go to the website and see what tournaments we want to cast now. All right. So, heading on over. Let's see. Let's refresh this real quick. Yes, yes. 
and looking at the brackets, we have Femo. So this is the Mongol player playing against someone named LPF, who just beat Uravity. That could actually be... Uravity has, you know, been co high conqueror in the past, too. So this could be a good match here. Um, we have uh, Senpai versus Quill. Anatan is waiting for his opponent. And down here, we're still waiting for that game to finish. Wow, we got some high-level games. All right, so let's actually cast our Mongol player again, Themos, and see what his matchup looks like against his next opponent. Let's see if he can repeat that Mongol success. Now, remember, there is a pick and ban system as well um, in play. So today, it's not as RNG. There actually is pick and bans, and uh, it's a little bit harder to just kind of bully with an OP sieve because everyone's banning Joan of Arc today, I can assure you. Oh, switching it up. Okay. Look at that. <clears throat> we got Thamos on the Bruce and Scatterbrained on the Malians. That's going to be fun. Malians are actually a top tier 1v1 sieve right now. They, they have really good win rates. They have really, really good win rates. Dude, I hate tower rushes. It's the worst. It feels so bad to play against. All right, guys. <clears throat> Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the west side of the map. It's going to be Thamos on the Roos, taking it back to the old school, man. To the old school civs? I I'd love to see them getting played again. Uravity says, I got wrecked. I need to learn new civs. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, Uravity. Just start playing the Japanese. You'll be all right. And uh, it is going to be a hunting cabinet opening, followed by a lumber mill. What's really cool about Roos is you obviously don't need to uh, worry about gold in the Dark Ages because your bounty is going to get that. And, out of the gates, we see Thamos. He is our Mongol player from the previous game. He has actually found the, um, the deer camps here. So he's able to get his first bounty very quickly, which has to feel good. Now, on the east side of the map, it's going to be Scatterbrained and the Malians. What the Malians like to do is Malians like to get their sweet, sweet cattle ranches going, their Fulani Corral, and they just pop off with food and just drown you in Sofa and Poison Archers. It's a very strong combo. Like, the Poison Archers can kind of scale well into Castle Age because they do consistent damage over time because of their poison. So they can actually deal with armor somewhat efficiently. And then Sofa, what counter Sofa? Spears. And if you have mass archers behind your Sofa and good micro, uh, those poison archers are going to wreck the spearmen. So Malian's really, really good. Really, really good for sure. Prime says I got wrecked as well. Hey, it's okay, man. It's okay. We all would have been wrecked by some of these players. Don't worry about it. So obviously, if you guys don't know how the Malians work, they uh, set up pit mines on top of gold. And if they surround those with houses, it generates passive gold per minute, which is very, very strong. Malians are a top tier 1v1 sieve. Not as commonly played as a lot of other sieves, but they're very fun. And Malians are very steady too. Like their, their food eco is really good. Their passive gold is really nice. So typically you're going to be in a comfortable position with the Malians. So yeah, this is enough. Also passive gold here. You can currently see the passive gold for Scatterbrained, our Malians player, is going to be 65, 72 now because it's scaling. Uh, so he doesn't even need to mine gold. He can just have all his villagers do other things, you know? Because all his villagers can do whatever they please. Around the map, looking at the Bruce, the Bruce are doing pretty good on the bounty. Um, currently, uh, I believe he's gotten a deer camp and also is going to be getting a wolf up here and he has found the other deer camp as well. So the Roost player is easily going to be creeping up on, you know, his desired bounty levels. He's not going to be suffering. He's going to get two deer camps, wolves here. He also sees the boar. And what most Roost players do when they get Feudal Age is they build a single early night, like out of the gates, regardless of what their build is, whether it's like 2TC or 1TC uh, Fast Castle, you know, trying to grab relics, whatever. And they just use the knights with scouts to go hunt down the boar on the map, and they can get that super, super fast bounty for sure. You might want to cast Crack his game after this. He's playing Byzantines. Okay. I know what we're doing after this game, baby. We're going over to our boy Crackety, and we're going to go cast his Byzantine okay, game. The so champion, the man of the people, playing the Byzantines. I love it, man. It's going to be fun. All right, so scouting here, we see the Bruce player discovering the pit mine. And one of my favorite ways to play against Malians in my potato level of play is to try and uh, tower rush the uh, pit mines. <clears throat> so oftentimes, I'll tower rush the pit mine with, like, two villagers and two horses with Byzantines. And uh, then just like torch all the houses in the pit mine down using the defensive tower. And it can work pretty well. But again, at this level of play, I'm not sure what... I, I think these guys are both like Conqueror 1 through Conqueror 2 level. I'm not sure about Scatterbrained. I didn't see his ranking. But I know that this guy is like Conqueror 1 at least. So we'll see, man. We'll see. I can switch from caster mode to see the bounty, but it would spoil the game time. So you guys would see this game is ahead. They've been playing for a little while, so I don't want you guys to see when the game would potentially end. So we're going to be staying in caster mode. I can assure you that the Roost bounty is really good. It's it's probably so he's got the deer camp. He got the deer camp up here. Um, also got several wolves. Yeah, he's going to be getting 250 bounty super easy here. Like super, super easy. So the Roost is going to be aging up here with the Kremlin. Kremlin is really nice. It's going to be securing you a resource node, right? So normally your uh, gold vein would be a little bit under pressure potentially. Malians could get in there and uh, do some work if they want to. But the Kremlin is going to be guaranteeing that that is safe. Also protecting your gold and really, really making it so the only angle of pressure is going to be kind of back around your base here. 
And also the Kremlin is really good because you can summon out the dreaded militia, which are very, very game-changing under the right circumstances. You can use them offensively if you want to, defensively. They are pretty rad. So Scatterbrain was Conqueror 2 last season. Thank you, Gravity, our in-game correspondent, the Highlander himself. All right. So Herdable Sheep being brought back. Malian's aging up with the Mansa Quarry. Mansa Quarry is a landmark that you can toggle between generating 75 gold and 75 stone. So whatever, whatever tickles your fancy. You know, typically you're going to be seeing it for gold probably in the Feudal Age to get more efficient castle timings. Or you could see it being uh, used for stone once you get castle to build keeps on the map, right? So you'll be seeing like switch ups and... You know, all sorts of good stuff like that. So yeah, I kind of wanted to share... Yeah, Byzantines are actually not bad at tower rushing because they get a lot of free stone from building buildings. So they can um, use that excess stone if they're not going to be going too hard on the aqueducts to set up uh, arrow slits in their towers. I mean, they're not as good as Mongols at it, but they're definitely like viable. It, it's a tactic that works somewhat well. Yeah, Mongol tower rush is just evil though. It comes way earlier. It's way, way earlier. So the gremlin is going to be finishing here in a second. Malians have hit their Mansa Quarry, and now what is the tech going to be? Triple Scouts? I like this a lot, actually. So Roos are obviously going to have several Scouts on the map, and they can just go harass. And even if they don't kill this house, it's going to be forcing the Malians to repair it and allocate resources and also idling a villager or two. So a little bit of troll harass coming in. Are the Roos going to be getting an early stable? No, it's going to be two TC Roos. So we do see a heavy, heavy uh, focus here on the stone outcropping and also a lot on wood. So the Roos are going to be going two TC, which I think is great. And the Kremlin is going to be here generating yeah, charges and also defending the gold. So yeah, 2TC. Uh, and I wonder, I'm curious. I haven't seen Roost played in a long, long time. It's mainly been a lot of the new civs. But I'm curious what landmark he'll go for Castle Age as well. Because it's probably going to be defensive 2TC into Castle Age, I suspect. And just getting that big, big eco going. And here it comes. So he's going to set the TC up right here probably. Because then the Kremlin will still be protecting it if it gets dove. And also he's going to be securing all this food for himself. So I do like that. Now, looking on the other side, we do see these scouts torching the houses down. The Malians are having to repair these. And uh, the Bruce scouts, uh, yeah, they're getting a little bit of annoying harass in there. Not going for the boar quite yet. We see the second TC coming down. Going to be seven villagers setting that up. And you can see the Kremlin does protect it. So if anybody tries to dive this TC, the Kremlin actually will be in range. And what's cool is the Kremlin can also levy their militia, right? So when the militia come out, they're going to be able to rush and defend this TC. So if your opponent comes in with like rams, for example, which are slow and vulnerable, you can rally out all of your militia, run over there, and potentially burn down the ram, which is very sweet. Leo, thank you for the donation. Really appreciate it, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm more of a Golden Gate enjoyer, but I think Kremlin is very good too. Like the militia levying is very powerful. And obviously, if you're going for a greedier build, like a 2TC, having the Kremlin is very nice. Granted, Golden Gate would allow you to expand quicker. Oh my god, look at this! From Scatterbrained. Oh, I did not expect that. Oh my god, I love that. That's so good. So look at this, guys. He's grabbing the food with the Pro Scouts. This is an MLG play. He's grabbing him with Pro Scouts, and he's taking the food away from the TC. Oh my god, that is my favorite play I've seen in months. That is so, the, the Pro Scouts counterplay. He takes the deer carcasses and just drops them far away from the TC. So that the Roos are not going to be able to effectively farm those. Oh my god, that is so troll. And he's going to be taking some back to his base as well. So he's able to get a couple of those. Wow, I have not seen a pro scouts play in a long time. And that like really... Because the entire positioning of this TC... The entire positioning of this TC was to grab those deer. And now most of those deer are like out in the open really, really far away. And they're going to be just back in the shadow realm. Oh my god, that was such a good play. That was so clean. That was so clean. And now the Malian's going to be bringing the food back to the base. They actually managed to steal three of those. And these are warrior scouts too. So the warrior scouts are going to be more formidable fighters and just, you know, better all around. Grand Theft Deer, I know. And now we see the cattle ranch coming up. So the cattle spam is going to be coming out. Malian's going to be uh, securing their crazy, crazy food economy. And eventually the Grand Fulani Corral is going to be coming out. Dude, I love that play. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. Only one pit mine here for the Malian's. Looks like they're going to be playing very conservatively under their base. We do see the cows coming out. So the cows are coming out. Scatterbrain more like Galaxy Brain. Dude, that was a, that was so troll. That really screwed up the Roos' plan for sure. The Roos were probably happy to just sit here and go castle. But now they got like one deer out of it. Like one deer. This one's really far away. So this is pretty inefficient. And the rest of the deer got dragged out into the open field and are still being perpetually stro stolen, right? <clears throat> Dude, that was so good. So good. So the Roos trying to do a little bit of harass with their scouts, um, but overall not going to get a whole lot done. On the bottom side, the warrior scouts, man, 
They, so they find the Roost going after a boar, which is brutal. And Warrior Scouts actually hit somewhat hard. They do have seven damage, so it's pretty much the same as an Archer in the uh, Dark Ages. Archers hit for six or five, five or six, I can't remember. But nonetheless, the Warrior Scouts are going to be harrying back the Roost. And the Roost, even though they have an economic advantage, are really, really behind right now. Um, these villagers being idled. The Roost do have some military coming out, so we are going to see a knight. Yeah, two early knights and archers coming, so they're going to need those. And here comes the first early knight to chase down those Warrior Scouts. So it looks like two villagers did fall. And the boar is able to survive there. But the roosts do have that eco lead of 36 against 29. But against Malians, it doesn't matter so much. Because these cattle basically are the equivalent of a handful of villagers, right? So the Malians are probably actually economically more steady right now than the roosts are. Despite having a 6 villager deficit off that 2TC. Oh my god, look, he's stealing even more, dude. This man, he's the, he's the cow thief. He's coming in with more warrior scouts. These Malians are going to be eaten well tonight. And the roost knights are going to be trying to stop them. But like, even still... These guys should probably hug the side of the map and try and squeak away there, but <clears throat> he drops it. Look at that. He drops the cattle here, and he's going to come back for it later. When the knights are somewhere else, he's going to come back and get that food. Is he going to drop this? Is he going to drop it? Does he have the micro? It looks like he's focused elsewhere. Okay. So these guys are scurrying. Roost villagers have been idled for a long time. Now they're going to be coming down here and trying to resecure this boar, which is very important. It will give the Roost some nice bounty, and we see a fourth early knight coming out. But the thing is, guys, Malians are going to be castellated soon. We see the transition into Donso. So Donso are great. They start with one melee armor. They can also throw javelins. Some of the better spearmen in the game for sure. And the Fulani Corral is going to be fully erect when he hits Castle Age. And he is going to drown this Roost in, in resources. Currently, the Malian food economy is six, uh, 676 a minute. Looking at the Roost, it's 456. And Malians are about to hit Castle Age. This is probably going to be a pretty fast game, guys. Dude, I love this. We're seeing some MLG strategies today, dude. I love this. This gameplay is so good. It's so good. The, the, the cattle theft, I, I would never have thought of that, you know? I've never thought of that. <laughs> all right, so the Grand Fulani Corral is coming up. That's going to make all these cattle ranches generate even more food, which is super gross. And then he's going to go Donsa and probably Sofa Spam. Yeah, that's what it's going to be, which is going to be great. So the Donsa will be able to handle the Roost Knights. Roost need to definitely get some value here if they want to stay in this game. They do idle the villagers building that. And they do they have the ranged armor? They don't. So they're not going to last super long, but... They're, all, they're idling the eco. This is a good counter attack. But the Donso have now popped out. So there are a couple spears. Looks like some of the scouts are going to be going down. But the Roost Knight under the TC. Not having a good time. Warrior Scouts, like I said, more resilient here. So they're able to fight well. And overall, that was kind of a disaster for the Roost. They end up losing Knights. Do they get any villager kills? Yeah, they get two villager kills. They are idling a lot of villagers here. Another villager does go down. Oh, no. They only got one. Yeah, now they got two. But they're going to lose four expensive early Knights for maybe one villager there in that situation. And the uh, Malians, yeah, the Malians are laughing all the way to the bank. Because the Malians are just getting passive food, even when their economy is idled from all these cattle ranches. And now the Fulani Corral is going to be coming out as well. So that's going to be very, very tough. Warrior Scouts chasing down the archers. The Roost Knight trying desperately to harass here. But this is, um, I've seen this quite a bit on ladder. Like when Malians get to this point in the game, if you're not like in a very advantageous position, boy, oh boy, you're going to have a bad time. So we do see the sofa production going to be coming out. The Roost player is keeping the pressure on, and also the militia from the Kremlin are being called out. They're going to be lasting for another 22 seconds. So they definitely need to get in there and harass while they can. The Roost is actually getting a decent second wave of uh, harass here as villagers are being idled. Yeah, I like the idea of torching the cattle ranches if you can, but they're only going to last another 12 seconds. So that idea probably is uh, not going to work out here because these guys are temporary since they are a summon unit. Kind of like Total War in that way. But they're going to be disappearing in one second. And they're not going to get that cattle ranch. Cattle ranch is going to be repaired. Man, Malian's just getting away with it. But the Roost do have a big villager advantage. It is 49 against 34. Down at the bottom, we do see the Warrior Scouts raiding again. But this time, it's not going to be so easy. As there is a wooden fortress here. And the Warrior Scouts are going to be poked back. Yeah, Warrior Scouts are awesome, man. And that uh, boar is going to give the Roost some very, very good food income if they can secure that. The Roost bounty has got to be really good at this point. Um, did they get the second boar? They did not get the second boar yet. Up on the top, we see Archer's Harrying. Good micro here by Thamos. So Thamos is able to pick off several of those hardened Donsos. And the Roost is able to get on top of the gold and shut that down temporarily. Granted, the passive gold generation, the Malians, they don't care too much. They are going to be able to keep that gold going even if you are shutting them down. Malians have excellent, excellent passive uh, resource generation. And now the first Sofa has come out. And does he have the imported armor yet? I'm not sure if they got the upgrade. But nonetheless, the Sofa does have a bonus for all infantry units. So um, archers are infantry. So that's what makes Sofa so good too. They, they're good against ranged and against melee. They have a bonus against both types, right? Which is crazy, crazy good. So still pushing. Down in the bottom, we do see Scatterbrained. Um, still trying to dive here, but losing those scouts as they move in. But he is definitely forcing his opponent, like taxing his opponent's micro. Uh, by doing that. And yeah, we're going to see waves and waves of units coming out. Blacksmith is there. 
Uh, so far, about to get the imported armor, which is going to be giving them plus two armor, which is nasty, putting them up to five. Sofa and Donso. Oh, that's going to be so brutal against this Rus army comp. It's going to be so brutal. Um, looking at the Rus eco, we do get the high trade house. Okay, very cool. So it is going to be the high trade house. Not going to be playing relics, but considering how he lumberjacked here, this is actually a really sweet position for the high trade house. That's going to be a very, very good gold income. We'll take a look at that. But um, yeah, man, it's going down on the bottom side. We do see the Malians. Yeah, this is so hard to deal with. Just constant waves of sofa, dude. He's going to make his opponent sit on the sofa so hard right here. And this wooden fortress for sure going to go down. The roost, do they have any standing military? We got two knights as well as a couple militia, which do have a bonus for cavalry, so they will help. But yeah, if the roost can hold this, that would be a huge play for them. That would be massive. And the villagers can pop out and repair. Maybe need to get a spring alden placement here. A couple knights coming out, but these are early knights, and the sofa are just way better. Um, currently, they're about to get their five armor. Yeah, when the imported armor finishes, they're going to be dominating. The Roost Militia, though, do have the bonus for his cavalry, and they're they're putting up a good fight. But overall, the Roost Knights are going to be dominated. There's a massive numerical advantage for the Malians here in terms of military. And do the Roost have any more military coming down here? We see more barracks coming down. Knights going to be circling around. And the Malians uh, now have five armor. Man, those Sofa are jacked, dude. Five armor on those bad boys. And uh, I think if this goes down, I mean, the Roost could potentially lose up to eight villagers here. They're also going to be losing their boar, which is one of their main food sources. And the Malians have also gotten their second pit mine coming up here, starting to take heavy map control, amassing a big army in the middle. Archer's going in for a counter raid, which I don't hate that. But, like, the thing is, this counter raid's cool and all, but if, like, two or three Sofa just reroot over here, they're going to butcher all these archers, right? And is this going to go down here? It's going to be kind of close. It looks like one of the Sofa is going to go down to the archer fire. But at the end of the day, the Roost Villagers just need to make a run for it. Good play. Good play by Famos. He runs away. He sees the riding on the wall. And he might, because of his reaction there, he might be able to get away with at least three or four of these villagers. Roost at 62 to 42. Archers are in the base and looking to harass. But the Malians with good micro able to reallocate their uh, militia, <laughs> militia villagers over to the other side. It was like militia and villagers like tied together. And uh, yeah, they're going to maybe get some kills here. If the Roost can get a couple picks on the eco, maybe, maybe. But now that Sofa are out with their five ranged armor, dude, these archers are going to hit them for one damage. It's going to take 195 shots to kill them. So far now in the base, Roost definitely going to need some spheres. Thankfully for them, the Kremlin is here. The Kremlin's going to provide a little bit of range support. The Knights are now upgraded to Castle Age Knights. They do have a lot more HP than Sofa. Um, and if they get, yeah, they got four armor as well. So Sofa... Probably one-to-one -one against Roost Knights. If the Roost get the Boyar's Fortitude and some of the pertinent upgrades, they would win for sure. But so far, it can be just mass-produced because of the uh, income. I mean, look at the food income of Scatterbrain right now. It's a 1,000, and he, he's just got a handful of guys on sheep. And the Fulani Corral isn't even fully operational. He only has um, 12, sheep, uh, 12 of these cows. He can have up to 20. So when he gets that going, it's going to be savage. On top of that, the Malians are also grabbing relics on the map, so they are able to get that. And up top, they do discover another Rus uh, outhold. So Rus going to lose some villagers here if the Malian player is paying attention. And is he? Yeah, the Rus got the boar. The Rus bounty is probably maxed out now. He's got both boars, a lot of goodies. Here in the middle, we do see the Knights doing mortal combat, but the Malians coming in with a big Donso Legion. Those Donso are, are uh, quite pissed off here, and uh, the TC might be in danger. Do the Malians have Siege Engineering? I do not believe they do. Boyar's Fortitude is coming out to give the Roost extra uh, HP, and that TC is getting torched real quick by the Malians. Roost going to be trying to move out with their Knights to intercept this, and on the backside, we do have a couple Militia that could be levied. Only a few, though, and those Donso able to bully those Knights back, and the Roost are going to be losing their second TC against the Malian Onslaught. Really, really brutal, ladies and gentlemen. And on the top, the Roost also lost another eight villagers. The Sofa are probably going to be able to finish them off, and uh, maybe one will get away if they're lucky. But is the TC going to be enduring? I don't think so. The villagers come out and try and desperation repair this, but the Roost just don't have enough to deal with the Donso. They really only have knights, and that's going to be GG. Well played, ladies and gentlemen. Man, the Sofa, no mercy. Malian's showing why they are a top tier save in 1v1. And also, I mean, he played super well, too. Like, both those sibs are pretty, comp you know, competent, right? But Scatterbrain just played like a man possessed with those Malians, dude. That was very, very savage. Very, very savage. All right. GG, well played. All right, all right. So that is going to be a victory there for Thamos. And now we will see where to go from here. That was a fun match, though. Dude, I think, I think the Grand Theft... The Grand Theft Auto was really, really um, wild. When he stole those... When he stole those deer from under the TC... That was some that was some uh, some serious strategy there. That was some big man strategy. All right, let's take a look at the uh, brackets here and see where we're standing. All right, where are we at? So let's refresh this. The deer steal was my favorite part. That was so funny. That was really really funny. 
So Anatand is on the bottom side. He has won his game. All right. And uh, yeah, we're, we're cruising, man. Bottom bracket is currently the only match going on. We have a we have one on the on the top side actually. We have one on the top side, so we can uh, we can do that as well. The deer steal, I know. That was that was nuts. So we have our first semifinal match. Going to be casting that here. So let's find you, and um, I need to find the player. So what was the name of the player that was playing the Malians there? Oh uh, no, I don't really play Company of Heroes three anymore. I just think Age is a way better game, and I enjoy it more. So. It doesn't matter if something's better per se, but I enjoy it more. Um, all right, so so senpai, something senpai. <laughs> I wonder if he's in my recently played. We could probably find him through here. The top side is taking a break. Got it. Okay, that's totally fine. We got we got all the time in the world. So let's go to Dry Arabia, and we can find Scatterbrained. And um, how is Scatterbrained? Oh, he was Conqueror two last season. Okay. He just hasn't played that many games yet. He's probably just learning the new stuff. Yeah, he was Conqueror 2 last season. I was like, that game we just watched from that Malian player, that was not a Diamond 1 level game. <laughs> All right. So I sent him a friend request. So hopefully that will uh, be accepted so we can cast the game. All right, cool. And we'll go from there. The, dude, the deer, the deer Theft Auto is really fun. So let's see what matches we have on the bottom side that we can cast. So we have a game between um, Anatand and that one finished. And then we have Newman, Newman Dissol. Okay. I wonder if he's on my friends list. We'll have to see. Yeah, I need to make sure people add me. Scatterbrained except the friend request. Hell yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. And whenever they start the semifinal, we'll jump in and cast that for sure. We'll jump in and cast that bad boy. But quick break here while we wait. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he was obviously Conqueror in the previous season, so he he's, looks like he's just getting into the new stuff. And it's really easy to tank your rating when you're trying to experiment with new strategies and things like that. Like, for example, with me, I was I was almost Conqueror 2 this season, playing Japanese and, you know, the OP civs. Uh, and then I switched to Byzantines and dropped, like, 100 ELO <laughs> down to, like, Diamond 3, Diamond 2, you know? It's very, very easy to do when you're experimenting. All right, yeah, here's a game here. It looks like they might have just finished. So let me check and see on the brackets. They might have just finished that match. Let me check. Yeah, so we'll probably do the Anatand game next because I think he, he's going to be playing this individual here in a moment. Yeah, because he's not in a game right now. Let me see if he actually finished it. All right, just checking, match history. He's hidden his match history. Oh, the sweat. Oh man, is this guy gonna have to play Ana 10 next? The dreaded Platinum 3 versus like Conqueror 10? That's gonna be brutal. Oh my god, that'll probably be a slaughter. All right, we'll probably go, we'll probably go up to the top, watch the top side of the bracket. Yeah, man. I'm Byzantine, you're gold too. Yeah, the Byzantines will like tank your ELO quite a bit, but they're very, very rewarding to play. Okay, so we're gonna cast the Scatterbrain game when they are ready. They're probably doing their picks and bans here in a moment, so as soon as that starts, we'll, uh, we'll cast that. And should be here now, yes. Yes. Where art thou, Scatterbrained? All right, he's browsing custom, cool. So how you guys all doing? Uh, hope you're doing well. Bottom side game is starting now. Newman Doll, a game d didn't show up, I tried. Huh, weird. Very strange. I wonder like, if you can make Japanese Shinobi work on maps where you're not on water. It feels so janky though, like just harassing someone's gold node when the TC is kind of in range just feels so janky. I mean, it can kind of work, I suppose. Yeah, Byzantines are hard to play. Um, Crackity apparently played earlier, um, one of our champions we cast in the first game. I think he, he lost with Byzantines against Zhu Shi, which makes sense. I lose that matchup all the time, it's hard. Uh, like, I feel like uh, Zhu Gnu are just so mouth-breathing. Like the the Chinese archers, it's, it's like they can just mask literally Zhu Gnu and like nothing else. And it's so formidable and hard to stop. You're like, you think like they just wreck horsemen too. Cause like the horseman armor is nice, but it, it's horseman armor is nice at, at mitigating like big shots, but like high volume shots from Zhugnu that do like one damage a pop, they can just kill your horseman really quickly, right? I don't know. I feel like Zhugnu are just a little stupid. Maybe they need like a cost increase or something. I don't know. What do you think about 1v1 Malian Imperial? It's actually really good. Malians are incredibly strong like throughout the entire game, I think. 
in 1v1. In FFA, I'm not a huge fan of Malians. I find that they like, I don't know. There are civs that just do late game better, but like if you look at it through the spectrum of a 1v1 game, Malians are pretty tyrannical because they have steady food, like really good steady food and really good steady gold. With four pit mines active and mass Fulani Corral, dude, their primary resources are set and they can just keep pumping it out into you. It's very powerful, right? Do you think they'll release Thrones of Decay this month? Oh, hell no, dude. We're probably going to get that in January, February, would be my guess. There's no way anyone in this journey can beat Anatan. Yeah, I mean, probably probably true, but it's going to be fun to see people try. I mean, people said the same thing about Hot Somali in our past two tournaments. They're like, there's no way Hot Somali is going to beat Matisse, and then he did twice. Two weeks in a row. Granted, it was, it was with Joan of Arc, too, so you take that with a grain of salt. But, you know, he played super well. Um, I'm going to go grab some water while we wait for this next match to start. BRB, one second. BRB. Let's get it. Uh, so Joan of Arc is not banned in the tournament. No. Yeah, Joan of Arc is... Um, yeah, Joan of Arc is uh, available, but we have a pick and ban system today. So I can show you guys how that looks real quick. So let's see. Hey, Prime, uh, I see you in chat. Can you jump on with me and um, with the pick and ban tool and I can show people in chat what that looks like? Yeah, so we can show you the, the format for the tournament. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty relaxed... Pick and ban, it's not like super hardcore. People are still more or less able to play what they want. But let's get here and do this and we can go there. All right. And we'll show you guys. If the, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I love, I, I'm loving that some of these Dark Lords are entering our events. I love it. It's it's great. Uh, one last question. Do you think Warhammer 3 is, no, I don't think Warhammer 3 is dead. No, I think it's just, it's a, it's a downtime right now, you know? It's a downtime. Okay. I'm gonna find you in chat, Prime. Wanted to show chat. There you are, all right. So it is time. Yeah, Zhugnu feel really good. Maybe at a higher level than not, it's much of a problem. All right, so this is how it looks. So it's a cool website. It's an Age of Vampires website. So you get your opponent. So I'm right here. My opponent Prime is right here, right? So you click ready. And then we start banning. So if I were actually in a match, I'd ban Joan of Arc, 100%. Then he bans. And every single Civ that gets banned is, uh, is out of the event. So who else would I probably ban in this situation? I hate playing Mongols, so I'd probably ban them. And then um, we're going to see what he does. And you also, like, your bans are going to depend on your map. So he bans Ayubids, which is very smart, right? I would ban Jushi's Legacy from here, probably. Okay. So he would probably pick Japan. I know Prime is, like, a Japanese guy. Japanese main, Order of the Dragon. And then now none of these six civilizations can be picked in this 1v1. None of them, right? So I would then pick Byzantines because they're my favorite and I would probably lose. <laughs> pick Japanese. So that is how you do the pick and ban for the today's tournament. It's very simplistic. Um, you can add more picks and bans if you want to, go up to eight. But for now, we're testing the waters and we'll collect feedback from the players. But that's how that works. It's very, very simple. It's very, very simple. Yeah. It's good times, man. All right, so let's see how are we looking here. Yep, he's in the lobby right now for the semifinal, so we're getting ready to cast that. Yeah, it's really smooth. He, I mean, he's he's. We're not actually playing a match, so he just clicked Order of the Dragon. But no. <laughs> but here's the thing: if you're a real sweaty player who's really good at a lot of the top tier civs, you can just ban memes. You can just ban like Byzantines, Order of the Dragon, Delhi Sultanate, whatever, and then it leaves open a lot of the really top tier civs. Are the top AOE players? Um, I missed your question. Uh, you, you deleted it before I could answer it, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll get to that. But that's that's how the pick and bans work for the tournament. So players are all like doing that individually as they go through all that. Just got AOE four because of your streams. Gonna try and get decent at it. Yeah, it's really fun, dude. This game's great. Like I, this is the most fun I've had with an RTS game in years. And it's not just one. I love one v one here. There's a really good ladder system and like there's a. You know, there's like incentive to, to, you know, like, let me show you. Like as seasons go, you can see that you get like a, 
as the seasons go, you you get like a, an icon when you like get a get a certain rank or whatever, right? Which is really cool. So it like incentivizes you to grind ladder, which I think is great. Whereas in like Total War, we just don't have that. We don't even have a functional ladder. Yeah, we just don't have any. Uh, all games are best of one today. All games are best of one. Yeah, we're just it's it's meant to be a fast casual tournament. Well, I mean, not casual per se. I mean, we have super high level players in here, but it's meant to be a fast tournament that like somebody can dedicate two or three hours to and just call it a day. I, you know, cause best of three tournaments could go, you know, six, seven hours. So we're just trying to keep it low key. And like, it's, it's a place for people to get some respite from maybe like seven or eight hour tournaments. Yeah, the FFAs are really fun. We might even do one at the end, who knows? Ugh. And that's gonna be good, man. AOE4 is the only good RTS made in ages. Yeah, if we're talking like traditional base building RTS, yeah, it kind of is, right? Like, I, I don't know what else. Like a lot of modern RTS games, what they do is they um, they use that really like Dawn of War system where it's like objectives and ticket generation. I, I don't like that as much. I love base building and map control and all that. Yeah, I, I, wish, I wish more were like that. Like I'm kind of sick of like all these RTS games doing just like like you get so hyped they're like oh big new RTS game and then it's like oh there's three objectives on the map and you just get resources fighting over those and you don't build bases and yeah you know like base building RTSs are just are the the, the business holy shit order of the dragon oh my god wow we are we are truly getting treats today ladies and gentlemen we're truly getting treats we got five minutes till this match starts so we're just gonna chill out and talk but um yeah man. Order of the Dragon match. Sign me the hell up for that. Will the website get some team game and FFA functionality? Um, I'm not sure about that. I'd have to talk to... Because the developer... We have two different developers. One who helps me with AOE4, uh, AOE4 Tavern and one who helps me with Total Tavern. I'd have to talk to him and see if he would have time. Because he's volunteering for AOE4 Tavern. Um, despite my repeated request to pay him. But he just volunteers. Um so yeah, we'd have to see if he if he would have the time to do it or would be able to do it. Noob for Hire, thank you for the donation. Helping pay the prize pool for the players. Greatly appreciate that. Hey, Turn, big fan. What, what love watching your cast 1v1 age. Age of Empires 1 was the first video game I ever played. Dude, the early... God. Oh, God. I get just... It's such an overload of nostalgia. Thinking back to like the late 90s, early 2000s, mid 90s even, just playing those first RTS games, you know, on your haggard computers. Oh, that was such a good time in life. It was such a good time. Yeah, RTS games are hard to get into. That's true. That's the big barrier. And, you know, what I've noticed is from a lot of the younger, like really young generation, like Alpha and Z, is that, you know, they, they definitely like things that get going quicker. So, like, if you're talking about, like, uh, MOBAs or shooters, um, you know, Fortnite-type games, whatever. Like, the things that are just fast and easy to get into is what they like more so. Because millennials, like our millennial generation... We were, we were raised on playing, like, these kind of games. Like, millennial gaming was never easy. It was, like, clunky. The UIs were just wild. It was just, like, everything was difficult. So we were kind of raised playing these kind of games, you know. Oh, God, land parties. Yeah, I used to have Halo Combat Evolved land parties with my friends. We, um, this would have year, what year would it have been? Like, 2004, maybe? Gosh, I can't remember. We would have, like... A couple people would bring their Xboxes over and we'd have like three TVs set up and all of us. Oh, it was so good. It was so fun. You think about talking to Aussie Jong and maybe getting some sponsors for a big tournament? Uh, yeah, so most big tournaments in Age of Empires 4 are sponsored by Microsoft. Yeah, so Microsoft just bankrolls everyone's tournaments. Like I'm pretty sure EGC TV, um, like I think the, what was it? That something Octagon that he did. It was really good. Yeah, that like Microsoft, I'd have to reach out to Microsoft, um, which I've thought about doing. I probably will. At some point, I probably will. Definitely need that dopamine feed style gameplay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Halo Combat Evolved was 2001. Yeah. And then I think I, Halo Halo 2 came out and when I was in college. I think that would have been like six or seven. Halo, no, it was Halo 3 by then. Yeah, Halo 3 was by 2007 or 8. Yeah, okay. Getting it backwards. Doom and Serial Cable Land Party. That's the shit, dude. That was so good. Are you fully sponsoring this? Yeah, so all the um, all the tournament prize pools are paid out, paid out of my pocket so far. That's why they're not that big. <laughs> you know, it's fifty dollars for first, twenty five for second. Eventually, they're going to get bigger. If I could, if I can contact Microsoft and maybe work something out and get like a, a decent little you know pool for our weekly events, because these are going to be weeklies. 
I'm going to have these every single week. At least one is my game plan. So yeah, I would love if Olive Garden would sponsor us, dude. I shout them out. Olive Garden and Applebee's should sponsor my channel with how much I talk about them on streams. They really should. Yeah, mirror matches are allowed, but mirror matches aren't that bad here, Bruno. Says, greetings from Poland. Chesh, my friend, Yakshe Mash. I hope you're doing Bardzo Dobja on this fine day. Yes. Gen Xer. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. Roos are my favorite next to Byzantines, but man. Yeah, Order of the Dragon. I can't figure them out, but I'm curious to see what Scatterbrain can do with these bad boys. Did you ever play Supreme Commander? Um, I did not actually. No, I did not. I have not. My high school land party games were Halo. Oh, yeah, dude. Supreme Commander, Dawn of War 1. Those were good times. Those were good times. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I would love to do land parties again. It's 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 one of the depressing things about getting older. I mean, there's a lot of pros to getting older, of course. You know, like autonomy and, you know, being able to, you know, go where you want, buy what you want potentially. Um, but yeah, like there's things where all your friends go in separate directions and, you know, it's definitely harder to make friends as you get older. But on the upside, you know, that's why stuff like this is great. Like, hey, of course, that's true. Yes, when you have the best wife like I do, you don't need friends. But, you know, those those things, like, when we're talking about, like, land parties, very relevant. Uh, are you a ball... Uh, a ball dude, I'll eat any hot dog. The brand, I don't... It doesn't matter. Give me gas station hot dogs, dude. Sign me up. Yeah, I'll take it all day. All right, rant is over. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Five, four, three, two... One and now, ladies and gentlemen, we are loading in to our semifinal match of today's 1v1 sweat tournament. And it is time. Spawning on the west side of the map here on cliff sides, it is going to be Senpai on the Roos. So, once again, seeing the Roos pick today, going to be opening up with a quick hunting cabin with three villagers and three on food. So, that is going to be their split, three and three. Now, looking up to the northeast, it's going to be the Order of the Dreaded Dragon. So Order of the Dragon opening up with the scout right away. Now, the reason why they're doing that is because they're playing against Roots, so they want to deny all the bounty on the map. Pyodir, thank you. As a longtime supporter, I feel obliged to help fund the tourney. Jankuya Bardzo, thank you for the uh, 50s Lotus Man. Go. Hope you're doing well over in Poland. We're going to be there for uh, Christmas. Very, very excited. It's going to be super, super fun. And uh, it is on. So Order of the Dragon going to be using their scout to not only gather sheep, but also look for uh, the bounty. And they do have the double scout, obviously, having started with one, so... Immediately, one camp is going to be denied to the Bruce, and he does get a good sheep haul as well. So, deer camp denied here. This deer camp has not been discovered yet. Down here, this one hasn't been discovered yet. And yeah, the Bruce have not managed to find a deer camp yet. So, potentially could get denied pretty heavily, as the Order of the Dragon has found one deer camp down here and was able to take that out. So, no deer there for the Bruce. And over on the other side, let's see. Yeah, the Bruce do find a deer camp up here, so they are going to be getting at least a little bit of bounty out of the gates. So won't be too sad about that. And I suspect the second scout will be popping out in a moment. Yes, the second scout is here. And the Roos are going to get two uh, camps of deer, which is good. Like, at a minimum, as a Roos player, you want to get at least two deer camps. If your opponent is able to get more than that, you're going to be feeling pretty bad. Because then it's a little bit harder to age up. And obviously, your bounty is going to be worse. You're going to be feeling it pretty bad. I do not believe Order of the Dragon scouts are stronger. I don't think so. No, they're, they're normal. Yeah, it'd be cool if they were gilded scouts. Golden scouts riding around. But sadly, they are not. All right, sheep being dropped off here, and the second deer camp. Uh oh, the uh, it looks like the order of the dragon player has found this, and it is maybe going to be able to contest this camp. He's currently taking out the wolf to shut down a little bit of bounty here. Up at the top side, the roost were able to get this camp as well as a wolf up there, and now are coming down here. And it looks like it's Mortal Combat time. They're going to be fighting over the camp here. The order of the dragon scout is doing it. Oh, he pushes it under the tree, and it looks like he does get it. All right, so Scatterbrained has denied several and is going to be denying another deer there. Brutal. He denies the Roos. All those deer. The Roos player is not paying attention. Rather, he's trying to kill the scout, which is a big mistake. He should be contesting the deer. And the Order of the Dragon player cackling all the way to the bank. Granted, he could lose a scout here, which would be really disastrous. You do not want to be losing your scout because if you do, you're going to be giving up all those sheep. But at the end of the day, that was a pretty big own there. Uh, Scatterbrain came out way ahead. Senpai lost a lot. Uh, the Sensible Deer are also going to get taken down. The Roost player with some uh, micro blunders on the south side for sure. But the Kremlin is going to be going down. Kremlin in a good position. Going to be securing the uh, Berry Bushes as well as the Veiny Gold Vein. And on the east side, we do see the Aachen Chapel popping down. The dreaded Aachen Chapel. Great, great landmark. And um, it's pretty interesting. Order of the Dragon, you often see... You're often seeing... Um, you know, the other landmark, the mind work, to get the unique upgrades, like the Golden Kyrus, which was recently buffed, and the Zornhau, and uh, and also the Bodkin Bolts, although you don't see Bodkin Bolts too much. But 
The Aachen Chapel here with the Order of the Dragon, since they don't start with a prelate, the landmark was changed, so they actually don't need a prelate. Right? So, yeah, Scatterbrain is the nemesis of the Bruce, it would appear. Currently, Order of the Dragon at 12 villagers against 16, but you have to take it with a grain of salt because Order of the Dragon produces villagers slower, and they're typically a little bit more efficient. So, I wonder if we're going to be seeing a 2TC. I don't think so. I think it's going to be Fast Castle Relic Grab. If we were going to see 2TC, you would probably have seen the Aachen like right here. This could have been, could it have reached that stone, berries, and gold? Maybe. This might have been a slightly better position if the house was put elsewhere. You could like plop it here, maybe. I don't know. It's a drop off point too, so having it next to the berry bushes would have been very strong. Yeah, I think Aachen right here might have been a little bit better, but that's really just being kind of, uh, you know, really, really particular here. So scouts duking it out, fighting for visibility on the battlefield. The Roost Kremlin is up here. Senpai going to be going for 2TC. So once again, the Roost going to be going for 2TC. Seems to be a little bit meta for them as uh, they do set up a stable initially to get the early night. And I like the stable. I think that's a good call because it gives you access to uh, boar. I mean, you can kill the boar with villagers and scouts, but getting one early night out and just hunting down all the boar in the battlefield, guaranteeing that you could uh, get good bounty is going to be um, very, very nice here. So what is our Gilded Champion going to be doing? Um, I think the Order of the Dragons just going past Castle. It, it, I mean, he's banking. He's building nothing. This is like a greedy, greedy, greedy naked fast castle. Like super greedy. Um, yeah, he's building an outpost, obviously, to prevent night harass, which is good. And that's all you really need. If you just build that and maybe one Rax or something, you're going to be pretty safe against early Roos. And Roos are going 2TC. So Order of the Dragon is going to be playing very much in a similar fashion as to what we see typically. Um, just grabbing relics on the map and just cackling all the way to the bank. So, um, yeah, they do that. They can do that well. I think HRE gets Castle slightly faster because they start with the Prelate earlier. But I'm not sure about the timing on that. We'll have to see what he gets here. I mean, this is a really greedy castle. Like, he's literally building, like, no defensive military. The Roost player also isn't harassing. So, clearly, you know, he might be able to get away with it. Roost are pretty close to their um, second TC. So, in 294 and 155. HRE going to be probably aging up to castle mid six minutes. Um, currently 562, 436, almost enough gold. And of course, if you guys are a little bit newer, the Order of the Dragon Villagers do carry 40% more resources. And when they're augmented by the Aachen Chapel, which is going to be um, increasing their gather rate, it's pretty savage for sure. Yeah, gather speed by 10%. Is, is the order is the HRE one better? I always thought it was more. Did they nerf this? Wasn't the gather rate more? Mass Inspire? Not sure, man. Not sure. We'll take a look later. So second TC is going to be popping up. I I would love to see the Grand Theft Deer again, but I don't think that's going to happen. That was that was the dream in the previous game. That was the power fantasy. But the villager is going to be hustling across. For sure going to be setting up a TC here. And look at Scatterbrain. Scatterbrain seems really, really aware of um, his opponent's strategy. Like he's just sitting up there and where is the second TC going to go? It, this is the ideal spot for it. Like right in the middle of this deer encampment. That's like super good. And we do see a Roost Knight coming down. Maybe get a bully this scout off and get the kill. So the Roost Knight comes out and overall Scatterbrain does react. So he was paying attention. And now the TC is going to be dropping. But Castle Age is also going to be dropping as well. So check this out. Really good contain here by Senpai. Senpai has one scout here, one scout here, and one scout here. So he literally has full vision on every single action that the Order of the Dragon is going to want to do. And Order of the Dragon is going to be getting a Castle Age here at about 6 minutes and 40 seconds, give or take. They just need to turn in a little bit of food. Oh, he left before he had enough food. That's unfortunate. So yeah, he didn't have quite enough here, but... Yeah, here it comes. HRE is much stronger. That's what I thought, but has uh, no village inspiration from prelates, yeah. All right, so Regnant's Cathedral is going down. How is he going to get these relics out without any military units? He definitely needs, like, uh, barracks to get some Gilded Spearmen to come out and escort those prelates that are going to be coming out of the cathedral. The Roost, in the meantime, we do have the stable and archery ranges coming out. 2TC is up and um, currently now producing villagers. So he was idling there for a moment, but obviously villager advantage for the Roost because Order of the Dragon produces villagers slower. Their villager production rate is 24 seconds, whereas other factions, I believe, are uh, 20. So it's going to be a little bit different there. Archery range coming out. Interesting. So not going to be Gilded Knights. I always thought Gilded Knights were kind of one of the, the more standard fares. But um, yeah, obviously this will be good. Just spamming out crossbows to pound down those Roost Knights will be very, very effective. And here they come. So the Regnant's Cathedral popping down. That's a very quick castle. Eh, I suppose it's not as quick as Zhushi. Zhushi is just OP though. Right, these guys, this is like a fair fast castle. Zhushi can get it to like just past six minutes and just be like, oh my god. And they also have like Zhugnu flying all over the place. And are we going to be seeing Gilded Crossbows coming out? Who knows? Where are the Gilded Boys? So first Prelate's going to be popping out, but it is being camped by a Roost Knight. So that's going to be a pretty bad time. This is not going to be an easy Relic Grab. The Roost player seems to have very, very good map awareness and very, very is very privy to what's going on here. 
Gilded Archer, interesting choice. Um, knowing that there's like Roost Knights out in the field, that feels like it's a bad, bad time. And the first Prelate is going to get Lance pretty hard. I can't help but think that the Roost player is going to pull ahead here um, with how these engagements are going. We get our first Gilded Archer coming and um, definitely needs to be Gilded Crossbows and or Spearmen. Considering his opponent, he knew he had Knights out, like it seems like a bit of a misplay. So another Prelate's coming and now we get Gilded Crossbows. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Archer chasing back these scouts here. And the Roost with really, really good map control. And also, they have a good army, too. We see three Knights and um, three Archers as well. So Prelate has popped out. He's going to be heading to the south to try and grab this Relic. But it's not going to go super well for him. This is a beautiful, beautiful scouting here as well. But where are those Spears? Because you need to be escorting these Prelates. Um, and I guess there's Archers, too, for the Roost. So the Roost would be able to potentially just, you know, shut you down here. Now they're going to be idling the Eco here for the Order of the Dragon. So... Villager is going to be forced back, and losing villagers as Order of the Dragon sucks pretty bad. He's going to be heading north. Uh, Gilded Crossbow's on the way out, and now the Roosts are just going to be diving in. This is a really greedy opening from Order of the Dragon, like super greedy. Granted, a couple of Roost units do potentially get taken down. Looks like it's going to be one overall. Um, his food eco is in really, really bad shape. He's going to need to move over to these berry bushes right now. So, yeah, not feeling good for Order of the Dragon here. Um, does his Prelate get down here? He does not. Looks like the Prelate was hiding. A couple of crossbows have arrived, and now the crossbows can counter these Roost Knights pretty well. Granted, the archers will be a bit of a problem here. But honestly, Order of the Dragon does range units very well. Their archers can get an upgrade called the uh, Dragon Scale Leather. I think, yeah, that's what it is, where they get a uh, ranged armor upgrade. So now they're going to be pushing these guys back. And if the Order of the Dragon wants to get back in this game, they need to get a couple relics quick. Okay, so one relic is grabbed there. So there's the Regnant's Cathedral. Good. He got one. And we're going to see if he can find more. The Roost player doing an excellent job, though. This harassing and this harrying is good. Having that kind of map awareness of what his opponent's up to. Two villager kills to one. So here comes the prelate heading to the south. Definitely need to escort that bad boy. And yes, they are. So the crossbows are moving. And the big gilded boys are uh, are there. Yeah, they do a lot of damage. 16 base damage with their crossbows. 18 against heavy targets. So they can melt roost knights very effectively. How close are the roost to castle age? They're still a ways off. But they are getting a massive economic lead for sure. Um, looking at the resources per minute. Currently, the roosts are blowing them out of the water for sure. But the regnets... With a market is a pretty powerful combo, right? Because you can balance your economy with all that extra gold that you're getting. And that's going to be two relics. If they can get at least three, I would call that a victory for these bad boys. Yeah, regular HRE gets 40% bonus from their um, prelates, uh, from the Aachen. Whereas the um, order only gets 10%, which is a pretty brutal one. Yeah, pretty brutal one. The Gilded Crossbows a bear at 50? Kind of, kind of to an extent, right? So Archers and Crossbows are doing a little bit of Mortal Kombat here. It looks like a third Relic is going to be grabbed. The Roos have certainly given up on uh, harrying the objectives, or harrying the uh, Relics, I should say, which are the objectives for this game. I definitely think parking uh, Roost Knight on every idle one would be really powerful. It would make it super hard for Order of the Dragon to grab their goodies, because now Order might be able to find a way back in. We see Dragon Scale Leather and the Archers are being upgraded I'm as sure well. We got two Relics, so the gold generation for the Order of the Dragon is going to be really good passively now. You're going to see it's going to start picking up here really, really soon. Barracks coming out, obviously going to be seeing some Spears. Uh, most likely not going to be seeing the Launch Neck without the um, without the Zorn Howe upgrade. Uh, maybe Men at Arms. Golden Curus is a lot better now. It did get its Threshold raised to 30%, so now they can um, start taking reduced damage at 30% instead of 20 So, All right. So they're lurking about. We do see the crossbows. That's a pretty big Roos army. 22 against 15 supply. But we got more crossbows coming out as well as upgrades. This uh, prelate probably not going to make it down here. Looks like the Roos player is kind of scouting, looking for anything. And oh, that's not good. So that, that's a bit of a tell, right? The Roos player probably knows he's up here. But I don't think he's going to go. He's going to sit back. So Roos going to get Castle Age very soon. They're currently at 1,200 food a minute. Just absolutely crushing the Order of the Dragon on food. Order probably needs to do a farm transition soon. They're kind of contained in their base and they're really running out of food on the map. So I think Order needs to start planning ahead, getting a lot of wood and just mass building farms by the Aachen Chapel back here. Because, um, yeah, they're going to have a bad time. Golden Curus is in the mine work as well. Yeah, so all the unique upgrades are kind of off the table. That's why you often see Order go with mine work. Simply because the uh, production increase, the mass inspire, isn't as good from the Aachen for the Order. And also on top of that, the unique upgrades are very, very good for Order of the Dragon. So Berry Bush is going to be grabbed. Roos army looking pretty jacked. Um, currently, three relics, though. So look at the passive gold. Currently, they're getting 659, and they don't even have that much on gold compared to the Roos. I think the Roos, like, look, the Roos have 16 villagers on gold, and the Order has six. Granted, they are Order of the Dragon villagers, so I don't know about the exact math of that, but they've got to probably start getting some farm infrastructure. Now, the Roos army is pretty fat here. It's very erect. And where are these villagers going? It looks like they're going back here, uh, probably to jump on wood. Emergency repairs are on the table, so you could repair this. Might as well do it to occupy your opponent for a little bit longer. 
Although maybe he's trying to bait out the emergency repair so he can dive, but I don't think that's the case. So here comes the crossbows and archers. I'm going to be shooting into the knights, and uh, one of the knights does get pretty beat up, but is able to micro back there. The archers do scoot forward, but the ranged uh, gilded archers do have really, really good stats against range. They have um, they have currently four ranged armor, which is massive against these feudal age archers. So they're only taking one damage. Look at this. Look at the order of the dragon archers just massacring these Rus archers with their dragon scale leather. And now we have the gilded men at arms. Dude, look how cool they look. Oh, they're such a rad looking faction. The order of the dragon is really, really neat, but very hard to play the village difference is huge but you have to remember the order of the dragon villagers are much better they have better carry capacity and i believe their rates are also better too so um take that into account plus there's also three relics and a tech advantage for the order of the dragon so yeah there's there's all of that so we do see a siege workshop coming out where are these villagers going to be heading now it looks like they're heading down here to try and secure that boar and guys he does get a fourth relic he gets a fourth relic that's big if he can get four relics off this, man, it really looked like he was on the back foot. But there's a chance that the Roost player might have uh, let him back in the game here. It is going to be Abbey of the Trinity, which I think is a bit of a mistake at this point, considering your opponent has grabbed all the relics on the map. I just think uh, putting the high trade house here would be better just for passive gold generation. But at the end of the day, um, this isn't going to be bad either. Warrior monks can be upgraded and get some unique upgrades here, which make them very pertinent in combat. Uh, getting them out on the map to grab the sacred sites is also not a bad idea. So, you know, there's there's a little bit of back and forth on that. So, Siege Workshop is up. Um, we got three relics. The fourth one is going to be dropped probably in a tower somewhere. And they were able to get a deer camp on the side. The Bruce player not denying too much on the map. And the Order of the Dragon did this, this launch neck moving in there. He does got his cleave and mace. They actually build maces. That's pretty cool. Yeah, attacking into the Roost. The Roost do have a technological disadvantage, and the army sizes are 38 against 42, and considering these are Castle Age tier units, they probably would win. That's what's always so trippy about the Order of the Dragon. You're like, oh, they would just get crushed there. Their army's so small, but like, legitimately, their, their units are very beast mode, right? Yeah, Secret Agent Prelates, 100%. Scatterbrain is very, very scrappy. It felt like he was behind for a lot of this game, but now he's kind of finding his way back into it. So here comes the charge. The Gilded uh, Men at Arms going to be eating it like champs, so they move in there. But yeah, this is going to be a hard fight. Those archers aren't going to be super efficient, and there are a lot of knights here. Um, it looks like, yeah, they get Castle Age right then, too. Man, the knights just got upgraded, so now they're basic knights. Beautiful timing. There's only two crossbows left in this army, so those Roost Knights are going to bully the hell out of these units if they decide to keep chasing. Archer's also getting upgraded, and the ranged armor upgrade is coming in from Senpai here, which is going to be beautiful, mitigating a lot of the DPS of this uh, Order of the Dragon army. Knights getting in there. Big charge. A lot of the Order of the Dragon units are starting to kind of collapse under this pressure. You know what would actually be really, really good here? would be a um, Gilded Knights. Like, Gilded Knights from the Order of the Dragon would wreck. They would tank all these units here, and now the Mangonel is going to get torched here, so the Mangonel getting rode down by the Roost Knights. Archer's valiantly trying to defend. Order of the Dragon going to be forced to idle, and yeah, that, that Mangonel feels really weird when you don't have the, the melee kind of to uh, deal with that, right? But the passive gold generation might be able to keep Scatterbrain to the game here. He's currently idled in his TC. The Roost player coming for blood, and this could for sure be the end of the game. I mean, I, I think the Gilded Knights would have been really good. His archers get massacred. TC is under pressure. Looking at the economic disparity, too, 78 against 34. Relics can only do so much, and that is probably going to be a GG well played. Order of the Dragon has fallen. That is it. Good night, my sweet prince. Good night, indeed. Yeah, that was an interesting game. It kind of looks like the Order might have been able to scrap back, but I think the Order of the Dragon's unit composition was just off. I think you need to make, um, I think you need to make some like some some meat in there. You know, it was all it was all uh, it was all potatoes, <laughs> I guess you could say. Yeah, GG, well played. It was definitely uh, definitely a, an interesting one. I always like to see Order of the Dragon at a high level, but yeah, they just seem weird to me. They definitely seem like a meme faction. The Roos was able to get that 2TC. Um, and like the Roos player could have even won even harder too by just proactively scouting the relics and camping them on the sides. They wouldn't have even gotten those last two, right? So, all right. Let's go check here. Let's refresh this and see what the brackets look like. Okay. So scrolling down here. And we have Senpai in the grand finals. And then Anatand and um, Andy playing on the bottom side. So we can go cast that game as well. We'll do that. Yeah, all right. So let's head back. Yep, tournament coming in on its final run here. And let's go cast his match and see who he's playing. The Dark Lord, Anatand, is probably the highest level player we have in this event. He is very, very good. Um, I've, I've seen him win major events. I'm pretty sure I've seen him take game, like beat Beastie in Marine Lord in games. So this man, is, uh, this man is serious. All right, so where are we at? Yeah, they needed to probably establish a farm economy. He played well, though. It was a really good run today by um, Scatterbrain. He, he was very fun to watch. 
shout out to you, man. All right, so let's find Anatan here. I believe he's on my friends list somewhere. If he's not, we will we will get to the bottom of this. There's Quill, Matt Boss. All right, and um, where are we? Where are we? Is it this is who he's playing here? No, that was the individual from the previous game. I'm pretty sure he's on my friends list. We casted his game earlier. There's Scatterbrain there. And then looking around, it's just recently played. I wish there was an easier way to do that for sure. All right, so we can do it the old fashioned way too. Yeah, best of one tournament. Eventually we'll do a best of three one. What's his actual ID? Hmm. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, anyone can cast. If, if you're a caster and you want to cast games for my tournament, you don't need to. I don't care if you shout me out or anything. Just, just go, go have fun, dude. Go have fun. I know some tournaments do that, but I really don't care. Anybody is welcome to cast. All right. So where are we looking? There's Quill. We're gonna have to find him somehow. We're gonna have to find this man. All admining should be done. I have to drive. Hey, sounds good, Gunhound. Cheers. Beastie Beauty is the opponent. Okay, so we can we can add them there. Thank you. No, the, everyone knows to. Um, yeah, there it is. All right, so add as a friend, and we can do that. Can I observe his game from here? Okay. Oh, he's Conqueror too. Also, okay, great. He is Conqueror too. Uh, if you go to if you go to uh, aoe4tavern.com, you can see the brackets. Unfortunately, we don't have the fancy tools that Twitch has. Yeah, beastie beauty. Okay, I can't. Um, let's go ahead here. Do they accept the friend request? Yeah. All right, outstanding. So we sent that one. I don't think they've started yet. No, they haven't started yet. So they're going to be playing in a second, and then we'll 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 get in there. All right, great. Very good indeed. Anaten probably is appearing as offline right now. He, I'm pretty sure he's on my friends list. We saw him earlier, but yeah, he might just be appearing as offline. Hey, you're welcome, man. Thank you guys for joining today. It's been a fun event. We're closing in on the grand finals of today's scrap. And uh, yep, thank you. Appreciate that, Senpai. Senpai waiting in the grand finals. Somebody will notice him, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, just waiting for their match to start. They currently have not started yet. Maybe Beastie Beauty will hopefully accept the friend request and uh, we'll jump in as soon as we can. <laughs> Beastie Beauty. Yeah, Conqueror 2 player. Clearly going to be... A, a, Anatand is very high Conqueror 3, but, you know, a Conqueror 2 player is very competent. Like, they can put up a fight and potentially, if they play very well, can win. Um, Anatand would certainly probably be the favorite, just looking at the past play of the players, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. It's 3D Anatand. Yeah, yeah, he's in that, he's in that clan. They must be paying him in olive oil. Dude, I hope I hope we get to see some Byzantines, but I doubt it. Crackety tried them earlier and he lost. He paid the Byzantine tax. Like he probably very well could have made it much farther, but yeah, he just paid Byzantines and suffered, so. Yeah, it was it was a tough one, man. Alright, let's see if that I can look up his name here. I'm pretty sure he's on my 3D uh Anno Tanned. Yeah, there you see they're not in the game yet. Yeah, he's he's uh, sending a friend request to him. Cool. So he'll accept that hopefully. And outstanding. Conk dude, actual pro is probably yeah. It's an enormous elo difference, but like they usually conquer two and conquer three players will have very sound fundamentals. Like, and so they can put up a fight, and it won't be like it won't just be like watching like an absolute squash. I mean, it might it might be, but it's still there's some potential here. Yeah. Let's nerf Byzantines. Yeah, I think we should just nerf Byzantines until they just like have like a 10% win rate, you know? It's a shame because aesthetically they're just like so cool. I've been trying to figure out like 2TC builds with Byzantines, like how to make that work. But the problem with Byzantines and going 2TC is their feudal fighting is really awful. So it's hard to, it's hard to hold back feudal aggression while you're on the 2TC. I mean, maybe they can do it by going longbow mercenaries and just like playing like the English and sitting under with their, but like, yeah, the olive oil takes so long to get online. Top pros have around 2,600. Is it really that high, Panda? I thought they were more around like 2,000, 1,900. Yeah. APM is massive on the pros. It's true. Yeah, that's that's something I've noticed. Like, I, I played against some games against... Uh, uh, man, who have I played? What pros have I run into on ladder? Um, Divine. I played Divine. I don't know if Divine plays professionally, but he's really high ranked. I played him. I played against Hera. I played against Kapok. Um, I played against Mista. 
Uh, let's see, who else? I think that might be it as far as like pro pro players. Yeah. Misto is definitely the worst. For, I mean the best, but the worst for me. Like when Mista, when I was playing against Mista, that was pure suffering, dude. I just felt like I had no chance. Um, some of the other ones like weren't quite as bad, you know. But Mista was he was he was like very very scary to play, very very scary. Okay, so what are we looking around here? Let's see if he's in the game. I don't know if he is yet. So let's go ahead and do the ad feature again and see. Okay, so he accepted it. Shout out to our boy Anatan here. He he accepted that. Great. So now we're going to be able to cast uh, and find him easier on the friends list. I'm glad they fixed the friends list. I know it was broken for a while with all the servers getting crunk and whatnot. All right, and Beastie Beauty accepted too. Cool. So we're about ready. Yeah, there he is. They're in the lobby right now working out their picks and bans. Well, let's look at this man's stats. You ready? This is this is our Dark Lord today. Um, I wonder if he's playing ranked games. Yeah, Conqueror 3. Looks like he legit hasn't even played ranked this season. He's probably just practicing behind the scenes for pro level play. Pro players do do that sometimes, you know. But yeah, he's 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 very scary. Hera doesn't play um age four anymore, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I'd probably be a minus two thousand player, plastic league, yeah. Yeah, Hera left a long time ago. He went back to age two. H age two is a great game. Like there's things about age two that people like. Uh, you know, for example, like some players will enjoy the fact that like the early game micro in age two of like, you know, when you throw javelins or shoot arrows at people in early age, you can like dodge those arrows. Personally, I don't like that mechanic. Like I'm kind of sick of that coming from total war. Like arrow dodging is just kind of like obnoxious to me. Um, but you know, a lot of people like that. I don't like, I prefer more of the Starcraft when, when a unit shoots, it typically will make its impact. You know, I, I prefer that, but a lot of people prefer the high micro, like dodging and stuff. I just, you know, it's to each their own. They're both great games. They're both great games. Hera is dominating AOE too at the moment. Yeah, not surprised. He's, he's, those guys have been playing forever and he's great. What about Viper? Is he still playing? I remember Viper had a good run at Age of Empires 4. He was definitely super, super uh, competitive. I'd, uh, I'd a play of turn jump to AOE too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if my, my old man hands could handle that, that micro on those units. Okay, how are we looking here? Nope, haven't started yet, so still doing their picks and bans. Yeah, no, I I, I, I think, I, I, what's my favorite RTS of all time? That's really hard, man. I, I don't know, I love like the early StarCraft games, like Brood War and stuff was so fun as a kid. But Warcraft 3 is probably the one I have the most time in. Like, I love Warcraft 3. Oh my God, it's so good. The Frozen Throne, it's just amazing, dude. May have an, may have an issue, sure. Take a look, Gunhow. Houston, we have a problem. Let's see what they got. If somebody needs to drop, it's fine. All right, so checking. Yeah, I don't see anything, Gunhow. I'm looking in Discord. Um, all right. Looking around, everything looks smooth and fine so far. But you can shoot me a DM if there's any problems or, um, oh yeah, go from there. I see folks chatting, Senpai's waiting in the grand finals. Aussie Drago casted Viper match against some pro recently, so he's plays a bit at least. That's cool. Yeah, Viper was really good. Oh, okay, so he had to drop. So, okay, so he either lost the game or um, he dropped out of the event. Yeah, so we're just going straight to the finals then. Okay. So it looks like Anatan's opponent just dropped. I don't know if it was the intimidation factor or if he had to go. We'll see. But we're in the uh, finals. Yeah, Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne, was. I, I sunk countless hours of my life into that game. And that's where we kind of got the inspiration for the avatar system, like unlocking unique icons. Yeah, I wish I wish Age had um, avatars for just raw wins on ladder with the faction. That'd be really cool. That was what I really liked about Warcraft Three was grinding for those. So you can see our on-site leaderboard: Hot Somali with two wins, Inca with one, Uravity, Matisse, Quill. Obviously, getting a tournament win will kind of just jump you up to the top here. And you can see the players uh, will unlock their avatars if they want to. Yeah. But we will be doing invites based on this website. Once we get like a good run of tournaments in, like more games, we're going to be um, inviting the top 16 or, well, how many ever factions there are. We're going to be inviting all, all of them and um, doing a faction war. But invites are going to be done based on this leaderboard. So if you play in our tournaments, um, those will be bigger money events, like 500 to to $1,000 kind of prizes. So yeah, it's, it's going to be fun.
They already played. The bracket was just behind. Oh, okay, got it. No problem. Yeah, we're good. Like, this is normal. Like, if we were casting a Total War tournament, this would be, like, this would be very normal. Like, having, like, 20 minutes between games. I'm happy to get a little break, though, while we wait. I have no idea why my parents bought me work after when I was literally nine years old. Yeah, those were the days, man. Those were the days. All right, so Grand Finals is going to be Senpai versus Anatand. So it's the Roost player we just casted versus Anatand in the Grand Finals for the prize. And, um, yeah, we're just waiting for him to get going. Wang is in the lobby, but Wang is not in the Grand Finals. Not today. Anatand is here. Looks like they're still playing. The faction role will be fun. So basically, we're going to invite one player for each faction in the game and there will be a champion for each one so ideally by the time our leaderboard is more developed and we have you know mostly high level players there um it will be a very good event with you know top players so warcraft 2 yeah warcraft 2 soundtrack was really good i'd like to get that on like a vinyl or something that'd be fun <laughs> where's the people for the 2v2v2 yeah i'm sure it'll happen don't worry have you seen anything about Stormgate? I think it looks great. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play it. I would have loved to have um, streamed it, but yeah, unfortunately they didn't reach out or anything. So, but in in, in another life for sure, I'll, I'll I'll be covering it and playing it. Okay, still hasn't started yet. Let me message him. Yep, they're in a group right now, so he's getting into the game. They probably are just doing their picks and bans. It's it's going to be French. Oh, you played French versus Joan. How'd you get caught in that matchup? Oh my god, how'd that happen? You got a ban Joan of Arc, dude. You can't let her through the pick and ban phase. <laughs> yeah, you can't have that. Yeah, Warcraft 3 is a great game. Yeah, it's really, really a classic. Reforged was a disaster. That was at an absolute shit show. Yeah, this is a shame. Blizzard honestly just kind of sucks for the most part nowadays. The one thing that Blizzard's doing that kind of has like tempted me a little bit is, um, is what's it called? Uh, season of Discovery, like class, the classic WoW thing, that looks really fun. Like I, I, I look at it every night as I'm like winding down, and I'm like, don't tempt me with, the, with this evil. It's tough, man. I, I'm, I'm like this close to playing, playing Season of Discovery because classic WoW was like, dude, I could have, I could have, if I had the time I put into classic WoW, I could have spoken like several languages. I could have become a black belt in a martial art if I had just put that time into something else. Oh man. Yeah, that's the one thing about Stormgate that I don't like as much as StarCraft is the um, is the aesthetic. In StarCraft, it was more grim dark. Like I love the 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 scary, like brutal aesthetic of the universe. Whereas Stormgate looks a little bit more cartoony, which I don't like as much. But it's still not going to dissuade me from playing the game. So I know, but Classic WoW was just so fun, dude. It was so fun. I have no idea, Joe. I, I couldn't answer that question. Okay, so Anatan is in the lobby with his opponent. It's almost go time. I wonder what we're going to see. Are we going to see some more Shinobi action? My college roommate and I think, yeah, I know college was, was rough, dude. I I, uh, <laughs> I remember I remember just wasting so much time playing WoW in college. Don't, I tried it and they shanked it with buying. So in Season of Discovery, you can buy, whoa, Anatan, is he just trying to flex on his opponent here by playing French into Joan of Arc? There's no way this is good for French. I think Anatan is just flexing here. I think he's just, he's got to just be showing off, right? That, that can't be, that can't be right. I still think he has the advantage because of how good he is and his micro, but yeah, that's rough. What did I main in WoW? Um, so in vanilla, in classic WoW, I was a rogue. Um, but the one I played the most, which is Burning Crusade, I was a, I was a, a frost mage. I was a gladiator frost mage. And then in, um, Wrath of the Lich King, I had a um, Gladiator Frost Mage and a Gladiator um, Death Knight. Yeah. So I, I mainly did Arena. That was like all I did. It was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good game, Leo. Sounds good. Dude, Joan of Arc versus the French. It's the it's the Civil War. This is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. I'm I'm curious. Like the French literally have no advantages over like Joan of Arc. She's just better at everything. Um, I'm okay. I guess the influence system, they might be able to like, if they can get castle, maybe they have a slightly stronger castle. I don't know because their, their keep influence will be like immediately pop off on a bunch of buildings, but Joan can just get cost reduced, like everything with like across the map with like no micro. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. How am I enjoying Baldur's Gate 3? It's a great game. 
I don't play anymore though. I again, I prefer multiplayer. You know, I, I kind of burn out quick on single player games. I burn out. <laughs> no, James, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I guess French can boom better. Sure, maybe. But I don't know. I just can't help but feel Joan is just kind of better at everything to an extent. French villagers, yeah, French build villagers faster. Joan does not. Okay. A little bit of a booming advantage, but I can't help but think that Joan's aggression will shut down any advantage the French will have, depending on the micro. But Anatan is like a pro player. So his micro is going to be so clean. He's not going to make too many mistakes. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals of today's tournament. We are here on the east side of the map with Anatan. He is going to be playing the French and to the northwest. Joan of Arc being played by Senpai. So Joan immediately building a house as well as the mining camp here. She's going to be trying to lead her people to victory here against Anatand and the French. Joan of Arc has been the decisive faction in the last two tournaments. Uh, so the last two tournaments we had, Joan of Arc was in the finals both times and she won both times. So we're going to see if the Dark Lord Anatand is going to be capable of breaking that streak here as he does set up his house and his mill here. So pretty standard openings for both players. Not going to be any weird tower rushes, nothing like that. And uh, it's go time, man. Somebody in chat says, pro players, I saw some games casted by BC, I think, uh, that had French winning against Jean. That's very interesting. And the thing is, this is kind of one of my conspiracy theories. I think that factions that can make early knights can actually fight Joan of Arc pretty well. Because Joan of Arc is OP because she murders spears. She goes into her sword mode and she's going to cleave through the spear units, right? But if you can make your own knights to fight their knights, then Joan of Arc's AoE damage isn't that bad. So I'm, I'm thinking that the slight economic advantage the French might have over Joan of Arc in tandem with the fact that they can get early knights might be the tipping of the scale. We'll have to see. Like, I think Roos can fight Joan early. I think that French can fight her early. Civs that have like that early armor, that early mass, I think is going to be pretty sweet. Yeah, this is all best of one. The tournament is designed to be fast. But in the future, like I said, we will do best of three. I think for the next event we do, we will make the grand finals a best of three. But for today, it's best of one. We're kind of trying out different formats and seeing what the community likes the most. So here it is, man. So three on gold and it's going to be eight here. So it's going to be an eight, three opening here for our old uh, Senpai player. And for Anatan, it's going to be a standard 10, two. So it's going to be 10 villagers on food. Wow, great sheep run here for Anatan. And up to the north, he's going to be getting two villagers here. And uh, those bad boys are ready to go. Abbasid and Ayyubid should be able to handle Jean 1v1. Yeah, the camel is definitely very helpful, for sure. Like, they will mitigate the damage of the horses. And the, the where I think you struggle against Joan is if you have to rely... Oh my god, 200, 2 minutes and 20 second age up here for Anatan. And Joan of Arc is pretty much the same thing. French can age up very quickly, but... Um, I think when you have to rely on spears to fight Joan of Arc, that's when you're losing. Like, because the spears just get annihilated by her holy wrath, by that AoE ability. But yeah, when you got the knights, it's not so bad. You're going to be okay. So looking over here, Joan of Arc building the School of Cavalry, and it looks like she is going to be dual building it, which is very standard. She's going to be getting quite a bit of experience here. So if you guys are newer, Joan of Arc gets experience when she's a peasant by building and harvesting. And when she levels up, she can get it by hunting boar, killing enemy units, capturing sacred sites, hunting wolves, uh, all that sort of good stuff. And typically, boars are what usually gets her the most experience. It was nerfed in this patch, so Joan of Arc, uh, the boar... Experience is now 25 as opposed to 50. And for scope, Joan of Arc, in order to get level three, needs to get um, 400 experience, if I'm not mistaken. So a boar will give you 25 of that. It used to be 50, which was really, really nuts. So yeah, this is one of my favorite maps, actually. So this one, all the gold is more or less in the middle. There's a couple loose gold nodes around your base, but um, it really forces the players to come out of their, their turtle and fight. Granted, you can do some decent trade too, but are there no trade posts? Oh, did they remove the trade posts on this map? I think they did. There was, I, I could have sworn there was a trade post on this map, previous patch, but it doesn't look like there's any trade here. Okay, I might have to evaluate that for a few th future matches and whatnot, but very interesting. Is there going to be an FFA after the finals? Yeah, probably so. We'll probably do an FFA to close things out. I think that'd be very fun. All right, so first night's going to be coming out for Anatan, and for Joan of Arc, she has not aged up yet, so Joan of Arc is going to be a little bit behind in that regard. Anatan doing a bit of scouting here. So his uh, old uh, cab going to be lurking around his opponent's base. Senpai preparing for war here. His school of cavalry and Joan should be leveling up shortly after, but Anatan massively ahead on the military production already. And you can see he immediately switches four villagers onto wood, which it means he's probably going to be getting an archery range soon. I am getting that good pressure. I think this is going to be heavy feudal here. I don't expect a 2TC from Anatan. I think this man wants to end this game early, come in, claim that prize, and uh, you know call it a night. So we'll see. 
They removed the trade posts and moved sacred sites. Yeah, I just noticed that. So the sacred sites used to be like back here and back here, but they removed the trade posts. I used to trade a lot on this map, which uh, was kind of my go-to strategy. I would give up the middle and do backline trading, but yeah, that's uh, something I need to be aware of. So, all right, all right. So on the other side, yes, knight's coming in. It is going to be the first blue knight versus the red knight. Who will win? Red versus blue, the classic duel of gaming. And it looks like Anatan's going to be creeping by. Joan of Arc is now in her uh, warrior form, her woman at arms. And Anatan's going to be keeping a close eye on Joan. Got to watch out, though. He's actually going to be taking the fight versus Joan. A little bit risky. And it looks like uh, Senpai is going to get a favorable engagement here. But the thing about Anatan is, if he can just keep Joan of Arc from getting experience, even if he's not, like, killing stuff, if he's just, like, following her around, that's when the French economy will be superior to that of Joan of Arc, right? So he just needs to kind of keep her from getting too crunk. And it looks like he's going to be going after the Huntsable Boar here. So yeah, denying the boar to Joan of Arc is big. And it looks like Senpai is going to be setting up some walls. Anatan does get lanced here pretty good. His Royal Knight does get pounded. And um, yeah, the French Civil War continues as Joan is... Um, dude, look how fast she is. Jesus, she's getting like pushed by that knight there. But overall, the board denial here is very, very good. So Anatan comes over. He denies the boar. So Joan of Arc is not going to be having any uh, free experience on this side of the map. Not at all. So a couple knights here and Joan of Arc going to be coming back. Going to be very disappointed with what they find. The other boar is all the way down here. So Joan is definitely not going to get that. Anatan making out like a bandit in the night here. And do we see an archery range for him? No, we do not. Um, we do have 155 wood in the bank for Anatan. So clearly enough to set up an archery range if he wants to. Perhaps he's waiting to see the tech line that his opponent goes with. But Joan is for sure going to get aggressive here. When she realizes that she's been duped and the boar has been stolen... Uh, I think she's going to come for blood. And now she's moving across the map. And that's how Joan wins games, is with feudal engagements. That's usually how she does it. So Blacksmith coming down to the back. It looks like it's going to be Knight Spam. And here's the thing. If Anatan just spams Knights and his opponent doesn't make Spears, he'll overwhelm him because Senpai is mixing in Archers to counter the inevitable Spears. But if the Spears don't come, then Mass Knights will defeat that army comp very, very easily. So if he just invests purely in the French Knights. So French are pulling back. We get the Blacksmith, and now the uh, free upgrade is coming in for the French. So they get the free melee attack upgrade, which is great. And uh, yeah, going for the very bushes now. Could it be a castle timing? I don't know. I don't think so. He does have seven on gold. His opponent has five on gold. And uh, we do see a total of four French knights right now. And Joan of Arc is just kind of exploring the map. Not really doing too much. Her experience, she does get a little bit of passive experience, and she has two charges of her Holy Wrath. The Divine Restoration provides healing, and Consecrate, she can now Consecrate the School of Cavalry, which is what she should do to make it a little bit cheaper to produce these Knights. And now the Blacksmith is coming out for the other French player. Pretty much identical situations here, as both players are just kind of grabbing their various nodes, you know, various safe food sources near their base. And it kind of looks like Anatan might be looking to go castle here. Yeah, we see a lot on gold. He's got a lot of French Knights, too. He's got seven French Knights. His opponent currently has five, I think, four or five with a lot of archers. And Joan of Arc as well. It'd be a pretty close fight army-wise. But I think with the home field advantage and the TC, I think that Anatan is pretty safe here. No outpost coming up from him either. So his gold is a little bit vulnerable. If Joan of Arc can force a feudal fight and maybe get a victory on the gold, that'd be really, really big. But the French Knight's going to be circling about. We do see the Royal Knight popping in there. And Anatan has to defend this. It's going to get pretty crazy here. He might be able to win, actually. He's got a lot of these knights in with some god tier micro. Here it comes. The archer's going to potentially get compromised. Joan of Arc going to start dropping AoEs. First AoE goes down right now. Anatan microing back the injured knights. Look at that. Not a single knight lost. Look how clean that micro is. And then he takes the injured knights, isolates the overextending units, and his French cab getting in there. But the royal knights and uh, Joan and Red have not gotten any kills whatsoever yet. And the Red army has lost quite a bit. AoE heal coming down from Joan as well. And now he charges back in. Man, his micro is so good. Red comes in with Joan. Gets a a little bit of an AoE on those. And Joan does end up getting some experience. Anatan needs to get the healing upgrade probably. Chivalry would be super good because look how beat up his army is. He lost, I think, one knight in that whole engagement. Absolutely savage. Absolutely savage. He lost one knight and really pushed back Joan of Arc's army. Joan of Arc, of course, did some okay damage, got some experience, but at the end of the day, if he gets if he gets a chivalry upgrade and lets these guys start healing, that's going to be value city. And I suspect he will. I suspect he will. So Senpai pulling back right now. And uh, Joan's going to be looking for some experience. Uh, I wonder if it's going to be Castle for Joan. Nope. Anatan is definitely better on food, but he did spend a lot of gold on these knights here. And do we see chivalry coming out? I feel like it'd be a shame. All these knights are so low, but if you could get them healed up, that would be... Uh, it's Micro Jackson. That's pretty good. Micro Jackson. I like that. That's funny. That's really good. Yeah. 
All right, so another knight is on the way out. Is he going to go raiding? I don't think he's in any shape to do any heavy fighting right now. I don't know if his opponent has perceived how beat up this French knight army is. Like, this army would not be able to fight very well. If you if you let Joan heal and come back in, you might be able to actually put some pressure and get a ton of experience here. And currently, we do not see the chivalry coming out. And Tan, he's saving gold for it now, I think. Let's see. Uh, no, doesn't appear to be the case. No, he's not saving up for the chivalry. So outpost coming down. Joan of Arc's going to be moving in. Villager's getting taken down. Nice harass there by Red. Joan of Arc certainly showing that she's still got some teeth here. Looking at the villager count of both players, we do see up 36 against 33. And French obviously do have faster villager production rate, so they are going to be slightly ahead on bills. Military size uh, is going to be favoring Joan of Arc, and I think Joan needs to keep the pressure on. Anatand is saving for Castle. You can see he's trying to bank food. He's not making too much military. He's kind of sitting under his TC, but there is an issue where he might run out of food here soon. If Joan of Arc's able to harry around the side of the base, you know, shut down all these bad boys. Yeah, it's pretty big. And the other food sources are down here, and there's a boar down here as well. There are some berries and deer up to the north where they can migrate if need be. Joan of Arc's lurking and just kind of keeping Anatan's forces in check. But Anatan, is he anywhere near castle? Not really. Kind of looking a little bit scary for him. Um, okay, now we do see chivalry coming out for both players. So that's going to be letting this big French knight army heal. So chivalry is coming out for Joan as well as the French king here. All right. So Joan of Arc coming down here is going to be getting a board. If Joan of Arc manages to get level three here, that could really turn the tide of the game for sure. Um, Senpai would be cackling pretty hard. Zenny is going to be able to call out his men-at-arms, which are basically a tier three unit here in the Feudal Age. Anatan with counter rating. This is really good. Um, I like that he took his healthy knights and he moves in and just kind of pokes the reinforcements. Looks like he got some villager kills when we weren't looking. So overall, Anatan did get three villager kills here. So very well played. Able to get a couple of those bad boys and keeping the uh, eco of Joan of Arc back. And wow, are we going to see a tower rush? So we see five villagers being pulled by Joan of Arc. Maybe, maybe some tower rushing on the gold. Anatan, in the meantime, is going to be going castle now. You can see a ton of villagers being put on gold. A ton. Currently, he's going to be rocking uh, 11 as opponent. His opponent has 11 too, but he's mainly making knights. More stables coming down. Outpost there to prevent some of the raiding. And you know what? I can't help but think that Senpai might have had a good opportunity to win here. Um, if Senpai had just kept pressuring when those knights were all damaged and built a battering ram and come in here, I think he would have won the game, actually. Even against somebody of the quality and um, professional level of Anatan, I think he could have won. But... Um, Senpai might be, I don't know about Senpai's background. He could be, you know, pro level two for all I know. I have no idea. Um, I know a handful of the players, but not all of them. And Anatan's rating is really good. This is like top tier. This like ha this like little poking rating like this is keeping his opponent like on the defensive instead of moving up. Joan wants to be getting crunk and going for the kill. And is he going to go steal the boar down here? There's this boar carcass. Oh, that's actually really good. But Anatan is nearby. You better watch out. He's got a lot of knights down here. And this would be a disastrous. If Anatan were able to find this, oh my god, that would be bad. Oh no. Oh, Red. Oh no. You're gonna pay for you're gonna pay so hard. Oh god. Oh no. That's probably GG. That's so many bills. Oh god. And they just get surrounded and massacred. I think this is an all-in situation now for Joan. Joan does manage to get a couple of villager kills. Okay, so responds with villager kills, idling the eco. Three vill kills there. Um, but overall that was really disastrous. But now Joan of Arc is in the base. She's going to be going for some of these workers here, trying to get that sweet experience. AoEing down villagers, and Anatan is struggling in the base too. Villager count, you know, it is 7 to 11, 8 to 11. Okay, so Anatan does lose a handful of villagers there to Senpai, but he's fighting under the TC here. Joan of Arc desperately trying to get some experience, but I think Anatan is going to um, probably close this out because he's going to kill Joan here. He's going to kill the entire army, and I suspect Senpai is going to be tapping out here. And... Um, you know, this was actually kind of a close-ish game until that point. Like, when this when this greed happened, like, the boar, there's boar right here. You don't need to go all the way across the map for that boar. That's really greedy. And uh, overall, that's GG. Because now we see an economic lead of 40 to 26. A big army size, and Anatan is going to be claiming victory. Well played, GG. All right. The troll toll has been paid. It has. I know. Man, that was painful. That was so painful. And the response from Red was good, though. The all-in from Senpai. Just getting in there and trying to, you know, get some fortunate kills at the end. But, dude, the micro saving the knights was good. Most players would have lost, like, four or five knights there. And Joan would have leveled up. But not him. He didn't lose anything. He lost one knight in that engagement. Very clean. So, GG, well played. Senpai is going to be winning the second place prize. And Anatan will be winning the first place prize. GG, well played to those mighty champions. And, uh, yeah, that is going to be that. All right, all right. Prime says, Senpai did that to me, but I wasn't smart enough to check my boar. Yeah. Anno Chad. Yeah, no kidding, man. He played really well. Great tourney, everyone. Yes. And now it is time for the FFA of the Gods.
That was a, 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 certainly a fast and furious ending. Joan of Arc was finally taken down. And let us get an FFA match. Let us have some fun together, all of us. So where are we? Um, turn FFA. Here we are. And perfect. And we're going to open that up. All right. So while the FFA gets going, we are going to go talk to the champions in Discord. GG, well played. At Anna. All right. And let me message him. Send me your PayPal. And then the other player was um, Senpai, I believe. All right, so I messaged both the players. The uh, lobby's filling up here. And here we go. We're gonna probably play in the FFA. Yeah, we're gonna play in it. That was the grand finals, yeah. Turn, I wasn't ready. There's still three spots. Never seen it sit open. I think it's because people weren't ready. People weren't expecting the transition there. If you guys enjoyed the Hot 1v1 action, do drop a like. It helps out quite a bit. And um, we got HRE, HRE. Let's go with Order of the Dragon. I kind of want to play some big golden boys. Oh, Anatan's in here. The tourney winner. Uh, <laughs> Tremble. All right, guys, look. Anatan came in to finish us. Tremble. <laughs> All right, so do we go Order of the Dragon? He's he's gonna be on English. Rastua says, "Oh my God, my second online game ever." <laughs> and Attend is here, the Dark King, the winner of today's tournament. So he's gonna be going random. Um, you know what? I think I want to go um, olive oil. Nah, uh, we do olive oil all the time. Let's go Order of the Dragon here. All right, now, oh, but Order is so haggard sometimes. We could go Japanese. Yeah, let's go Japanese. All right, kill turn first. <laughs> <laughs> I was. All right. Look at Anaten saying kill turn first. He's conquer. <laughs> Set no teams. All right. And allow observers. Reveal on death. Dude, not Anatan isn't satisfied just winning the tournament. He's got to come in and win the FFA too. All right. So Wang, no team. And um, yeah. Anno set no team. We'll do Mega Random. Mega Random's fine. Pros versus Joes. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is. Oh, man. Take the dude, Deli? No, no, no. I'm good. All right. All right, perfect. Here we go. Let's fire it off. Good luck. Have fun. And let's party. Japan's still really good in FFA. It's still really good. All right. Good luck. Have fun. Good luck. Have fun, man. That was a really fun event today. I that one, I love casting 1v1 age. I think the games are fun. I, I'm a little sad we didn't have any super long matches, but you know, we had like most of the matches were conqueror versus conqueror, but we did have, everything was pretty decisive. I don't think we had a single Imperial Age game today, not a single one. Uh-oh, we have Anatan on the English, dear God. I, I pity the man who has to attack him. I pity the man. I hope that I expand in the opposite corner from him. If he's my neighbor, this is going to be the first time ever you see me not trying to kill my neighbor. If he's my neighbor, I'll just, I'm going to have to d use diplomacy because he, he could kill he could kill any one of us, any one of us, easily if he wants to. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to be on Japan here, the House of the Rising Sun. It's time, Par dude. I don't want any of these bangers in Mash. I don't want any of them, dude. We got to do a big FFA tournament as well. He won't expect you to hit him with Shinobi. Oh God, do we do we go Shinobi, guys? All right, I don't know, maybe we do. So we need to see what, oh man, my spawn already sucks. I can tell. All right, so let's get you. Um, how are we looking here? Let's go for that. We'll go for a greed opening and do this. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good, Gunhan. By the way, for future tournaments, if we can get more people signing up, I'm going to do separate tournaments for, um, for the various skill levels. Okay, no sheep yet. Okay. <laughs> my favorite my favorite thing was when Anaten said to kill me because I'm, <laughs> I'm Conqueror. Like barely Conqueror 1 playing Byzantines and shit. You're gonna take me to Weather Spoons, I know, dude. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Okay, so let's set up the house here. And uh, let's do that. Keep looking around and um, yeah. I'm not going to politic people against him because I want to see what he's capable of if left to his own devices. 
<laughs> Normally, if there was like a Dark Lord, like pro level player, I would like probably politic against them. Be like, guys, we have to get him first. But I kind of want to see. Um, there's a ruse. No, that's what she said. There's my answer. Okay, we should probably deny this deer then. All right, perfect. So we got the we got the sweet. That's what she said on our opponents. I don't know if they're gonna have any comebacks for that. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so we when we have a tournament day like this, we would set multiple events. Um, yeah, so we would have like two tournaments, maybe three. I don't know if we would get good enough signups for all of them, but the only one that would affect the leaderboard would be the highest level one. So the highest level one would be like open entry to all, but then we would set a separate one for like golden, uh, golden, you know, various tiers of play. Your stream helped me through the first year of sleepless nights. Firstborn, now she sleeps. I'm, ch I'm uh, catching up in life. But hey, I'm glad to hear that, Richard, and congratulations. Oh my God, there's water. Oh, damn it. Okay, there's water down here. Dude, I, I, I had a pretty good that's what she said. Richard, thank you for the donation, man, and congrats. And glad to hear it's all going smooth, man. Glad to hear it's all going smooth. Yeah, this biome's are really nice looking. Okay, we need to take some sheep back to the base, or else I'm gonna run out of food here. Let's get the sheep back there. Haven't discovered any neighbors yet. And um, yeah, we're going, man. Turn sandwich? Yeah, could be. I, I'm definitely not in a good position here. Japan's a really fun sip. I think after the nerfs, they're, they're pretty fair in FFA now. They're pretty fair. Like Japan's potential passive gold without like with their relics is only like 360 now whereas it was infinite before right yeah so we're just gonna go hard on stone so we can get that second tc really quick we're gonna go see who's in the corner here yeah we're gonna we're still gonna switch to we're gonna get a second tc and age up and then we're gonna go for um go for the water yeah it's a nice little corner here It'd be a shame if uh you know i got that all to myself we'll have to see It'd be cool if the biome froze the water. That this biome is really cool. I it's it's becoming my favorite. I hope they keep it. It's not just like a holiday fixture. All right. So who's in this blessed corner spot? You think Japan's boring to watch? I always felt like they're really fun to watch. Some like cool ass units, samurai and stuff. Come on now. Okay. So we got Doctor Silly Willy over here in the corner, and Tron is already uh, unhappy about something. I don't know what. And um, water back here. <laughs> Look at, look at Tron's panicking with villagers. He's scouting with a villager. <laughs> oh my god, somebody's gonna get his wrath so hard, dude. I don't know who it's gonna be. He said I lost scout. He's trolling so hard here, dude. Oh my god. Just like cackling at this shit. Alright, so let's get you guys turned in and then we can get the uh, Kura storehouse. So we can do that right here. Should be good. And we'll get a handful of you guys coming down here and get on the straggler trees. Good. You guys on straggler trees. And cool. Yeah, so now we just do a relatively slow age up. Do this. The tourney is done. Yeah, Anatan won. I don't think anybody's surprised. We can share water if you like. Oh my god, he's trying to make peace with him. I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah. They're super fun to play. And yeah, I don't know. You can do different builds though. You can do... You, but typically Japan's infantry is the way to go. That's like... That's where you really make your bread, right? All right, so let's set that up here. I'm going to keep a couple on stone so I can get my um, my um, my landmark too. Yeah, upgraded. Okay. <laughs> He's so doomed. He's trying to make peace with Anitand already. Um, okay, we got Wang in the corner here. So we got two people around us, which kind of sucks. Yeah, max gold from Yoda Shida was like 300. Yeah, that's what, that's what sounds about right. Is he going to really garrison in here to try and get me? I don't think so. Okay. All right, so the greed build is in full effect. Um, the straggler trees are going. All right, let's uh, move over to this tree line here. Make sure we're okay. Doctor Silly Willy says this is the worst sandwich ever. He must have he must have the Dark Lord on his side. Yeah, I suspect that's the case. Okay. Who's next to you? They're talking. It's a weird map. Like I'm like like legit in the middle of this map right now. This is this is rough. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this in a second, so we'll do that. And then we should be able to get a little bit more here, so let's grab you guys, a couple of you. No, okay. Turn in, do that. So we're going to age up very slowly because of our build, but it's all good. So is there someone behind him here? Yeah, this is a random map. This is mega random. It's not an island, but there is like a river on the outside, which I definitely need to get my clutches on if I can. Okay, so we're upgrading our TC to the next tier, which is going to be good. Not like a perfectly executed build, but overall it's okay. 
yeah, th that will uh, give us a free villager in a moment. And then we slap down that second TC as soon as we're ready to go. All right, so yeah, we see the water back there. Let's get that free vill. Anutan has gotten futile, and we see the uh, Sultani trade network being built in the back by Wang. Okay, now it's standing. And almost there. Almost got that. And yeah, he's, he's fishing and I'm not, so I'm going to be kind of behind, actually. We probably want to go set up some docks here. So let's go set up a dock back there to try and catch up. And outstanding. All right, so here we are. Let's pull you guys through this, and we can get the second TC like so. It's kind of nice and secret and safe, precious. And another house back here, please. Yes. You guys need to go get on the berry bushes. Get the upgrade here. And uh, now we can get the forge here, too. All right. So all is good in the neighborhood. We're going to get a couple docks and try and catch up. Kura Storehouse is generating us our lovely, lovely farms. This really started 15 hours ago? No, we haven't been streaming. It must be a bug on YouTube or something. I, I posted the stream that it was going to happen uh, then as well. Just passing through. And um, yeah, we're, we're okay. We're doing okay. I think we have some deep sea fish here too. So we need to, we need to find some deep sea lads. A little bit of glare in my room here. There we go. Okay. See that and um, arms. Let's keep them going. We're starting to switch on to gold here. Do I need to worry about being raided early? I don't think so. I think we're all right. Second TC is about to pop off and um, now we can get the fishing going. So we'll probably set up double dock. We can do a dock up here too. Can we fit that there? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So we're just going to do double docks. And then from there, we need to start getting some military, just in case somebody decides to get real crazy and attack us early. I don't want to be helpless and just be a potato, right? All right, so let's hit wood hard. Um, we have found pink on this side, so that's going to be book, okay? God, we really got such a haggard spawn here. It's just like we're really, really in some danger, potentially. So I'm going to be very conservative with that. Let's build some boats, start getting the fishing going, and our eco should pop off pretty damn hard here. Should pop off pretty hard. I think that's enough on wood. Let's get on the Kura. And um, could do some walling here. We just ran through somebody's base. Literally right past their TC. So that's the Roost player. And let's keep looking around. Okay, Book has gotten Feudal Age. Looks pretty standard here. Um, we're not going to care about Relics too much, I don't think. I, I, I don't think our odds of getting them are like super great. Um, spears, we can get the Samurai upgraded. Sure, why not? Start jumping on Golds. And um, let's go ahead and do... This and this, and you guys can do this, this, this. Cool. Start getting that sweet farm economy going. It's very greedy opening, and when we won, this would be very risky. Um, it looks like we got walls here already from Dr. Silly Willy. We have an Ottoman neighbor to the south. Ottomans are very scary. They have probably some of the best FFA armies in the game. And um, yeah, so we, we got to worry about late game autos. That's going to be a very, very dangerous thing. Farm's still coming out, so our food eco is going to be great. Should be able to scale into Castle Age here. Um, where do I hide my last landmark? I could hide one down by the water. Probably we'll put our floating gate down there. Yeah. I could try the other landmark, the Castle of the Crow. That could be very fun. Yeah, so we're, we're doing great here, man. All's, all's good. Let's get the eco upgrades while we can. So we're just going to get both of those to be real greedy. Um, we see green here. So that's Dr. Silly Willy. Okay. You know what's really tripping me out right now, guys? I'm actually scouting. That never happens. It's my, it's my favorite. I love just going in blind. Living life dangerously. Okay, so Castle Age by Anatan. So, yeah, he probably went um, relatively fast castle. Here's the Dark Lord. Okay. So, we don't... Yeah, he's going for relics, too. You see, he's already got the monastery up. So, he's going to be grabbing relics. And, you know, I can't really contest that too much. So, I'm just going to try and survive down here on my own. And hopefully somebody else will attack him. We see Delhi moving out to get some relics as well. We got the dreaded Dark Hunter Ezra in here, doing God knows what. And um, cool, so yeah, Japanese eco is pretty, pretty strong here. We're about to get two good eco upgrades. Could get some more farms, so we'll start on that. Okay, let's get you. The next ones can go there. We see some knights coming out from Tron. Tron's going to be trying to deny relics. He's playing Holy Roman, so obviously, you know, that's, that's what they want. All right, so lumber is upgraded. We can delete this one, get it out of the way. For a second, I thought Ezra was harassing us, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Let's uh, just do this to be safe. Okay, scouts looking around. We see yellow. Yellow is Rastuous. Okay. Okay, so villagers heading out to the farms. Wololo is going down. This is great. If, uh, if people are fighting him and I don't have to deal with the Dark Lord, then, you know, I'm very happy. 
So we are very, very um, deep in it here. Yeah, we got like a good, good eco. Like our eco is going to be a powerhouse when we age up here. Uh, we'll build our Imperial Landmark off to the side. For now, the floating gate's going to go right here. Yeah, if we if we die, we die. We're going to cast this game if we die as well. So um, we do have Observe. Unfortunately, the audio will be gone, but we could also jump out and observe the game too. And fast forward. So yeah, I'm, I legit spawned in the middle of the map. Not Not the best situation. Okay, so let's get that. Get the fishing upgrade there. Um, our food eco is popping off. Our gold is pretty good. We definitely need to get some more wood. That's what she said. So let's turn in here, do this. And um, yeah, we're about to get the Yorishiru. So we can get that right there. And um, yeah, we're all right. Yeah, the scout, he, he got picked off somewhere in the north. He had a good run though. We actually managed to find, figure out a lot of the map before. Um, all right. Let's do that. And uh, just keep walling to be safe here. Keep producing. Gonna be hitting Castle Age in a minute, and um, we can start making some samurai. We can have some fun with those guys. All right, we're trying to macro. We're trying to do the boomer old man macro playstyle. I feel like that's like Terran players in StarCraft, like in Brood War and stuff. Like all the crusty, the crusty old players will play the. Um, all right, let's drop that in there. And then um, I don't think there's any relics left. There's like literally HRE players. We're just gonna go try and grab that sacred site and see if we can just hold on to it. So let's go like set up a tower next to it and see if we can just cheese some gold out of that. All right. Okay, looking good. And um, now we need to get back on stone a little bit so we can um, get our goodies. And we'll keep on the farm eco. Holy shit! What's going on over here? Jesus, a bunch of Roost warrior scouts and shit. All right. So if we got attacked, yeah, it could be a little bit frightening. So let's go ahead and get some racks going. One and one. Got the samurai gathering up. Let's get into the racks going. We got stone being gathered again, which is good, because we need to upgrade our TC to get that farm gather rate. Our food is pretty nuts. We could probably even age up by just, like, selling at the market. Yeah, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, let's get that. We're trying to get a little bit cheeky here. We see monks coming down. But we're going we're gonna to just try and get our clutches on that sacred. It, it, it's free gold for a while, right? Okay, so we're grabbing that, and um, let's build a couple more forges here, uh, here and here. Okay, outstanding. We're going to be imps soon. Uh, floating gate is there. I don't have any hidden landmarks, so my, my rat potential isn't amazing. We'll come down here and mine there, so we can age up down there. The Tanegashima gunsmith will go that way. Um, Alright, so let's get the Jaimyo Palace, and then we get the Shogunate Castle, and we call it a day. So did we get that? We did. Looks like we're going to get it. Outstanding. Um, I'm going to go grab this and be real greedy. That might make us a bit of a target, but I think it's worth. Okay, so age up going there. Let's get some upgrades for the samurai. And we can also get some spears, because there's obviously some good cab out on the battlefield as well. We have to become Skaven, but we don't have too many good places to hide. Um, the gunsmith down here is not a bad idea. But um, let's just get an arrow slit right there. And um, yeah, relics are mostly gone. But I'm just trying to get the freebies here. All right, there's a random... Is he, what is he, where is he going? He's just like troll scouting with the uh, with this guy? Yeah, I guess we'll attack that. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. Build some houses. Well, Lolo's going down all over the place. So, you know. People are fighting for their goodies. That's for sure. So we have another one of these. The Yorishiru. Um, would like to get some stone wall soon too. I think that would be good. And now we need to get more military. So let's get all these racks. Cool, and let's get some siege. All right, outstanding, and um, we'll get the Onabagesha. And Imperial Age has been reached. We'll be in pretty soon, like pretty darn soon here. Okay, let's max out upgrades. And then we got the nine over here, so let's go down there and get some of this uh, stone if possible. We'll, we'll consider aggression soon. It's not quite time. Tron getting Imperial Age. Okay, and then you guys go jump on the gold node. Good, good. And where are the villagers going? Yeah, the villagers can go back down here. Um, we can get some more of you guys on gold. Let's get rally. And get ready to party. Yeah, the Dark Lord will come soon. I hope not. I just want a wall. Yeah, I just want to live. Okay, let's sell some food. Try and get Impage here. We're going to go ahead and just build the Tanagashima gunsmith down here, like on this little like water choke. And hopefully if our main base gets steamrolled, nobody will go down there. That's the idea. Um, we're working towards our Shogunate landmark. Food is decent. Okay. Get that. And do we have another relic popping out yet? We do not. We have two sacreds, which is pretty funny. They're just like letting us have these sacreds. Um, so we're going to pull this priest back now. 
Okay. Here we go. So we're going to hide the gunsmith down here. And try and keep it secret and safe. So the gunsmith is great. It's going to give us, um, you know, a bunch of free Ozutsu and stuff, which are very, very nasty units. Do, oh, we got to fix that. I'm trying to have, like, nice-looking farms for once. My farms always look like shit, so, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to step it up. Okay, farms, scaling economy, all that goodness. And we got Siege on the way. Enemy neutralizing Sacred Site, so one of them is being neutralized, but overall I think we were able to hold on to it. So yeah, they're letting me have a lot of free gold. I'm not, I'm not complaining at all about this. This is great. Really, Tron? It seems like there's some scraps going on. Some people are unhappy. Yeah, more walls for sure, but Japan's very good defensively. I mean, unless like a huge erect English army rolls down and just, you know, gives me the dirty, I, I should be okay. All right, so Shogunate Castle is ready, so let's get that. So that's going to maximize our gather rate. And let's get Samurai and these guys. Um, and yeah, call it a day. So there we go. Gold is secured. Imperial Age is going to be here soon. Um, Wang is, is still, you know, doing his thing. Who's trading here? I don't know who's trading yet. Yeah, we have mostly the melee base units. Um, probably could get some ranged. Yeah, we could get like some hand cannoneers mixed in because we have a ton of resources. Um, let's get the elite samurai first and foremost. Cool. So let's grab all you woodworkers. Head down here. Um, do that and that. And um, I think the farms are more or less good to party. So let's get eco upgrades. I'm trying to get like really just economically sound before I push. And so I can have that like steamroller economy, right? Um, all right. So yeah, it looks good. Get that. So that's a lot of our gold. Mix in some spears too, because why the hell not? We can deploy some Ozutsu, but we're just going to save up the tickets right now. And um, Dr. Silly Willy is on the side. Okay, Siege Engineering is good. A couple farms aren't being worked, so let's grab you guys. Go work those farms. And you guys come down here, build some houses. Okay, and then Uni as well. So let's do that and get the Elite Army Tactics in a moment. There we go. We should have another Yorishiru. Here he is. So let's drop that off there. He... Passive gold generation of the gods. Yeah, it's, it's not what it once was, but it's it's much more balanced now. It's much more balanced. Okay. Upgrades. Elite samurai soon. Definitely want to get a keep in our base here in a minute. Um, so we're going to have enough stone for that. We do have the Shogun at Castle. Killing us would probably be slightly challenging. I mean, I don't know. Depends on who it is. It really depends on who it is. Okay, so elite samurai. Let's get the elite samurai going. And then we get army tactics, and that's when we attack. Is, uh, is the plan. So let's deploy some Ozutsu. Because they're just awesome. Tron is dead already. Wow. Holy shit. That did, that did not go well for Homeboy. Okay. So let's go ahead and slap down a keep right here. In the north to make sure we don't get attacked. Um, definitely need to start stonewalling these sides. So let's start this. Okay. Um, can we fit through there? It's like a random green villager heading that way. Not sure what he's up to, but we'll keep tabs. Okay, I don't like that. I definitely don't like that. And um, let's get some bombards. And you guys can go and just continue making farms or help with that and then come back. Yeah, I don't know what, he was, what he's doing with that tower there. I could get attacked from the other side, but that's partially why I'm setting up this keep here. Our food eco is good because of the fishing. I think it's adequate. And um, let's get army tactics for the infantry, katana bannermen. And, um, yeah, now we can we can consider to start moving here. Yeah, do we want to make rams and stuff? Mm, banded rams is probably not, like, super essential here. Okay, so Wang is still only Castle Age, which means I should go kill him. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm sure as hell going to try. Okay, so let's get you. Let's go down this way. We got the Ozutsu. Um, yeah, he just got Imp Age, which is when Ottomans outscale Japanese. So I think now is a good time to go, like, all in and try and get him here. All right, so we're heading down. Let's go see what the walls look like here. He's going to be mustering a defense, I'm sure. Yeah, let's get the full upgrades. Oh, it's just a wooden palisade. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a reckoning here, guys. All right. So let's move into the base and get into the eco. With some of the samurai. Ozutsu being nasty. Let's knock down these. And get the bombard coming this way. Imperial Japanese push. The timing of this is going to be very, very scary. We'll see what he can muster. Says I'm getting 2v1. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's already dead. How many? Wow, okay. I, I do feel a little bit bad for this guy. Will you come to Gondor's aid? I 
I would, but you're auto. Don't want to fight cannons ever. If he was a weaker Civ, I would help him, but he's he's a strong Civ, so I need to I need to take him down. So we're just gonna let Homeboy do this. We'll let the Roost finish the job. And um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and set up this, and set up this, and then set up this too. All right. All good. <laughs> he can go sink the relic if he really wants to. Um, okay, so let's get the wall off here. You can bring it to me if you want. Yeah, so he's already dying down here. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste my troopers. That my my soldiers' lives mean more to me than you know piling in on that. Um, so we probably go up this way. You know, we're, we're, we're bloodthirsty right now. We can't be denied. We gotta, we gotta do some fighting, right? Um, all right, so let's get the health of siege engines. Rohan sends his Rohan sends his thoughts and prayers. Yeah, he gets my thoughts and prayers for sure. All right, um, let's do this. Do that, mostly infantry-based armies. Japan's cab is nice and all, but... Okay, so he, he basically trolled this here. We have two French players, by the way. Yeah, who's is this French? I left you. I don't know if the other player is going to finish him off or whatnot, but yeah, it, it most likely will. Um, all right, so that one keep is up. Um, farms are being worked. Our food economy is respectable. And um, where do we want the other keep? The other keep could go like down here. Yeah, probably not a bad idea. Aren't you dead? Vassals always betray, by the way. All right, so looking good. Book, maybe you get to vassalize him. And now we're going to move up here and see what we can do to this gentleman. What age is Dr. Silly Willy? He's in a decent age. Um, Yeah, so we got that. Let's get the banded rams. And I don't know what his army is going to look like. We could deploy some more Ozutsu soon. But where the hell is his base? What, what is he doing? Yeah, you, you, vassals are always a bad idea. It's literally never a good idea to have a vassal in this game. Because they will always betray you. They will always betray you. Um, all right, so I should have an idle Yorishiru here. Okay, so we're in we're in the green base. Um, we're this is Joan of Arc. Okay, Doctor Silly Willy. Oh, okay, shit. Okay, dude, everyone is just killing everyone here. Uh, nope, all yours. You can fight Anno. <laughs> I'm just leaving. Like, I go both directions. And uh, everybody's just kind of... Yeah, dude, that's so funny. Holy shit. Okay. I just roll in and just some Conqueror 10 players, like, steamrolling him. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, yeah, we're good. Yellow, Rastuus is still alive. Um, we have our Japanese keeps here, so we're hanging in there. Let's get this other TC upgraded also. And, um, yeah, I, I don't need to... I, I, like, everywhere I go, there's just... Um, yeah, we, we already finished the tournament. Now we're just playing, like, post-game shenanigans. Um, all right, gunpowder. So, I'm going to go kill this, this, this player here, because if he's... I don't want somebody with a, a 2 v one me, right? If he has a vassal or whatever. So we need to probably finish the job here. Um, all right, let's turn this down, delete you guys. Probably a little bit hardcore in the wood. We can keep producing there. And uh, the wall is coming. Okay, so let's deploy some um, bombards. And then we can deploy some Ozutsu too. Okay, wall is coming up there. We have the two sacred sites. Is he, is he still alive here? Is Green still surviving against Anatand? I don't know. I need to clear out, like, one of my neighbors, though. I can't, like, have them both here. Okay, so we're going to come down here and just take this gold. Let's do that. You bills can get on the berry bushes for now. Just clear them out. Sure, why not? 21 bills there. Let's get you on wood. Uh, food economy is okay. Could be better. So you got most of the upgrades done. Damn French knights with that 8 armor. Okay, so... Okay, so let's get more racks going. Yeah, we got it. We don't want vassals running around. How has Pink not killed you yet? 
I thought I thought he was vassalized by another player, so I I left. But if he's if he's still hanging in there, you know, I don't want any of that. I don't want him to to be around. I'm gonna try and finish him here. We can't have people just lingering and, and just trolling and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't need these Shinto priests anymore, so let's leave them. We're gonna we're gonna finish the demolition. The Ozutsu are coming in. Because I don't want the other player to get the idea to um to vassalize him. And then from there I have to deal with a 2v1 and I just die. You know, like cause that's like that's pretty likely, um, to be honest. GG. Yeah, he Interestingly enough, maybe being in a janky position has kind of saved me to an extent, because people like are like, oh he's in the middle, like he's gonna get sandwiched and shit. I don't know. Um, trade to the middle is on the table. Anatand is just giving the dirty over here. I don't appreciate the ambiguity from Pink. I came back because I didn't want him to vassal you and 2v1 me. Yeah. So that's that's what was going there. Um, the Wang has fallen. Oh, that's right. The Twin Minaret counts as a trading post, doesn't it? That's oh, probably destroyed, though. Hold on. Okay, let's go this way now. Ooh, but like English could come for us, man. That's very, very frightening. Um, let's go ahead and make some stables now. Okay, so we might need some horsemen. But we're going to head this way um, and set up a tower there. And we can we can go ahead and do some trading here. And let's set up some walls, like so. And do we go after Book? Um, I don't know if we can win this fight. The Rus armies are pretty formidable. Yeah, I think so, because Green is still fighting. Green's still hanging in there, so I think we take an opportunity to try and push in now. All right, let's move. And yeah, he's he's uh, he's pulling back now. So we got the Ozutsu, and um, let's go ahead and do this too. Yeah, to cut off flanks and stuff, and then we can just get like easy pushes in there, hopefully. Okay, let's go dive the cannons. The horsemen are coming, but we have a mean ass army. Like these are mostly horsemen, which we should be pretty resilient against. Samurai should dunk on them. All those Streltsy are very good too. So, okay, and uh, let's start getting upgrades on all of our mobile units. Snipe the Bombard. Ozutsu are doing good, but let's move into this, these guys. Ozutsu can start targeting the Streltsy. Take a couple of you guys and go eco hunting. Okay. Great. And um, yeah, it's looking good. Ozutsu are hunting these guys down, so let's just start knocking down buildings. And we go eco hunting, like I said. Okay. So when our front line starts to falter is when we... Um, okay, we got 42 of you guys. Let's get on wood for now. Looking good. We got more reinforcements coming. And um, where is your eco, my friend? Where is it? Where art thou eco? Okay, so hand cannoneers have arrived. Let's go ahead and dunk on this. And um, yeah, this is looking good so far. I think the fight's going very favorably for us. Samurai can fight back here while we just keep demolishing the front of the base. Okay, so keep killing infrastructure. We got some dudes there. Um, probably need to delete some wood eco to get a bigger army to actually try and finish them. And um, we can pull a bunch of you guys, come over here and do a keep. Um, that's probably too many, so let's just cut a portion of you. Okay, so Japan is on the move. Um, unfortunately, gonna lose a couple dudes here. Let's set up a tower. Yeah, he's got the mangoes down there, which are scary. Let's dive those. And the Ozutsu, let's deploy some of them if we can. So the deployed Ozutsu are here. Um, the fight in the back is still going well, actually, so let's go back there and see if we can find it. And yeah, if we get another kill here, that's gonna be pretty good. All right, so yeah, the Rus army's looking pretty beat up. We definitely caught them at a bit of a weird time. And Japanese keeps are an unholy nightmare to deal with. So if we could just pop that down right there, then that's going to be very good. All right. So where where the hell is your eco hiding, dude? I don't I have no idea where he's hiding it, where he's, where he's chilling out with. Okay, so the keep is coming. Save these bombards. Ozutsu, kill the horseman, and kill the horseman, please. Um, you guys, how are we looking? I need to keep securing the trade somehow. So let's see if we can do that. We don't have the stone at the moment. Okay. No problem, but he keeps coming down in his base. Um, hopefully he's got relics too. He, there's a high likelihood he has some relics. Okay, great. So let's grab the Shinto Shrine here. Do that and that. Knock that down, take his money, and um, the Roost should be pretty much toast here. They're spamming already in the back of the base to try and recover, but that probably won't do it. All right, let's torch that, and then you can just get on wood here. Shinto Shrine, let's do that and grab the relic, and do that and grab the relic. Okay. Keep moving and moving into grooving. Yeah, we got a little bit more to snipe down here too. 
Man, Japan is such a smooth sieve. Like, everything just feels like butter on them. You know, when you're playing Byzantines, it's like just it's like a struggle, but with Japan, it's just smooth as butter, man. Okay, so how are we looking here? A couple Streltsy coming from the north. Basically, the end of the road for these guys. Um, yeah, we know where all their landmarks are, more or less. So let's get here, and then cannons can uh, take down the town center and that. Samurai, and here's his last landmark here. So now the Ozutsu can finish it, and that's going to be basically GG. And then we can secure um, Southern Trade, which is kind of our game plan. All right. So we're going to need to delete some units. Um, TC is getting repaired there. Hand Cannoneer is farming everything. And, um, yeah, we got the landmark down there, and now we just need to get these, and it should do the trick. He's, he's pulling bills for mass repairs, but now we just get this last landmark, and that's going to be Game Blouses. Shouldn't be able to repair through the Ozutsu. All right, so... GG. Okay, so how are we looking? Yeah, so demolished there, which is great. So let's pull our armies back to the base. And um, now we need to start, like, doing a little bit of funny business here. All right, so let's get you guys, get a handful of samurai to stay, and they can um, take this down. Imperial Japan is no joke, dude. They are no joke. Okay, so how can I get this? Is that walled over there? It is. So let's do that. Let's do that. And um, then we need to do this. And you guys torch all this stuff down. Make some room for the walls. And as far as trade goes, we do have a couple options. Let's get you guys to come over here and set this up. And um, is this player dead? He is. Okay. So then we can do this and start doing some heavy duty trade. We should probably leave the Ozutsu to help out too. They can knock down buildings pretty quickly. Hey, Vils, is there any gold to be grabbed in the realm? Um, yes, there's some down here. Outstanding. Who's still left? Anatan has. Oh, shit, there's only three people left? Only three left? Damn. There's only three people left in this game, guys. Zutsu are coming down. Wow, that was that was fast and furious, man. Anatan's got rams coming this way. I'm not sure what his, his game plan is with that. Okay, let's keep an eye on them. Maybe they're going to take down that sacred in the middle or something. Yeah. Go, Zutsu, clear it out. He's got the Duhas coming. My sacred sites, my beloved sacred sites. Yeah, that was really fast. Really good aggression this game on everybody's part, honestly. Okay, I'm pretty rich at this point, for sure, and we still have some nice nodes around our, our land. I'm just going to play defensively and try and get a good bank in case I have to go into war. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was that... It was that going to be that quick, but sure as hell was. Um, all right. Oh, that's a landmark, unfortunately. Okay. So we need to torch this. And let's go down here and repair that. Okay. So those villagers never got over there to do that. Um, I think they're heading right now. Keep you guys here. Keep knocking all these down. Man, Ozutsu, Ozutsu are such a good unit. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, our farm economy isn't like, it doesn't feel super good. Okay, let's do that. Do that. And then we got that option open. Good. So that's going to secure us that. These guys never finished, which is pretty funny. So we can delete... Um, let's cancel that and delete a handful of you guys. And now these guys are going to grab the relics and grab the relics. Slap them in there. Call it a day. Okay. So I don't know when or if the Dark Lord is going to attack me. Our, our tournament winner is here. Um, I feel like... I could hold him for a while. He would win inevitably just because he's much better than me, but I could hold for a minute, I feel. It depends, but then Ezra might just wonder, right? So Ezra's top, and he's playing French too. So the French um, guild hall shenanigans are for sure going to be a reality in this game. Grab you guys. Um, go here and there. We got our armies. Right now, I'm just going to be trying to secure some trade, really, which uh, hopefully will be easier than not. Okay, great. Let's keep him here, it's fine. It's kind of like off the beaten path anyways. Um, I think we're fully upgraded, more or less. Um, yeah, is there anything we really need to get? Yeah, basic archers for sure at some point we might need them. I don't really care for the um, Onomusha. I know some people like them, but I'm, I'm not an Onomusha enjoyer myself. Okay, so that's done. Let's do this, and let's come down here and repair this landmark. 
Yeah, loads of resources all over the map. Yeah, everybody's kind of like in a bit of a scramble to grab them, for sure. Okay, so the gatehouse is on the way. That's some decent trade for sure. Um, let's go set up some towers around here and see. Um, how are we looking? Yeah, Empire's looking good. I have pretty ample production, I would say. Probably could use a couple more siege workshops, I think would be nice. And yeah, we got to get that stone too. Did you guys not finish that gatehouse? Can we get that? Okay, so how do we get down here? That's the question. You have to see what that looks like. Ooh, there might be like an obstacle. Okay, so let's do that and then destroy this gatehouse. And um, probably do a little bit of scouting here. So let's grab our Ozutsu and come down here and clear any gates and things we need. Okay, so the Ozutsu are going to head down there. Um, you guys have finished that. So let's go explore this region, see what we got. I know there's a gold node there. Um, yeah, these villas are going to try and torch through. The twin minaret. Yeah, wood on the top. Yeah, we got some wood. Obviously, we got all this too, so we can uh, we can lumberjack through. We don't have any stone walls here, but like at this point, the stone walls wouldn't even hold that well, right? We would just get pushed off. So okay, let's set up a tower. Keep moving. Ozutsu coming down to help out the homies. Um, they've almost got the gatehouse down. Oh boy, man, it's a little bit shady, isn't it? Um, and do we have all the uni upgrades? All the pertinent ones? Yeah. Just max those out. And um, you head over here. Our army's chilling out. Resting the old man hands right now. And yeah, we need another gatehouse to get knocked down. So let's come here and here. A couple of Zutsu can help you with that. It'll be a little bit faster. Almost got that down. Yeah, I, I mean, a stone wall is nice and all, but it's it's fine. Like, I, I got, I'm amply defended, I think. Okay, so Anachan going for the middle. A sacred victory here would not be doable at this point, I don't think. Okay, so we're going to get that. Blast it down, Ozutsu. There you go. All right, now let's move back here and see what we can do. There's, a, I believe there's also a dock back there which we could just trade with. So that's fine too. All right. Let's start setting the trade up. And you guys more or less secure... So let's get some vision of all this realm. So we're just going to do that. And we're going to go see if we need to repair. Because we can repair his dead landmark and trade with it. So yeah, that's that's my idea here. Okay. And let's do that. Four. So I stop making units. Oh, uh, the twin minaret. I can repair this, can't I? You can't repair... Uh, I can't repair that, huh? But I could. Can I, shouldn't you be able to repair destroyed landmarks even if it's your enemies? I've seen that done before. Did they change it? Well, worst case, we'll just mine this gold and then we'll, we'll think about that later. Okay, so we see that being taken. He's poking and prodding. Very awkward situation here. Um, they patched it. You can't prepare enemy landmarks anymore? Okay, good enough. Thank you. So is there anywhere else I can trade here? Unfortunately, it looks like all the docks were destroyed. So that whole game plan kind of just went out the window. So what about over here? Yeah, it looks like over here we can get some trade. I believe that is still intact. So let's go look around here and start setting up towers. Boom, boom. Boom. Yes, yes, yes. That might still be on the table. It's a pretty decent little trade route. Um, we see sacreds. I think he's just trolling. No, he's actually trying to take it. Okay. All right. So let's get this gatehouse here and this gatehouse here. And come down there. Get the bombards to knock that thing off there. I really wish I had a landmark hidden down there at this point. That would be really nice. Set up some towers so the villagers have a place to hide in case things get ugly. English heading up on my borders. And traders are going. And it's a 95 trade route. It looks like there is some accessibility over there. So that's good. Okay. So we're just banking right now. Um, French wonder top probably. Yeah, no. French. I don't know why it, it censors French. You may need to work together. I'm trying to trying to reason with the Dark Lord right now. Oh. <laughs> right as I'm like trying to politic with him, he's like, he's like, he just throws down a wonder. Holy shit. All right, Ezra. Go time. Let's test our might, see if we can take down the Dark King. All right, we're going to move from the north pretty quickly here. And um, let's grab you guys and you guys and head over this way. So he's got one sacred. 
Wow, dude, right as I say that, I legit thought like there was gonna be a French wonder at some point. These villagers are stuck in the gate. I hate that bug, it's so annoying. Oh god, okay, let's grab you guys, head up, do this, and uh, we move to the north. And then we get the infrastructure going, meanwhile establishing some trade also. It's a pretty sweet trade route. Oh man, that's a big army there, Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're gonna need some horsemen spam to deal with that, probably. Samurai can definitely chase and do well, um, but yeah, we're gonna get kited here pretty hard. Okay, let's do this, and then have you guys start slamming down these buildings here. Samurai can keep chasing the longbows, and we just get horsemen spamming out, samurai coming out, and um, we're gonna see what Ezra can do here. Yeah, hopefully he can he can come help. Yeah, samurai are getting kited. Okay, it looks like Anatan was trading a little bit. So we got the hand cannoneers. Horsemen are gonna be on their way. Okay, let's pull you guys back, pull back. Like, England is one of the hardest civs in the game to push, but like, he's sandwiched between Ezra and I, so I'm kinda like, Maybe it's possible, you know, maybe. Could be the case, but now I'm gonna get horsemen, so we should be able to do okay here. Let's do this, and uh, mangoes, and all these bad boys. And um, let's go ahead and set up a keep here to maintain some ground, and let us uh, set up our forward operating base. All right, let's get the horsemen in there, dive the archers. And we need the mangoes to deal with this army for sure. Okay, hand cannoneers are doing it, and we should be able to spam out some rams too, in need, in, if need be. Okay, so the Wonder is built, like fighting a late game, what is that, longbow stack? Ugh, god, that's nasty. Hand Cannoneers, Horsemen, and Samurai, and Onabagesha. Should be able to get the job done, eventually, so let's dive here, and uh, we just keep fighting here. Scoot shoot a little bit here. Try and keep the Ozutsu alive. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely going to lose resources to us. And the Keep's about to finish, we're about to get the Mangoes, which will counter his Archer Blob. And uh, outstanding, so we got the Keep up here. So let's gather up behind the keep and uh, prepare to push. All right. Good, good. So we got the artillery doom stack. He's got his archer doom stack. Um, we can go ahead and buy some more stone. And do we have more bills we can pull? Not quite. Yeah, not quite. Great. So not bad. We got to keep moving. Um, heading up this way. Our supply lines aren't that bad from our main base. So, you know, I'm not feeling too terrible about it. Let's go ahead and move up here and set up more. Move up this way, and um, then we can keep drop keep dropping here as we get closer. So this will be a nice little spot for us here. Okay, take the horseman, run up, go see what's cracking in the neighborhood, and uh, maybe we'll find a way into the wonder. Holy shit! Holy shit! That is a lot of dudes up in the walls there. All right, so we cancel that, set that up like so, and the, the raid. Yeah, we can just move this way. Let's go that way. It's fine, and uh, we'll deploy some bombards. Head over this way. Um, you guys can come over here because he's clearly very entrenched here. So we need to set up this way. Yeah, so. We have 25 on gold still, which is outstanding. Let's go and move that way. He's probably going to be running along the walls, but we can potentially break through here. We'll see. All right. So here they come. Mangonel's at the ready. Unfortunately, we don't have any, like, great siege here. So probably, um, let's set up some towers here. So let's set up towers. Um, keep never got built, so that's a little bit potato. Let's keep the horsemen nearby to protect this. And, um, yeah, those archers are scrambling along the walls, but we should be able to get in here. And, uh, I needed to pull more bills, though. That's, like, the really, really newbie part. Okay, pull back, pull back. Homie's got a lot of longbows. Those are... Oh, those are Windguard Rangers! Holy shit! Oh, those aren't just mere longbows. Okay, that explains a lot. Okay, so we got some nice big AoE shots on him there. We've gotten in the wall. And now one thing you want to do when you're rushing is, uh, build a wall... A wall... A wallception is what I like to call it. A wall and a wall. So we can't rewall that. Yeah, and then we just keep moving. Okay. So honestly, this isn't going badly so far. Um, you know, we're, we're making progress towards the wonder, which is excellent. Yeah, he might be able to rewall this. I'm not sure. Okay, let's get the mangoes to shoot. Blast into these. And nice. So big shots right there. Yeah, we just got a lot of archers. Let's keep that mango doing. Pull back. And Rams can go up here and knock down his relic building. Okay, let's do this and that. Mangonels are hopefully still reaching into those units. All right, Rams go and knock down houses and whatnot. Samurai do their thing. We got the keep coming in. And now we can push into the archers. Keep shooting into the blobs, please. He's going to shut down my mangoes here in a second, but that was a good shot right there. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah, we're making progress. This is good. Hopefully that keep finishes. All right, so you guys come up and build forward infrastructure here. Excellent. So progress is being had. We just need more mangoes because he's just spamming those archers. And um, yeah, we're in. We're in. We're getting houses. You know, progress is being had. And that keep is finished, so let's go ahead and do this. Get these mangoes back, do that, let's repair and repair. 
and see if we can salvage that. And now you guys need to build the walls. Okay, so we need to deploy some Ozutu, probably. Yeah, Ezra is already on the... Okay, Ezra is already legitimately at the Wonder. Okay, so that... Wow, I, I expected that to go better for him, but... That, that looks like he might already be in trouble. Oh, and then Ezra slaps down a Wonder. Holy shit. So if Anno... I'm going to need to spare Anatand. Because Ezra is building a Wonder on the other side. I might need to not kill Anno here. Okay, so do we have bills coming up? We do, right? We got 12 bills. Let's get the Shinto Shrine uh, to grab those relics. Is he going to get it, is the question? Yeah, he is. Okay, wow. Holy shit. That, did, that didn't go well for him. Like, he did not hold long at all. Okay, Anno. Now we team up. We must stop our fighting. It's me and the Dark Lord. Yeah, he knows. He knows. I'm, uh, I could take his relics, but... So, um, we'll try and ninja those relics. Pull back. Head across the map. We need to relocate. Um, we do have that beautiful cross-map trade. So we're going to head over this way now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we knew it was going to happen. That was a really, really risky wonder by Anno. Like, super risky. You know? That was, like, that was really ballsy. Like, we were both, like, close to him and, like, also in good shape. So we're going to head across the map and waddle, and we have our uh, eco coming to build, too. What is our eco at right now? 111? Yeah. We, we got okay wood. Ezra's got that going. And um, what do we want to delete here, if anything? Probably keep the ram so we can get through the walls. And um, villagers are hustling. Yeah, they are. Looking great. And now we need to shut Ezra down, which is going to be hard, because he's playing guild hall, right? So... Okay, so we're, we're going to let Anatan keep trading because obviously he's going to need it. But we're still going to try and jack some relics just to be hilarious. Okay, let's cancel that, cancel that, and um, we can delete you guys and this. Looks like Ezra shut down my trade. Well played. Um, so now we got these guys. We're going to go try and get these relics and bring them back to the base here. So let's do that, and we get that and that. Okay, so we found Ezra's base here. So I don't know if this is quite where I want to set up yet. So I would like to get as close as I possibly can. Okay, this looks like it's going to be it. So we're going to set up a keep here and get this army going. <laughs> we just jacked those relics so hard. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go. And then this can go back here. Can you guys build that keep, please? No, it looks like there's a, something in the way. Hell yeah, dude. Give me those relics. <laughs> he wasn't going to have that shit. Uh, there's no way. All right. I got one, though. I'm happy about that. So we're already at Ezra's base, which is nice. Ezra shuts down our trade. Well played to him. And um, let's go ahead and delete all of our traders to free up some supply. There's nowhere else to really trade. I mean, we could trade mid, but our gold is pretty adequate right now. So now let's go ahead and get the siege workshops here. All right. Let's do that. Keep moving through. I'm at his base. Okay, so there's going to be a huge army coming out to battle me soon, I'm sure. Um, we have our Japanese keep here, and Shinto Shrine is being set up. Okay. And, um, yeah, what do we got? What do we got in the back pocket? All right, salute you traders. Unfortunately, stone is not super affordable right now. Yeah, it's a pretty bad exchange rate, actually. Um, is there any other trade we could establish? I don't think so. So we're moving in. We've encountered Ezra's army. So there he is. And the um, that's probably enough siege workshops. Yeah, so you guys can go ahead and start making the samurai. All right, let's get the samurai tech. Japanese infantry are really good. Right? Very, very good. All right, let's get rams. Let's keep battling it out here. Um, yeah, we need to get that. And we can also get some mangoes and whatnot. Let's do that. Tithe barns. While we're at it, we did get away with one relic. Um, Ezra's got pretty good defenses here, so we're going to try and salvage these. Yeah, so I need to get my beachhead going before we, uh, we, before we fight this. And yeah, hand cannoneers. Man, my gold's going to run out, though. I don't have any trade at this point. So let's get you guys set up some trade in the south. One, two, three, four. And um, then what we do is we just trade mid and hope those towers aren't actually functional. Come on, mangoes, get back. And uh, samurai and samurai. Onobagesha as well. Uh, we do have a big stone node still in our base, which is pretty cute. But most of our villagers are... Um, yeah, so let's go down here and then here as well. Okay, so that's a trade route of sorts. Not the prettiest, but it'll do, pig. Set up a wall here and a wall here. And um, now we push. Okay, so we're going to get a big army in a moment. Um, yeah, we got all that. 
Sacred Sites being captured. Our wood is very sparse though, so we're gonna need to, that's probably gonna be like all we'll get for now. So we get this, 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 and this, and then we jump on wood here. And we keep battling here, okay. I love that right as I was like talking to Anatan, I was like, hey man, like we're gonna probably have a bad time here. Like the French are gonna wonder, he just slaps one down, dude, he's just like, no mercy. All right, so we're moving. Um, let's get some spring alds here. And then you guys need to get on wood. And we need to establish some trade. The trade must come. All right, so we're just going to keep grinding here. Let's go. Oh, man, look at those revolvements. Jesus, that's nasty. We need to get a critical mass before we try and fight that. All right, so we got the... Yeah, that's there. And we can do this in seven, two, and... Uh, okay. Let's keep going in. Yeah, he's running. He's running to the other side. He's gonna lose all these cannons right now. That's huge for us, actually. Oh man, he just lost all those cannons. That's brutal. We could also deploy some Ozutsu soon. I think that's gonna be the play. Let's keep moving in. We have the lumberjacking economy back online. Trade is is sort of here. All right, let's get you guys back on gold. And um, trade, how's that look? It's 70 a pop, which is pretty good. Yeah, and we also have relics and stuff, but. We just now got Tithe Barns. A little bit late to the party on that. I wonder who's going to get a Relic out for this, or a, a Wonder. Clearly somebody will. Okay, let's pull. Let's move up. Let's move up. And get these Horsemen and Horsemen moving. Yeah, we're going to get wrecked by these Revolcans here pretty hard. Okay, let's pull you guys back. Get the Hand Cannoneers to try and snipe them if you can. They can actually snipe Revolcans. It's not like the prettiest thing, but they definitely can. Okay, so gather up. Let's deploy some Ozutsu. So we're deploying the dreaded Ozutsu. They'll be here in a minute. And then um, I now have Spring Alds in my army, which is great. And um, we see the Relic Master. I like how we're both just battling for that Relic. It's hilarious for that, that Sacred Site. Okay, so yeah, Bombards can be produced from there too. How are we looking? And um, let's make some Bombards. We're getting in there. Yeah, we see, we see a bit of pressure. How much time do we have left? Nine minutes? This is gonna be a hard hold for him actually. It's going to be a very hard hold. Um, trade is online. Walls are being built. Uh, the gatehouses are going good. So we got the trade. So now we're not going to be like destitute. We're going to have some options, right? Okay, too many bills right now. Although we're low on wood, so it's a little bit scary to do that. But Okay, we got the rams. We got the spring alds. We're going to torch down this keep the old-fashioned way. Um, probably need some more production infrastructure here. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like uh, looks like my homie's pretty close too. Looks like he's pretty close. The sacred site is being uh, being captured, which is funny. So we're gonna send these Ozutsu up here to go obliterate that. Get that keep down. And um, yeah, Red has a wonder. Yeah, Ezra went for a wonder win. He did. Okay, so we're gonna keep plowing. We got a little bit of time, right? It's not like we're in like super dire straits. The Ozutsu, I don't know why they're not attack moving. There they go. All right. So those guys need to jam. Outstanding. So let's just keep nailing these buildings down. And um, that portion is going to get knocked off by the Ozutsu. Okay, so now they can head over this way. <laughs> Look at this trolling shit, dude. Look at this. I love it. Are we trading, actually, or are they getting killed as they go in? I don't think those towers have been upgraded. Yeah, no, we're fine. Okay. So they're just for vision. They're just for vision. All right. So now we can get a keep here as well, just to keep that from happening. The keep to keep it from happening, yes, yes. Big stone outcropping here, which is super nice. And um, yeah, our food's looking pretty good too. I would like, you need, the food banks are deceiving. You, you definitely need them. Ezra's defenders are coming, but yeah, we need to just keep the rams alive. We got bombards coming and Ozutsu and everything. And seven minutes left on this. Oh, okay. Trade's going strong. Yes, good, Anakin, good. We got the keep coming up to make sure we hold that sacred site for now. He does have access to the trade. We don't want to kill Ezra here because we may need him to take down Anatan later. We just want to get rid of the wonder, right? All right, so we got springs. So let's spring, 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 springs. Get a couple of these. You guys get that. And uh, Samurai and Onabagesha. Gold's getting very sparse, but I think there's still some good gold on the map. You know, there's a little bit here. All right, so we got all the artillery there. I think there's like one mango left, maybe. Oh, he's got his cannons back there. Getting a little bit of MLG sniping on us. Let's pull back. Go down this way. And Samurai and Onabagesha. We got Bombards coming. And can we get that cannon? Let's see if we can. Let's see if we get nice and cheeky. Yeah, we're very close to his wonder. We have six minutes, too. So Zutsu will um, knock down shit pretty quick. Almost got that down. Okay. 
Got a nice little artillery helms deep. Okay, let's sacrifice the cannon. I'd rather keep the Ozutsu alive. And uh, spears, and um, I guess just archers at this point. Just like spam cheap stuff. We're pretty close to it. How long do we have? Six minutes left? All right, we got the Revolquin. Good. Wood is still going, but we are spending quite a bit here. We got good forward infrastructure. Um, we managed to secure the middle. Trade is going for us, slowly but surely. Uh-huh, let's get a cannon tower there, because why not? Obviously, stone is being bought right now, I think. Yeah, I'm at like 3,000 stone, and we do have some gathering on it too, which is really cool. I would like to wander after this, but it's, it's going to be pretty hard. I don't even know where I would drop that down. All right, so let's get close. We're on our way. Um, our eco is pretty big. I don't know if we need a bigger military than this. Some of those towers were upgraded. Yeah, let's see. Well, we're maintaining. We have 27 traders, so we're not losing any traders at this point. Okay, let's get that. Our army here. Start taking down these buildings. Do this. Get the Revolquins, uh, those guys to shoot here. And just keep kind of slow pushing up here. The dreaded Japanese Ozutsu, man. They're awesome. How much damage they do to buildings, man. It's brutal. They got nerfed, too, in this patch. They did even more damage um, in the previous one. Okay, what resources do we have lying around? Yeah, let's just go get this giant stone node back here. And um, we'll set up a spot to mine next to it. Gold for Ezra. We got five minutes left. I suspect Anatan is still... Okay, yeah. Now, that needs to be dealt with, so... Man, yeah, that's dying me trade, my, my all my gold income. So, hmm. maybe, I don't know. This is tough. I, like, I'm pretty close to the wonder, but... Okay. He's walling, which is smart. Let's get the Ozutsu to do their thing here. It's moving down with quite a bit, so let's pull back. And now we can go ahead and um, mass out some samurai here. Get a couple rams and hand cannoneers. I can't... If I lose my trade, I lose the game, basically. Okay, let's see if we can get these Ozutsu back and just save them because they're kind of a, you know, a fancy unit. Let's get more of those guys. The samurai are fighting valiantly here. I can't I can't have the middle being just absolutely just taken from us. We got four minutes left. We're pretty damn close to that wonder, though. Pretty damn close. I suspect the English are probably nearby. Okay, so we need to get you guys to produce more traders. And then we just head up and steamroll middle real quick. And do we have any bills nearby here that we're like lumberjacking or something? We do. Okay. So you guys can go and drop a keep down right here. So we're going to steamroll this. And um, in the meantime, it'll take us only a couple seconds. Although we might lose on a couple seconds here. All right, so that's taken. Let's get you guys on lumber. One, two, three, and all right. So one, two, three, and three. That should be done. And then we can gather back here. We got three minutes left, so we should be able to get a good consolidated push here. All right. He's having his jollies. Okay, so just this last tower is the only one that's, like, upgraded still. And then we can head back that way. Okay. So let's head back to the base. Ozutsu, let's gather. And go. So now we got trade. And he has trade, too, but I'm going to have a keep up here. So we're not going to antagonize too hard, but I will set up a keep, like, here. So he can still trade to help me kill Ezra, but it's not gonna um, not gonna be so much show. Okay, Stone is going. Yeah, these guys we need to, unfortunately we can delete this dock. Let's get that and get that forge there. And we're now we're moving. Yeah, Red Palace is gonna be a tough cookie to crack. It's, it ain't easy, that's for sure. Um, I wanna keep drop here, but we do have our keep coming up, so no more of those towers. Three minutes till Wonder Defeat. Okay, let's go poke here. These are our Ozutsu, they managed to survive. We have a lot more of those guys coming. Just do whatever deeps we can while we wait for our siege. I wish they could shoot walls, but that would probably be a little bit OP. Okay. He must be fighting the English pretty hard. Okay, here he comes. So let's save our Ozu too. I am. All right. So probably once that's done, we can get some more siege workshops. Working on it. Okay, so one tower down. Okay, let's keep blasting here. And, um, yeah, we got you guys coming over. Looking good. Um, in the meantime, let's pull you guys over here. We got our army rolling in. This is a tough position here, man. It's a very tough position. Okay, we have a lot of Ozutsu in this army. Got the mangoes and whatnot, so let's do that. Go loose formation, and here they come, so let's form here. 
All right, attack. And now you guys need to just start blasting this, but he's got a lot of siege. It's going to be a problem. Okay, one minute and 30 seconds left. And, um... Yeah, man, it's a, a hard hold. Okay, spears. And, um, probably needed some horsemen of some sort, but it looks like we do get through that army. Are we going to be able to dive that wonder with the Ozutsu? I think he's got, um... I think he's got walls there, so I'm not going to be able to free dive it. All right. So let's go take down the Red Palace here. So you guys can go here, here, and here. So go there, there, and there. And um, you homies are going to try and take down the Red Palace in the meantime. So Red Palace is getting Ozutsu'd. Um, we need some rams on the walls. So let's get some siege workshops, although I don't think we have enough time. What you see is what you got. Uh, take down the mangoes, take down the mangoes. Hopefully homeboy's got some trebuchets. Red Palace is down. Those two have done it. Great. So now let's just get the cannon towers. Um, I don't have anything that I think can get through the walls. Can you kill walls? Yeah, because the walls are keeping us at bay here. My bombards, unfortunately, uh, are not nearby. Or trebuchets or something. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice try. Yeah, his wonder was pretty early, you know? All right, Ezra gets the dub, the homegrown champ. Well played, man. Yeah. Your wonder was super brave. <laughs> All right. Yeah, GG, well played. GG. Yeah, we needed some artillery, but we didn't have enough. I was a little sloppy with it. I could have probably built a bunch of traps here if I had been more on point, but I was more worried about securing my trade. Um, I want to do like 200 Robin Hoods. <laughs> yeah, he was spamming the Robin Hoods. Robin Hood was really scary. Well played, Ezra. Well played. Great game, dude. That was a really good match. Robin Hood was really scary. He fended me off well. Yeah, he spammed those like those Wingard Palace archers. That was really funny. Yeah. Yeah, I should have just let the middle go. But the thing is, if I lose trade and then I'm 1v1 versus Anachand, I have zero chances. The only way I can fight him is with trade. Um, so in retrospect, that like 30 or 40 seconds I wasted, I think lost us the game to an extent. I probably should have just preemptively set up siege shops and had like eight traps popped out. And then we could have killed him for sure. Uh, well, my reasoning is that I can't, I, without trade, I had no gold income. So Anachan would have just crushed me after we won. Like guaranteed loss. Whereas if I have trade and then we get Ezra, I can maybe win. It was some dicey logic, but, you know, that was the plan. That was the plan. All right, guys. GG, well played. Hopefully you enjoyed today's stream, man. Congrats to Anno for winning today's tournament and also to Ezra for that little fun FFA there at the end. Ezra's chunk of the map was loaded. Yeah, he had a lot of map control. Yeah, uh, we needed to kill him first, Anno. <laughs> Evil French. See my my initial uh, my initial knowledge of us going after um, then you wonder and beat me easy one v one. Yeah, so if he had if we had gone with my initial thing in two v one Ezra, then I think Anna would have won that because I couldn't have kept up with him. Um, he's he's super high level, but yeah, that was really fun. It was it was a great game. GG, well played, man. Awesome stuff. GG, congrats on victory, man. Great tourney today. True. All right. Well played. So my friends, if you enjoyed today's 1v1 tourney, do drop a like on the way out. It helps a lot. Um, this will be the last stream for a couple days. I'm going to be out of town the whole weekend. So uh, unfortunately, I will not be around to stream over the weekend. But we'll be back on Monday or Tuesday. And I'll have videos going up. I have some fun FFA games to post and some other things. But congratulations to today's winner and um, to everyone who played. Thank you, guys. Once again, that's it. Take care of yourselves. Drop a like on the way out if you want to see more sweaty Age of Empires tournaments. And um, yeah, that's right. You can attack ground and kill the walls with Ozutsu. That's right. Should have done that. You live and you learn, man. You live and you learn. All right. Adios. Dovitania. See you guys later. That's it. Don't think much else is going on. And uh, I'm going to go lose some Byzantine games on ladder tonight. Should be fun. Cheers.